Don't tell Sal. Don't tell Sal. Don't invite Sal. How many, how many times are you going to tell me? I got it. Why the f*** will I tell Sal? Best donut surprise party for Howard. Don't tell Sal. All right. Bye. Dude, I'm right here. I just heard every word you just said. What did I say? I didn't say anything. Oh, come on, Sal. You think I'm an idiot? I know your whole shtick. Here's Dan the Song Parody Man to explain to Artie why he doesn't have his money yet. Uh, Dan the Song Parody Man sent me a long letter. It's, as you can see, it's small typed and a full page about why he is innocent in all of this with Artie and explaining himself. Dan, can I just say something before we start? Go ahead. I'm, I'm not mad at you at all, Dan. I'm not. Uh, believe me. And you brought it up on the air. I'm sorry you did. I well, never would. Sort of. Artie was talking about people borrowed money from him, a guy... Um, that he used to work with another place that hasn't paid him back yet, and that's pretty much it. Uh, all right, yeah, actually, uh, Artie helped me out and did loan me a chunk of money, <laughs> which obviously I have every intention of paying back. We even had a conversation about it recently, and he's like, look, if you need more, it will be a little more time, take a little more time, but my plan all along was uh, I'm expecting a windfall of cash very shortly. Well, he didn't He didn't bring your name up, actually. He talked about a different <laughs> guy, but Artie let, you, how much, Artie, how, Artie let you money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Artie helped me out when I was uh, moving back from Vegas, and I had a lot of a debt that a debt that kind of accumulated back here. And uh, he just basically helped me out. My other plan was, uh, you know, if I don't have the money to pay him back, I just sell my Harley. I put my Harley on Craigslist. It's gone in a week, and he gets it. I desperately needed money, and I was talking to him, and I mentioned it, and he made the offer. You know, I said, dude, I'm I'm dying out here right now, and uh, you know, I asked him to lend me money, just like many people have asked me, and I've lent up in the past. And believe me, I have every intention of paying. How back. long ago was that, yeah. Dan? Yeah, how long ago? How long ago? It was in uh, March. Oh, this year. Yeah. Well, you did. I didn't. I didn't bring it up. All right. Mm -hmm. I don't know who brought it up. When but. you were freaking out on Teddy, when you had the Teddy fight, you didn't mention my name, but you said I lent some. I okay. So it could have been. You said yeah, I lent another been. guy it, who it works here seventy five hundred dollars. So, okay, but uh, well, how did actually your exact words were? And this guy might be even a bigger loser and a bigger deadbeat than Teddy. Can you just give him money for free? That's what he wants. Would you be willing to do that? <laughs> well, I've done it in the past. In other words, just make him like a, a, a ward of of the Artie estate. Another deadbeat in my I life, think, you mean? No, I don't mean a deadbeat, but but maybe just. I have like Teddy. a bunch of deadbeats in my life. No, nah, we'll figure out something. I mean, look, it'll. We'll, it's now this is my reputation on the air is bad now because Ted takes advantage. There's another guy in our that you know very well in our organization that just I just loaned seventy five hundred dollars though and Ooh. wants another seventy five hundred. And uh, Ted what? is one of the Ted is as big a deadbeat as he is. He's a bigger deadbeat. Oh, Ted, a, Teddy is a now loser. I'm a deadbeat. But I'm not sure. Maybe Teddy's a bigger I was loser. Mad. A bigger no, dead, you're definitely deadbeat. a bigger yeah. deadbeat. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Mad, no doubt about it. I was mad at the time, yeah. and okay. I did not say your name. No, you didn't. And there's no reason $7,500 should mean anything to anybody but me and you. Right. Okay, I agree. so, whoa, so... Well, the point you know, is, you're so, right. It shouldn't mean anything but me and you, but from the second you said that, from the second that went down, the the clever detectives here were able to deduce, deduce who it was, well, and I don't everybody know why. was talking That's about it true. was me. You brought... You, you no, 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 Howard. Months, months later did I bring it up, but before that, How people... We're whispering in the hallways. I'd walk by. Fallon's walking by me. Seventy five hundred dollars. Seventy five hundred dollars. How did they know that? How did they do that? I guess they were able to figure out that it was. You said it was somebody who works here or right. somebody closely associated with the show, and everybody out there knew that it wasn't them. Um, they knew that I just moved back from Vegas. They probably some of them I might know that I was desperate. So Dan, what's going on? But the last time, yeah, but I don't know how you can yell at a guy who who loans you money. I'm not yelling. Who am I yelling at? You're yelling at Artie. No, I'm I'm just stating the fact that I did, I brought it up after it was already right, Dan, common let's, knowledge. Let's Skip all the history of this. Thing. Yeah, forget about the history all of right, it. Let's let's get down to it. I'm just broke right uh, now. I mean, Artie loaned me money. He basically saved me, saved my life by loaning me the money at that time. I was flat broke. How long ago did he lend you the money? It was March. It was it was this past what? March, so it's closing in on a year. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, now you said you were in due for a windfall. windfall. Yeah, of win some sort. Yeah, the wind has yet to fall. Right. Hopefully, what hopefully happened to the windfall? What was the windfall that you? Were I can't to really discuss the windfall, but it yeah. still could possibly. It still looks very good. That it could happen. And it's the other day, the other day, else. I brought that up as a joke. Look, I try again. You know, with the radio show, Howard, you notice. Like sometimes you, 
<laughs> yeah, sometimes you bring up about how much right. Obama. Well, look, you've you been doing a lot of great. Dinner. You've been doing a lot of great work lately. You Boy, were on the air. We were talking question. about you, and I said the windfall will be a funny thing to say. And uh, you know, I, I understand. Artie, let me just say something. How long did you expect to wait? For your seventy five hundred back. Well, I don't know how many how many details Dan wants to reveal, but I mm-hmm. knew he was in a bit of trouble, and it would probably take a while. Now, I would never loan anybody money uh, that I that I needed desperately, but right. that's you know, it's a lot of money, it's a yeah, substantial but, uh, amount of money. And, that's and three and bottles is of wine. Is it fair to say? <laughs> is it fair to say you <laughs> did want? Is Robin, it fair uh, to say you wanted more? <laughs> I absolutely. You know what? I, I wanted you more, wanted, and thank God that I didn't borrow. Well, here's the here's the thing, Dan. I, I did you right, a favor. I did seventy. Let, hold I on, did, let me, well, let me. There's a detail here you're missing. Okay. I and again, Dan, I'm not mad at all. I know Dan's a hardworking guy, and it's tough times. But Dan wanted fifteen thousand. He said. <laughs> he said, "Can I have seventy five hundred now right. and seventy five hundred when I get back to Jersey?" Wow. So I said, "I said, Dan, I'll send you seventy five hundred, but because I knew, you know, even though I didn't technically need the fifteen thousand. I said to myself, the best thing for my friendship with Dan is not to give him the fifteen. That's grand. a lot of because money. Because I figured it would be a long time, and that's really a number. It would be hard yeah. to get out of my mind. So I just let it drop, and Dan was nice enough to Dan, let it drop. So well, we, left, my genius, we left, we left Dan, it at $7,500. you have been able to live on the 7500 Why did you need an additional 7500 Okay, my genius plan was out when I moved back from Vegas. I was going to get my sound system business started up again. I do the PA systems. I do bands right. and stuff like that. What I was going to do is I was going to gear up. I was going to get an additional van. I was going to hire another guy. I was going to be able to do run jobs simultaneously. I thought that that money would enable me to A, pay him back faster. My plan was the money... Do you have any family that can lend you money? I I was the guy in the family that loaned everybody else money when I had it. I I, I was the go-to guy. He's got a nice daughter who I've met. You know, it's like I'm not... The 15 grand would have annoyed me so much to where I might have said something. Well, wait a second. So I just left it at what it was. But just to let you know... 7,500. So you never got your business going. Why don't you just return the money to Artie then? The money was to get me... the, the The money was to... To cover my bills before I left Vegas, to move me back here, for me to move into a place, you know, you got first month's right. rent, last month's rent security, to get my piece of shit van back on the but road and roadworthy. don't you live with friends? You don't even have a place. Yeah, no, no, no. I rent a house. I rent a, I, I have oh, roommates. I rent a share of a house. I lived, when I lived out in Vegas, part of my, my, my living arrangement was part of my work deal. Now, when since I moved March back of here. 2008, have you taken any vacations? Have you gone? Anywhere? I have, let me tell you, I'm, let me tell you, Artie, I have not afforded myself a single fucking luxury. I live as frugally as possible. Where'd um, you get that coat? I, I, that very nice yeah, leather coat. This the fucking leather coat. coat. I got this. Is this coat is so <laughs> Give it to old? Give Arnie right now. You want it? Yeah. This Arnie coat. Wants that coat. I'm a, this coat see, this is, is so Howard old. Take off doing this. I. This is what I hate. How much are those? Pants? I hate it making yeah. someone who's a friend of mine explain themselves. But no, no. I just want you know. No, no, I would no, never do this. I feel awkward right Artie, now. Artie, the I've rumor been on the, is you owe Artie more than seventy five hundred. Is that true? No. Um, no, as far as I know, I owe him seventy five. My plan was to get my money. I was going to give him ten grand, so his interest. He probably I wouldn't, wouldn't even take it, but I'd force it on him. I'd say, you know, do something nice for me for yourself. The way that I did something, you did something nice for me. But the funny so thing, Dan, let me ask you something. What do you think is going to happen uh, with this loan? Do you think well, you're to make, gonna... Yeah, to make it all the more pathetic, my plan was if I couldn't get rid of it, I was going to sell my Harley and then I could throw him the money. I'm right. so behind on the rent on the garage where I store the fucking bike, I can't gain access to it to sell it. I, don't want you, I know how much right, that how means. Much would I don't cost, want you to sell your bike. How much would it cost <laughs> to get your bike back? How much do you owe them? I owe four grand out there, but I have two bikes there. I'm dumping one off, which I'm going to get about two grand for, and then I'm going to have another two grand cash that I have to come See, up with. See, the other thing not that's my problem. You're going to give it to Artie? No, no, no. No, he's got to get the bike. Yeah, I got to oh. I gotta sell the one bike that's in there for well, two grand. Say, why don't you say... Come up with another two grand to clear that debt. Then I have access to the other bike, which I can then sell and pay him back. You see, and Howard, here's the other thing. By not giving him the other $7,500, it does something else. I knew if I gave him everything he wanted the first time, he's going to come back for more money. So by not giving him the other 7500 it sort of puts a cap on what I can give Dan, him, too. What about getting, he knows that. What about getting a regular job? You know, I'd like to... The, I spent 20 years honing my skills in like the electronics sector of electronics where I had my business which went away right. and I'm a dinosaur that's obsolete it's kind of like if 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 I was a skier and I no longer had legs I can't do that right, anymore. what about going to a restaurant today and saying I'm going to work in the kitchen sorry man I for the amount of money I could, the, the <laughs> amount of, the amount of money that I would make on a menial job like that would hinder me from being able to make the small amount of money I need to get by between child support, monthly living expenses, which is really it. You know, I got, you know, I have a certain uh, what about, nut, what about number. What about go down to, to the sanitation department right now? Like I know King of All Blacks makes about forty, fifty grand a year because he's vested, because he's got tenure, because he's right. been in there forever. So why not start? 
I'm 45 years old, man. I got too old for that. I'm too old for that. I mean, I can't. If I could start at the bottom, I mean, a, an entry level job where you what don't have skills. What about working at a motorcycle it. shop? What about that? What about you? Uh, I don't. I don't have the skills to work on other people's what bikes. What about a salesman at a store that sells motorcycles? You could sell knives. You know all yeah. Yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I, have knives. I could use them too, but. No, you know what? It's sell your hair to the, a Chinese wig right. company. <laughs> That's not. A, I'll tell you, I've considered it. People aren't buying hair oh, anymore. The economy it, shit. People aren't buying. You know what? We, we've heard all sorts of rumors about now that everybody's talking about this. I, know, I mean, first of all, I don't know how it's, people. It, be, the gossip around here is crazy. It's all over the place. And so I got to ask both you guys a question: Is it true that one of the ways Dan got the money from you was that he called Artie and he was crying? That he wasn't going to be able to see his daughter, and he needed the money no. for airfare to come back. That's one of the rumors. He wasn't around. crying, no. You know, now, if, now he how really can wanted to get back. Now, how can these that? rumors be completely fabricated? If me and Artie, Artie are the only ones that had this conversation, everything else is just total fabrication. Although just I fucking... read your, I read your letter. Yeah. And I have to admit, something didn't ring true about it. Tell me what's true. If you if you don't mind me saying, you describe that since uh, this has come up on the radio. And Steve Langford's been reporting that on fuck, this. Let me, yeah, let me let me cut you off on that. Hold on, let can me you, finish. Can you just refer to him as the scumbag piece of shit and not the name? Because the right. name makes me want to make my blood boil. All right, scumbag <laughs> cool. piece of shit. I don't Thank feel you. that way about Steve. You know, all your life, you fuck, you've criticized people in the media who have misquoted you, who have written articles. You've accused True. them of yellow germ journalism. You've done prayers to Jesus, wishing cancers to spread through their body and dye them so that you could piss on their grave and laugh what at is their Steve rotting corpse. What said wrong? There is a loan here. There's a debt to be yeah. paid. The point is, it's it's between. Between, it's between myself and Artie. Yes, but it's you brought on the, it up on the air, and then yeah, Steve is yeah. put in the awkward position of having to cover it. Yeah, but you know what? He you called understand? me, and Poor I said, Steve. "Yeah, yes, better Steve. fucking walk past, fast past me, you fucking piece of shit." Well, wait a second. What? You're taking it out on Steve. No, 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 no. Don't do anything stupid. No, 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 no. Just don't, don't stop it. Let me speak. Steve called me. I said, "Please do not run a story on this." When it's a fleeting mention on the show, it's one thing. If you repeated the news over and over again, then it hap Then word can possibly get back to my daughter. She'll get teased. She'll get but antagonized at school. I who said, knows, you, you, the point. The no, 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 Howard. The point is, I said to him, please do not run the story. I'm appealing to you as a father and as a fellow human being. But wait, you do use not the run the story. Wait, and everything it. I'm saying to you is well. Uh, but Dan, Dan, you use the kid card. Whether I use who knows, the who knows Dan the who Dan the song your, your kid doesn't go to school and get teased by the other kids because your her dad is Dan, Dan the song I mean, I no 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 she gets no name. she gets teased by other kids because because some of the kids at school do know that that I work here and. Um, and they and people hear it in and the, they know and you're Dan the, the song news. parody man and yeah. they listen to Howard they 100 knew you News. They didn't pay back Hardy. <laughs> oh, come no, on, they, they didn't know it for, possibly be true. What I, kind look, of song? Can first you of all, first of all, it is. Second of all, you want to call me a liar? Call me a fucking I'm not liar, Howard. You a liar, but I, well, I'm, I'm telling saying, you one thing, and you're telling me you believe it to be the contrary. So you call me a fucking liar. <laughs> but the bottom, no, look, stop. The bottom line is this: I begged and I pleaded, and I very, very eloquently asked him not to run the story that it could have a negative impact on my daughter. I said everything I'm saying to you is off the record, and the fucking piece of shit. Scumbag, it's, fucking no, no, ran no, no, the story no, 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 anyway, Dan, and not only that, but he lied because Dan, in his story, no, in his story, he says Dan warned us against running the story. I didn't warn you. I asked you not to run the story. You're a fucking scumbag, a piece of shit, a yellow journalist, and you don't practice what you preach because many times you've lied on the air and you fucking squash stories about yourself because you're a human piece of fucking shit. You should fucking Name die one. tomorrow so I can shit on your face, piss on your grave, and do a fucking happy dance because you're not a fucking human being to me. You're a piece of fucking garbage. And you better walk past me fucking fast when you walk past me. Oh, I don't don't make threats. threats. Don't make threats. I'm not making threats. I'm just fucking recommending the pace that he should walk at. What does that mean? Because I don't want him fucking near me because my skin crawls when he's near me. So it would be a favor to me. The same way as I asked you nicely before not to run the fucking story. It's a favor to me because you make me fucking sick. The sight of you, the thought of you. Let's talk about the liar fucking Lang Langford. Funny stuff. First of all, what a moron. This fucking guy is embarrassed and tries to squash his story. He hates the fact that he has a reputation for having a big cock. He should hate having a reputation for being a big fucking cock. Steve Langford's huge penis. A fucking they had one of his ex-girlfriends who wanted to talk about it and he wouldn't allow it through. No, a year true. later, he fucking lied no. and said he didn't squash the story. No. Then there's the fucking Steve Mud Langford where the rumor was that he apparently shit his pants and his nickname at another news place was Steve <laughs> Mud Langford. Now he played it off and lied by saying that they said that because he was a fan of scatological 
physical humor. However, then a year later, he got somebody to cover for him and say, no, there was an incident where we were in the news van, and I crapped myself, and Steve got blamed for it. If that was what really fucking happened, why didn't you just say that that was what happened? Not just say, oh, I'm a fan of scatological humor, not that somebody else shit their pants and I got blamed for it. Steve, you Because you're answer. a fucking asshole. Well, you're a fucking answer. liar. You are the piece of shit that comes out of an asshole. I asked you not to run the fucking story. Right, it wasn't big news. That. He wasn't breaking any fucking news. He was just fucking driving home something that was already covered on the, All right, on we the get show. That. All right, Steve, the do fucking you scumbag. Do you fucking die, him? you piece of shit. Can he answer that? And did you to... poop in your pants? No. You did not? No. I would like to be able to tell There's... you that I did, but I didn't. No, no, no. See, it's physically impossible for... A piece of shit to take a shit. Either you, either uh, you can take a shit or you are the do shit. You want to he is to the Dan's fucking shit. charges. Well, it, it's interesting. Dan says uh, clearly that he wants to bury the story. Why is he on this radio show right because now? Because you've already fucking blown it. It's, it's been uh, on the air. No, this was and and he's already. That's not. No. Why don't you fucking address the fact that we had a conversation? I told you yes, not, asked you not to run the story. Right, but did I don't I, take requests. Did I warn okay. you when not to? When I cover the news, I, did I ask you, you to not run the story, or did I warn you to run the news? Because in your news story, you said. Dan the Song the Party news. Man warns us. Dan the Song Party Man cautions us. Did I ever warn you or caution you, or did I ask you? Because saying I warned or cautioned, which sounds like I threatened you, makes for a better story when you well, don't have a fucking let's actually, story. Let's when you're a fucking go with piece it. of right, shit right. that tries to you, blow things out of proportion. Right, right. Well, I, I, we're not getting anywhere. There's so many fucking robots. He makes fucking, again. He makes Tom Chiasano seem fucking animated. It's like if they took a fucking robot but you're and, mad at the guy. and cloned it with yeah. a piece of shit, you'd have fucking Steve Langford. It's like they took a robot and they... Had a, a fucking did a poor job of trying Here's to play around and to emulate Dan, human emotions. Dan, I like it. Here's my recommendation. Next time, don't bring up on the air that you're the guy who borrowed seventy five hundred dollars. Howard, it was already out. The bitches in the office were already talking about it. No, when I already was know. talking. No, about no I'll tell you what. I would Nobody never. Knows. But 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 they, people would ask me, and I would just go, I don't know what you're talking about, and it would never have come on the air. But never. every time my name came up, did Howard not get a note that said, "Oh, doesn't Dan the song parody man owe you and money?" And I would say no, and then it was the end of it. That's Howard, it? believe me. Listen yeah. to me. It would never have been this as way. As mad Dan. as you and are at Steve, and I understand your point. Guy got it. He's and a piece I was, of shit. I told him it could affect my daughter. He ran a story anyway. He wasn't breaking any news. All right. He was just repeating what was already said on the air. I asked him no, fucking nicely. No, what we did, what we did was we called the individual involved here, which is what reporters do. All right. So here's the thing. Right, and I said, I'm not authorizing you to tape this. No, Anything? no, you did, yeah, we I did said, not do not tape this. We did and not I, tape the interview because you would not go on tape. However, we did quote you. Yeah, you Which quote is what me. No, 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 you didn't quote me. Yes, did, we do. We Steve, got it right here. Yes or no? Did you say right in your piece that I warned you not to run the story? Here's what the story says. Because you can says. repeat the piece. Here's what the story piece. says. Let's hear what he said. The story says Dan refusing to go on tape to comment about Artie mentioning the Lang, the large lingering loan he still hasn't repaid Lang, and the song parody man warning us not to blow up, sensationalize, or glorify Warning us? Story. Did I warn you? What is a warning? Yes. A not warning to glorify, is sensationalize, or blow right, up the that's story. That's pretty close. No, 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 no. That's okay. bullshit. A we warning means the news. you better not if do you this. If you don't like the I news, him. I did not warn on. him. There's a difference. When you okay. fucking say that somebody warns you. It's a you're getting it, worked up over the world. No, 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 no. It's just a note. It's an example of the fact that he's a piece of shit scumbag and he's full of shit that he didn't have the story's a true what can I tell no, no the story's not true because I didn't fucking warn you so shut your fucking hole Langford okay, saying, Ed, fuck you shut your fucking hole Langford right, don't Steve, ever fucking walk near now. me thank, thank you. you very much thank you. and Dan calm down <laughs> wow it ain't worth None. it you're a fucking piece of shit, Langford. Go no, 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 go that way. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch him because you're I'm not into up, scandalizing right? you're heated you're shit like that. You're, you're, you're heated up. You're fuck out of here. You're heated up. You're Howard, heated up. Howard, if somebody ran an article where you asked somebody not to say something and you said that they and they printed, you warned them. I would you point would it out. You no, no, you'd fucking hit the fucking roof. And especially if it was because, maybe. And, and especially if you asked them not to run it out of concern for your children, whether the reporter thinks it's a valid concern or Reporters not. Reporters write whatever they want. They don't care about your children. And um, they don't. That's, no. that's obviously, the especially line. And including the scumbag that you employ, Howard. That's I mean, true. He's a fucking piece well, of shit. He's a newsman. He's a newsman. No, 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 no. He's a piece of fucking shit. I don't. I don't. Sit I've there helped and tell that the fucking news. piece of human garbage out with shit when he's needed fucking my help. I've seen him working on stuff and giving him ways to speed up his fucking research. I've helped this fucking guy out. You think now? Here's what I want you to do tonight. Here's person. what I want you to do tonight. Cut up your own voice. 
and make song parodies yes. out of it. <laughs> what is this? Is great tape. This is great tape. I'm sure somebody else will fuck. No, 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 no. Uh, you need to do this. Can I just touch one more thing, I and think obviously, it'll be I, you know, I look at Artie. I'm like, I see Artie's my. We fucking hung out. We've done a lot of shit. We've had a lot yeah, of good times I together. I don't have any bad feelings. You know, I, you know, I called you a ton of fucking times. You know, since I've gotten back, and it's the same procedure. You know, I call your house phone, and it goes to the voicemail. You know, well, you know what I, I call would you. Say. I know. Yeah, uh, uh, Artie's not going to Ninety percent of the people in my life d- can't get in touch with me right now because of yeah. my because I'm yeah. a I heroin can't addict. Get in touch with him. But, He's a uh, heroin addict. Uh, and, and like, I felt like a real douchebag. I felt like over and over again that like. I don't know, like, you helped me out as a friend, but then you fucking were no, avoiding me like no, a plane. Matt, Matt no. is on the... Let's well, hear from the fans. Well, it's hard, because I don't want to put you in an uh, awkward position where rest. you're explaining it to me. Like, if you had left the message, look, I have the money, meet me here, we'll go get it. Otherwise, it's going to be an awkward... I'm doing it for our no, friendship, I know. ironically. It bothers enough. me. I mean, it's a uh, fucking bothers me every air. day let's that I'm carrying Let's go to Times some of the listeners. Rough, I, times are rough, and uh, I'm sure you're going to pay him back. Matt, go ahead. Hello? Yes, Matt. Hey, Howard, how you doing? I was just curious, Dan... Don't you think that maybe if you just concentrated on on uh, resolving the whole seventy five hundred dollars, that it wouldn't even matter what Langford says? Like, I don't know. I'm just curious because this is the second time I'm hearing somebody blow up on Langford. Seems no. like we're kind of tangenting off the. Uh, that no, was, no, I was going to say that to you. I was going to say that to you. It's more. Um, I work every day towards trying to find a way to resolve this debt as quickly as possible. I got a ton of music here that I'm actually in the middle of restoring and selling. I got vintage Fender amps that are worth like twenty five hundred bucks that I'd like to just like get rid of one and at least hand that to Artie to give him something. But no, the point is, Matt. I told the guy that if you blow this up and you repeat the story over and over again in the news, that it could have a negative impact. It could get back to my teenage daughter. But when I you go when you go on there and say you you're a poon hound and all that. Right. Uh, don't you that think that could, could have a, an impact to your Dude, daughter? I, I said it once in a fleeting moment. You guys uh, have repeated it a thousand times since well, then. Is it, is it, well, you know how the show works. I mean, I mean, I also write, but I has it affected your daughter? Has anything happened? Yeah, somebody called her a fucking welfare loser at school. Hey. All right, Ken, you're on the air. Go ahead. I don't ahead. know how they know who you are. Yeah, I don't even know how they know who Dan the Song Parody Man is. I don't even know his last name. Yeah, I'm, I don't deny that you're telling the truth. It's just it's no. crazy. Ken, go ahead. You're on the air. Dan, you're a talented, creative guy, but you're clearly out of your fucking mind here. How am I out of my mind? A lot of talented guys are out of their mind. (laughs) (laughs) Well, well, this is an extreme case, because Steve Langford is an extremely talented, professional guy, and you can't get past the name calling. No, 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 no. He's not talented. He's not professional. I he is, man. Okay, okay, again, okay, call call up my naivete that I said to him four times, this could have a negative impact on my daughter. I'm not giving you any breaking news. You're not breaking a story. You're just going to be repeating what's already but been said on the But the negative impact on your daughter is bo- is borrowing seventy five hundred dollars in the first place. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's the, no, it's the fact that they ru- no that they're running it on the news over and over again and increasing well, the exposure. It. But of if you didn't it. borrow okay. the money, it would never be on the news. The point yeah, is, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but the point I, is, look, I'm not judging is, somebody. I, don't, and don't go on the air saying you're the guy who's owed the money. Then you wouldn't have any Steve Langford or any or, impact yeah, on I your wish, daughter. Yeah, I wish that was the case, but that's all right. But that's my that's over and done. The point is, I asked the guy very nicely, and I told him why, okay? Uh, and Karen? he chose to run the story anyway, despite the fact that I told him that it could have an impact on my child. All okay? right, Karen, go ahead. You're on the air. Hi, Howard. I'm not calling about this. Did they All right, we're on this topic now, though, my darling. Well, All right, I, I mean, I, that's that, that we, let's stick to the topic. Let's go to Joe Van. Hey, Howard. Yep. Good. Uh, Dan's great. He's a smart guy. I love Dan. And, and, uh, you know, you got to appreciate him how far he got. Uh, just a funny story. Back in the old days, we used to play hockey with him. Jovan! Hey, man, I was thinking about you the other day. You're the best. How's it going? Killer defenseman. And the best, the funniest story. We, we get shellacked on the, on the ice. He gets back in the locker room. He lights up a cigarette. He goes, man, we fucking suck. And you're just sitting there like... Do you hey, smoke cigarettes? Smoke. Oh, that's, that's the other thing. I was trying to figure out if Where I... Where are you getting money for that? If I didn't smoke, I'd, I'd take it out of my food money. I'll fucking smoke instead of eat. Yovi, Yovi, so give, the, give Artie the cigarette money. What do you spend a week on cigarettes? How do you not have money? I, I, this I don't understand. Yeah. I don't mean to get into financial life, but now that it's on the yeah. air. Why would you smoke cigarettes I'm a, I'm if an you addict. have no money? Artie can give that money to your daughter, then she won't yeah. be a welfare kid. Yeah. What, how much money do you spend? How much are cigarettes now? How much and, are they Anywhere pack? between like five and eight bucks a pack. Oh, my God. So yeah. what do you, how many packs a week I'm stretch, do you smoke? I'm stretching like a pack will last me two days, and I'm, getting the, I'm smoking the cheapest All stuff. All right. So you, you, you're spending at least $50 a week on cigarettes. Yeah. Dude, if you gave addiction. him $50 a week, you'd be, you'd be, be paid him back already. Yeah. For yeah, a year. yeah what's, 50 2027. what's $50 a week <laughs> times uh, 52 weeks? Robin, you, you're a math Please. major. 
twenty five hundred you'd have. Yeah. yeah. Then you could get a, your bike out of hock and pay Artie his money. That's uh, about a third a of what you owe. Hey, hey, Yovan, back in those days. I want you quitting cigarettes today. Back in those today. days, would I put up like the whole six grand for the team fee and then wait for the guys Absolutely. over the course of the season to pick to pick it up because I had money the back then? Uh, Yovi was a great defenseman. Listen to me. Quit smoking today. It's over. Oh, God, I wish I could. No. No, you can't. Stop if you it. Stop wow. Dude, I do. Listen I cut everything me. out. I don't quit. drink. I don't do any drugs. I don't smoke weed. Are you I, dating? I cut that on my eating. Have you gone on a date? I'm, I haven't gone on a date in ages. Not a date where I had to pay for anything. Right. Anyways. Uh, what is it, Gary? The guys in the office were asking a question, which, uh, which I'm going to pose to Dan. If you were looking to keep this whole Artie Money thing sort of private and quiet, they were saying mm. Artie did a book signing. And at the book signing... There was Langford was there, and the Howard TV cameras were there, and Dan got online and like repaid Artie hundred bucks, like making a whole show of it. Right. So if you were looking to keep it on the sort of quiet, why would you do that? It was that was it. Would, it had already been brought up on the air. I was there, and I handed him money, and the cameras were there. It's not but about. But you, it, it appears that you're willing to talk about it on the radio and play with it to some degree. Now it's completely out in the open. Okay, that was something that my daughter wasn't going to see. It's something that my daughter wasn't. But how do you know hear. what she's going to see and what she's not going to see? You, you know, you, you, she you only I, pays attention. No, to she the only news. listens to Steve Langford. Yeah. No, she doesn't the listen to anything. But the I'm kids just listen. saying. I'm just saying. How do you know what anybody's going to see or hear? How do you know if a parent had had got, had Howard TV and seen that? Who would you be mad at then? That would be. Then I'd have myself to blame. I'd absolutely have but myself. But you're out there talking about. It. I'm just saying. I, I know why you're mad at Steve because he said he wouldn't do something and he did it. But. I just think that you're just sort of getting mad because Steve's easy to kick. All right, Bob, no, you have Steve's the not easy to kick. The guy could fucking probe into my fucking life and make it miserable if he wants to. Then I'll have to make the decision or not of how I want to fucking All deal right, with Bob, it. Bob, you're on the air in Toledo. Hey, how you doing, Howard? Hey, this is for Artie, and this is Sean Parody, man. To be quiet, I'm going to put the truth out about him. Let's hear it. Uh, they, uh, they sold them bikes at auction because of that storage. He has no bikes. He's lying out of his teeth. They were sold a month and a half ago. Okay, describe the two bikes. So, Tell me what type, and then I'll pull the registrations out of my pocket. We'll see if they match. I'll pull them out, Dan. I ain't going to describe them. They weren't that hot of a bike anyways. One went for 6500 Another one went for 1100 oh. One was an 883 and the other one was a fat boy. Uh, you're absolutely wrong. They're both shovel heads. Okay, so you're buddy. fucking moron. One's an iron sports and one's an eighty wide glide. So shut your fucking off. Yeah, it's another fucking ass. Yeah, it's another fucking ass. I'll talk shit. Can I ask you to be quiet? Yeah, Are but that's you... too fucking bad. Be quiet so you can fucking lie. You're a shitty caller. You tried to call it and be funny. You suck. That was your fucking angle to get on Howard's show to say that they sold my bike at auction. You fucking go to fucking. My fucking subscription don't owe Artie nothing. All right, let's go to Sam. You have the final word in California. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, I want to know uh, the storage name of uh, Dan's storage lot because when they do get posted in the newspaper and they do come up for auction, he's four thousand dollars behind on the rent. I don't believe it. Uh, I want to buy him. So what's the what's the name of the storage unit there? Yeah, like I'm going to fucking tell to you, it's it's through an individual. It's not a, it's not a storage unit. It's a garage that I rent with a couple other people. One person has their name on the lease. The rest of us pay our share for the garage. All right, listen, Dan, I hope the uh, financial situation gets better for you. That's hopefully number one. You know, I got this, hopefully I'm doing this right. tour, this tour with, the, you know, the people I work out with in Vegas. I got a yes. tour coming up. And uh, I plug that so that you can get back on your feet. Where, where, where are you going to be? So uh, Beecher's Madhouse, he's uh, booking a casino party tour that's going on in all the different casinos outside of Vegas around the country. You can check out Beecher'sMadhouse.com. And just one more quick thing, Artie. Was it just an oversight that you didn't invite me to either of your parties this summer? And I don't want to be a douche, or was it like that? You know, no, you were. I, 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 I didn't formally invite anybody. It was like you know, there weren't invitations. I just, I don't know. Like I said, I, I felt no, like no, you no, were. No, no, no. I was me. ten minutes away in fucking Long Branch, I, I, babysitting sounds like my friends. Uh, yeah. Maybe didn't want you there. Yeah, no, that's not true. I mean, <laughs> I, I, you know what? I happen to know Artie sent that a mass email. Uh, no, not a mass no, email. An email I don't, to I don't, I don't like Tracy, email. not Tracy, but some. Some, I don't even remember that you invited anyone. I heard through the grapevine you were having a party. I don't think there was a formal Yeah, I, Yeah, right. I just said anybody no. could come. Uh, yeah, no. of course. If I, I would have seen you, if I would have seen you, you could true. come. To, I, yeah. No, I don't, I'm not like that. Believe me. Look, I don't judge anybody for borrowing money. I know it, it, stuff gets shitty. And believe me, a lot of people owe me money. I tell you, I've and a lot of people have owed me money for years, and I keep it quiet. I'm a, I'm sorry I brought it up that day with Teddy. I lost my mind. I know. But I I, blame you for and that. I didn't mean to call you the names I was calling you, but it, it was like... I was nuts, and I never would have brought up your name. Howard could ask me till Kingdom Come. I would have said, "I no, that's not true because it should be private." I I, I wish it hadn't come to this. I do. I mean, I it might have been eaten away at you. So you, I, I was talking about another guy who owes me. I know. Money. Yeah, we're, we're and there, look, it was this, by the way, this other guy who owes me money. Yes. 
everybody here, they're like Sherlock Holmes. Everybody here figured out who that was. Oh, yeah, I figured that off the bat. So okay, yeah. right. Okay, so you you work here. You figured it out somehow. And have you that, figured it out, Howard? He knows I would who it have is. no idea. He, <laughs> knows he told me, is. and I don't know who it is. I swear <laughs> you don't. So, so in other words, like so that guy all of a sudden got the guilt and is texting me every five seconds, and. You know what? It'll never come to this. You know why? Because I'll never say his name, and he probably won't either. Right. right. You should have just not said anything, man. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let me just. Talk. I mean, I've I'm sorry. Who would, who would even know? Way. Yeah. You know. No um, one would know, Dan. You know, I've been on both sides of the lending. This, the first, first time I've ever lo- borrowed a large sum of money is from you. Aside from the mortgage that I took out on the house. That Lucky I you, lost. Artie. But, I, <laughs> but from being on the other side of it, okay. And I know how much it could piss you off if you think I'm, I'm going out and I'm spending money and and just like that would be a big f you to you. I got people that I've lent. Way more than than you lent me, who've never paid me back, who've sold their houses, and I know they've profited over a hundred thousand dollars on the house, bought another house, then well, while I was get them. That, right, and then while, them down. and then <laughs> while I was losing my fucking house and needed money to keep it out of foreclosure, this scumbag was putting in a fucking pool in his backyard, you know, while he still couldn't pay me back, you know, the ten grand. That so he you owed are me. not doing that. I, I I'm never going to be that fucking guy. I would sooner fucking kill myself. No, I know, I know it. you wouldn't, Dan. Right. Believe me, I, and I, I, but, but but I, you know, all right, let, let me wrap this. So I don't want to put Dan on this. Here's just another, another offer for Artie. <laughs> Since this tour, this tour is getting booked, and I'm going to be doing a ton of work on it. Beecher actually offered to um, to give me an advance on some of the money that I'm going to earn from the tour, which I could then give directly to you. All right, there so, you go. You know, whatever, right. If you can afford it, fine. Yeah. You know, all right. Don't, don't get yourself. But thanks, man. Again, the most important thing is is you know that we're still friends. Man. We are. So, I'm not. Believe me, we're friends. Do you want Langford to do a story on uh, this today or no? No, I want somebody else to do a fucking story on the passing of Steve Langford. And all I can right. fucking Dan, do this a happy song, dance. Man, super talented guys. You heard he has just put together another hit song. Everybody douche now, yeah. featuring Tracy. And I have to say, Dan, you are a super talented guy. Thank and you. yes, you will get back on it, your feet. What, what sucks about money and you is you know what? Uh, you don't have to pay Artie back ever. I'm sure. No, no, I no, don't no, no. What sucks about money is like. You know, I don't need money now. Yeah. But everyone here has seen my violent streak when I get mad. <laughs> God forbid I ever do need money. Right. Uh, you know. <laughs> Good luck. I'm going to go looking for it. I mean, if it makes you feel better to kick the shit out of me, I'll hold no, my no, head no, behind my back. No, no, no. no, 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 no I'm all. not talking about you. I'm talking about a lot of other people. Listen, Dan, yeah. go calm down. I want you to go take uh, take whatever Artie's on and, and get <laughs> on, all right? All right, thanks uh, a lot. Calm man. down over there, for Christ's sake. All right. Getting Thank all worked up. I saw your hands were shaking and everything. Oh, you really. the, well, pissed me off, I thought you would take off like a rocket. All right. Well, I would uh, never disrespect the sanctity of your studio. I thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. There are a lot of people who are unhappy with the news. You and I have talked about this before, haven't we? Yes, we have. Absolutely. Well, what can you do? So, If you, if you don't like what we report, uh, I guess you shouldn't get involved, right? That's very true. I mean, Now, he's just... Is there any truth behind what he's saying? There's none. Do you want to see the story? Sure. Sure. Do you want me to read it to you? Yeah, it's yeah. It's kind of boring. Really, yeah. I mean, I mean what, what's the gist of it? Okay, it's one thing to owe Artie Lang $7,500 since last March. This is a story we reported last week. But to be reminded about it by Artie himself on the Stern Show, like having a big mouth bill collector nail you on national radio. But Dan the Song Parody Man, particularly unhappy with Howard 100 News for reporting on this. Dan refusing to go on tape to comment about already mentioning the large lingering loan. He still hasn't repaid Lang. And the song parody man warning us not to blow up, sensationalize, or glorify the story. Dan the song parody man claiming he's placed at least a dozen calls to Artie, but Lang doesn't answer or return his calls. He says, Dan citing severe financial hardship, declaring he doesn't yet have the money to repay Artie, but affirms he does have every intention of paying Artie back. And as for that motorcycle, he said he'd sell if he had to to pay Artie back his 7500 bucks. Dan the song parody man reporting it's in his garage where he can't get it because he hasn't paid the parking bill. That's sounds, the news story. Sounds like a lot of BS on his part. Well, uh, does that sound like lies? Dude, this eats me every morning I fucking wake up and there's a pit in my stomach and this just eats me. I'm walking around with this, this debt, you know, I, and I, I, you don't feel, when you when you owe somebody money, you really don't own any of the money that's in your pocket. It's it's theirs, it's not yours. Yeah. You know, so until I clear myself of that debt, I am, I have zero, I have zero money. You know, that's so you're, just the way So you're willing to do pretty much anything to pay it back? Yeah, I mean, within reason. Within reason, yeah. Yeah, within reason, of course. Yeah. Now, what about uh, Steve Langford? It's a piece of shit. Is, is, is it so much that you think he's making up lies, or you just no, don't no, want no. him to I report asked on him, all this? I asked 
it's not like he was breaking a news story that nobody had ever heard of. It not, it's not like he was going to shock the world with any kind of information. It was just that he needed something to fill his block because he has a quota and he decided to use my story. I said, Steve, I'm appealing to you as a father and a fellow human being. Please do not run this story. If it's a fleeting moment on the show and it's mentioned, it can get past it. If it's run during every break, during all the repeats, it's blown up on the news, it can get back to my daughter and it can have a negative impact. You can do anything you want to me. I'll stand here and take a punch. I have no problem for the good of this show. I'll take a, I'll take a, a stab wound, whatever. But I think that this could possibly negatively have an impact on my daughter. Please do not run the story. I had said it to him clearly, concisely, and he chose to run the story anyway. Bottom line, he's a piece of fucking shit. He ran in the story. He said, Dan warns us against telling the story. It was in the bumper for the news as well as the news story. I never warned him. I, I, be I asked him. I pleaded with him. And I begged him. Warning it is sensationalizing the story. It's blowing out of proportion. It's making it sound like a threat. The word warning and threaten aren't really that much different. And he added that in there so that he could make it into a story. And that's what makes him a piece of fucking shit. No hard feelings. He's a good friend. Friend of mine, I'm I'm sorry it came out like this, but you know, some people get good times, bad times, and if if you if you loan somebody money, it should be a private thing. But there's gossips around here worse than the fucking view. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm saying, you know, really? so uh, I'm a sh I'm pissed it came out like this, but we're we're friends, and he's a good man. All right. It's my pal, Artie Lang, man. You saved my life. <laughs> okay, real quick. Here is Sasha Lee. She is Miss Howard TV in February. Anyone who's a subscriber knows, in addition to all the great programming, all the original shows we're doing now, we always have a Miss Howard TV every month. And this girl is very beautiful. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Nothing wrong with Sasha Lee. Hey, Sasha. Hey, Sa are, are you Sasha Lee or Sasha? Sasha Lee is my full name, but Sasha full sure. Lee is your last name? No, you just have one name. No, but well, my, my full name is my full first name is Sasha Lee. Sasha Lee. Yeah. So everyone calls you Sasha or Sasha Lee. Sasha. Well, you're Russian uh, girl or something like I'm that? I'm half Hungarian. Half Hungarian. You'll look good in a bathing suit, I'll give you that. Thank you. You look yeah. great. Thank you sure. for being Miss Howard TV this month. Artie, Thank obviously, you. you're in love. I see Artie would not have a chance with you. You're 20 years old, and you even said yes. you don't date older guys. And by older guys, you, said you wouldn't even date someone 30. That's kind of gross, right? Well, yeah, when I was talking to Ganji in my pre-interview, <laughs> I was talking about uh, um, Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah, Ganji goes, would you date Matthew McConaughey? And, 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 and Sasha Lee said, well, you know, he's kind of gross because it would be gross because he's, old. he's an old guy. Yeah. Yeah. So Ganji goes, I know I don't have a chance with her. Because, and, and the pace goes, you think that's the reason <laughs> so she won't go out with you? She wouldn't date Matthew McConaughey. She's definitely not going to date Ganji. That's right. how he Why would Ganji ask her if she'd date Matthew no, McConaughey? No, because he was asking like if I had a celebrity crush or like oh. something like that. Well, Artie is 26. Just from all the drugs, he looks a little bit older. But uh, <laughs> you can date him. Duh, feel free. And you are, uh, you are a young woman. It says here you have a boyfriend, right? Um, not Well, like... We're working on things. <laughs> what do you mean? Breaking up? Well, we did, and now we're working on things. What does that mean? They're trying um, to get back together. Yeah. They're trying, yeah, they're trying it out again. <laughs> why would you do that, Robin? Try to get back together? It obviously didn't work. You're 20 well, years maybe, old. You're good looking. Why, why do maybe that? Maybe they discovered that they didn't chance. like being uh, away from each other uh, once they were. You dumped him, I assume, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone's dumping you. Oh. I mean, you can't <laughs> do better than I've been dumped before. You have? Yeah. Who would dump you? Who's the stud? The guy who... must have been blind. Oh, or that, or you're terrible <laughs> in no, bed. No, I was, uh, I was, uh, <laughs> I was young, um, and he was going to college, and I was still in high school. So it was that like, one oh. of those things. Oh, you were dating the college guys when you yeah. were in high school. Oh, I know. No, he time. was going to college. Oh, he was going off. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, so you just, so you've only had sex with what? This one guy, the boyfriend. I've only had three boyfriends. Is that ever. right? Yeah. So you've had sex with three different guys. I'm just saying I've had three boyfriends. You're not even saying you had sex with all of them. <laughs> no kidding. How old were you when you lost your virginity? That I kept a secret in my pre-interview as well. <laughs> Ganji told me you've never masturbated. I don't believe it. Yeah, that's true. I have not. Liar. I'm, I'm serious. You've never thought... My when friends you... like don't believe me either, but... I'll tell you why I don't believe you. Why? I don't really know you, but... Unless there's some huge sexual hang-up. I don't see how you avoid touching yourself at some point out of curiosity. <laughs> like when you're wiping down there or something, you've <laughs> well, touched it, right? That's Well, hello, that's different. You're all right, back. then all of a sudden you go, oh, let me take a look and we'll see what's doing down here. And then what's you touch doing? a little. 
What do you think, Robin? Is it possible she's 20 and never masturbated? I'm serious. I'm sure it's possible. Anything's you know, a lot possible. of women are a little uptight, and it takes them a while. Why are you uptight? Religious background? I'm 20 years old. I'm young stuff. You think you might touch yourself one day, or uh, <laughs> you think it's a game know. plan? When a man touches you, you like it. Well, yeah, I like guys. Why? <laughs> but to touch yourself, there's some hang up there because most people, by the time they're 20, have touched themselves. Even out of curiosity, guess, you never even. I guess even, I'm weird. I mean, it's simple. You were laying in bed one night. <laughs> ah, da, 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 I'm hanging out. <laughs> then all of a sudden, you don't like, oh, gee, my hand is on here. It mm. feels a little good. <laughs> Have you ever almost touched yourself? No. Wow. <laughs> for real. I'm for real. And you've never fooled around with anything else, like, you know, a shower head or <laughs> you know, no. nothing? You, you never Meat or vegetable? <laughs> you never got off on meat and vegetables? <laughs> no. Like a robin. Not so no? Much. You think that's sick if someone uses meat and vegetables? <laughs> I mean, it's their thing, I guess, if right. they like it. But it shows a disturbed human being, right? Right. <laughs> I'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, boy, I can't believe you never touched. Robin, I'm having a hard time with that. I can't get past it. Uh, I think there are a lot of girls in her position. Don't you think after Thank meeting you. myself and Artie and Benji that now and Fred, she will you will probably to. need to touch yourself? Mm. After? Oh, definitely. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. If I were her, I'd touch myself. You're five foot eight. That's a great height. Yeah, you like five foot eight. I like it, and you weigh one hundred fifteen pounds. Describe to maybe women, a little more after the holidays. Is but. that right? But that's the right <laughs> weight for a girl five foot eight, isn't it? When you, I guess so. Absolutely. I mean, the doctor said I'm a little bit underweight, but for the modeling world, like especially in New York, it's considered big. You've been doing some modeling. You're big in yeah. the modeling world. Yeah. So she's right. You got to stay yeah. super thin. Where, but, do you, where have you modeled? Have you modeled anywhere? You getting any jobs? Um, yeah, things have really slowed down right now, especially like right before Fashion Week, and I'm not like five ten, so. No, I've I gone on like two go sees the whole month. <laughs> well, <laughs> Sasha Lee is right. In fact, Beth's been talking to a lot of her modeling friends, and they said the business so is so slow. bad now. A lot of people, yeah. a lot of girls will like you know. Really? What are they going to have to start doing? Hooking? A real job? Hooking? They're stripping? Yeah. That's go with Dan down to the sanitation department. <laughs> uh, pictures of Sasha Lee are on the web now. As I said, she will be our. The, there's a picture of you. You do look good. Wow! It seems like Great every broad now with photo. the uh, with the internet, every broad has pictures. Well, look but, at those pictures. They're look beautiful. At her. Wouldn't you have your pictures up? That was uh, for Hawaiian Tropic. If I look like you, I. What do you mean for Hawaiian, Hawaiian Tropic? Tropic? I, I did. Um, I entered like a bikini contest when I lived in upstate New York near Rochester, and um, I didn't really know really what it was when I was getting into it, and then I won, and then they're like, "Oh, you won a free trip to Hawaii, and you're going to be representing New York in the." international competition so i went to oahu hawaii for a week and wow. competed and stuff and um i was like in the calendar i was january good for you congratulations yeah, wow. i also uh, i imagine you could work in playboy would you ever consider doing nude work in playboy magazine no i don't know it's, it's not, not, your not thing. for me no you'd feel funny <laughs> i'm then. a little more conservative <laughs> good for you yeah nice I'm, I'm interested so 510 is what you have to be for fashion well you right? don't have to be but if i was like at my height i'd have to be much thinner at my uh. height, but how much thinner can you get? That's yeah. just stupid. Oh, I've, uh, I've seen really thin. Yeah, you but that's good. not sexy. Uh, thinner, you know, <laughs> that. Your parents are divorced, it says here. Mm -hmm. But you haven't been talking to your dad. You're mad at him. Yeah. Why? Um. Well, no, he's... It's a long story, but in a nutshell, he's in his late 40s and he dates girls my, like well my age now that's I was 16 why you think and he was gross. dating a 19 year old yeah. he's dating a 19 year old and he's 40 well he was yeah he was in his earlier 40s then but yeah. well, can you blame him like, what the hell what the hell <laughs> but that's why she feels yeah but it was gross. it was just oh. wrong you know right but, so you're not talking to the guy no oh man you're never gonna talk to him again um as of right now i don't wow. i don't have any intention to Oh is he dating goodness. someone is he trying your age? Not anymore, but there's just like so much weird stuff going on. I'm just like, uh, whatever. Oh, wow. So you seem kind of sad when you say that, right? In a way, yeah. Yeah, well, I hope so. I mean, not to talk to your dad. <laughs> yeah. What what age would you like to see him date? What would be the cutoff? Um, um, I don't know. Someone who's not like, who could wear my clothes and like, right. I don't know. We fought like sisters, so it was annoying. You want him to date a fat chick? I don't care who he dates as long as like it makes him Maybe happy she's and she's gross. nice to me. But it was it just got weird. <laughs> Chick was a nice. She was she was using him too because she had like two DWIs and like uh, I would hear her on the phone and it, like it turned into this whole thing. Oh, so, uh, so yeah, it was a, yeah. there was more to the yeah. The whole she was thing. she was really so she's him. he's not seeing her anymore. But no, you, but you you're still pissed. Yeah, well, right. like a lot of other stuff happened, but that was like the main root of it. You were a pizza delivery girl. 
Yeah. <laughs> I just your... actually filled in for a friend when I was home over break for Christmas. What was your uniform? Nothing special. It's just a little... I, li- I live in a really small town, so it was just shorts, I mean, t-shirt. He let me wear whatever I wanted, kind of. So. You know, let, let me ask you. You were never uh, raped or molested uh, being a pizza delivery girl? I mean, look at you. No. You show up at the door. You know, there's a lot of weird guys. Well, out there. I, mean, I don't show up at the door in a bikini. You do not. <laughs> but even in a shorts and a t-shirt, I imagine guys get a little worked up, right? Do they ever try to drag you into the house? No. no? Um, it, the town is so small. Half the people I delivered to were like friends of family or people we knew through school. Oh, stuff, okay. So. All right. Well, Robin, that sounds very sexy to me. Pizza delivery girl. I, I like that. I think she should think about that. I she could make a lot of money delivering pizza. I bet it's you like, she got huge tips. I, I would tip her two, three hundred bucks. Monday like, Night Football wasn't that bad of a It's night. like the right. plot of uh, every porno, you know, except it's a chick. It's the reverse. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what was your biggest tip? Um, I don't know. I don't even know. I think maybe like 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Jeez, these guys must be blind. <laughs> yeah, that was that. big for me. <laughs> See, I'm a dad out there waiting for my pizza. This shows up $300, honey. Let's go. <laughs> Come on. Let's do it. I ought to keep ordering pizza, I'll tell you that. You're not kidding. Well, listen, Sasha Lee, I've, as a matter of fact, I recognized you right away because you're in an episode of um, Show in the Hallway, Show in the hallway uh-huh. which debuts on Thursday with right. Beth is in it, too. Yeah, I met her. Yeah, you met my She's wife. Hot. She's hot, right? <laughs> so you met my wife, yeah. and uh, you guys work together, mm-hmm. Show in the Hallway. That's going to be on Howard TV this Thursday. Check that out. And uh, we welcome you, and thank you for being Miss Howard TV. Yeah, thank you for having me. And you look great. I mean, what can I say? Good luck with everything. Good Sasha right, Lee, yeah. everybody. Okay, Sasha, thanks. Thank you. Sasha, so, grab me a water, please. <laughs> <laughs> and a pizza. Sasha's looking good. She must work out or something. Oh, they. She must have done sports or something in high school. Yeah, the way of her ass. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I can't. I don't know what the part of the bite it is, but like the side of her ass. You need a girl like that, Audie. I've decided. All right, but I'm too old for her. forty-one. Oh, you got to go out and pursue her. To show her how hot a forty-year-old guy can be and how much fun he could be. I, I don't have time for that. <laughs> you don't have time to work her, right? Yeah. I mean, what the fuck do these broads want me to do? I'm working. Sasha, how'd it go? It was good. Wasn't that bad, Short right? and sweet, yeah. <laughs> so, Howard doesn't believe that you don't touch yourself. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Whatever. That's so hard to believe. Well, he doesn't have to believe me. I don't know. I know it's true. <laughs> um, a fierce competition between nine applicants auditioning to fill the position of former Howard Stern staff member, Stuttering John. This week's applicant is Dan the Song Parody Man. This is Dan, the song parody man. I was picked first here to do my audition week for winning John's job. Quite honestly, I'd rather be picked first for the gangbang and go last for this. However, I'm going to set the bar pretty high. Hopefully the audience will respond, they'll like, they'll vote for me, and I'll be working here. Hey, well, good luck, man. Thank you very much. Hey, Dan, the uh, song parody man is here. He's, the, uh, he's one of our listeners who applied for John's job. Uh, this is his first week here. This guy's good. One of his tasks, like on The Apprentice, is to write a song parody, which fits into his strength. Bring him in here. Let's meet him. There's the man. That That's our that man. Is? That's Dan the Song Parody Man. Look I at him. I didn't realize. I knew I recognized that face. Hardworking dude. Big ponytail, long ponytail. Somebody said Double A should be one of the guys because yeah. he was so funny the other week getting those things thrown at his ass. Oh. Has he applied? I think so. Me and Fred were talking about that Saturday night. That might have been the most fun we've had in a long time. <laughs> you look like a Harley mechanic. Well, uh, I have a couple of Harleys. I had a lot more before uh, things went bad, but I know how to rebuild them. I know how to work on them, but I could not come in handy on the show. Sure, absolutely. I mean, he can fix the cars. He could fix our motorcycle collections <laughs> if we I, get one. I can fix basically anything, though. I mean, I figured I, I come in here, you tell me everything that's wrong, and I'll have it all taken care of for you. No yeah. problem. You're a pretty talented guy. Over the years, you've sent in material. Let me see what you did for your. Uh, now, every day this week, you will do a different bit. What's your? What, what do you have to do tomorrow? I'm actually waiting to be told what you want me to do. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I mean, I know I have to write and produce a comedy bit. Right. I've come in with a lot of prepared stuff, but I figure what I really want to do is show everybody what I can create while I'm here. So I had a few song parodies prepared. Right. But in the time that I had, the one that I think you're going to play is something that I just banged out this morning after you did I arrived. That while you were here. Yes, I brought my little portable production. I got everything loaded on a laptop. Awesome. I can create whatever I want. Yeah, I'd hire you. All right, you get the job. Thank you. <laughs> what? No, it is pretty great. I mean, he had th- five other songs, and then he just thought of this one while he was sitting around. Let me see what you did. What's his task for tomorrow? We're going to talk about it. I mean, he's got to. It's going to. He has to find a whack pack member. He has to do um, 
a celebrity interview. He has to produce a comedy bit, and he has to come up with uh, an interesting piece of information on a staff member, which yeah. is sort of unfair because he's only looking at me and Casey. He's not really interacting. Well, let, let, him, uh, let him interact. Let him sit in the office. Yes, no, he's been in the office. Oh, okay, good. Yo, you know, I was just rapping to Dan before, and he was telling me about the Whack Pack me member that he has in mind. And I got to tell you, man, I'm not going to tell you who it is or what it is, but I think he may have found gold. <laughs> Oh. Well, you're a motivated guy. I, I may have struck out. I'm, so I'm you should be president. Very seriously. Yeah. Very Where seriously. Are you, from? are you from out of town? I, I'm from North Jersey. I am oh, okay. At this hour of the day, if I'm able to wake up, I can be here in 15, 20 minutes. Beautiful. Uh, Howard, in the meantime, he pitched me on guests that have nothing to do with the contest that are, are going to be great for the show that we're going to get. And another idea he had. If you get, if you get this job, that means you're going to have to go to dinner with Gary. <laughs> well, that's not Do you think fun. you can handle that? Absolutely. All right. Fun. Sit on the opposite end of the table and keep my hands clear. There won't be dessert, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> a lot of your songs deal with the Casey theme, being gay, and I mean, I that's, a good, that's a good theme. Yeah, Any, yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Anything related to the show, right. I guess. Anything funny that happens in the news, something that you discuss here. No, hey, you're good, man. Well, thank you. I, I look forward to seeing your work this week. I'm going to do my best, and even if the listeners you know, decide that I'm not the best man for the job, it's such an honor for you to pick me and have uh, me come in here and at least take the shot. Well, thank you for that. And you know what? It's weird. You'll probably get the job, or someone will, that we choose, and then we'll be gone. <laughs> that's not, that's not going to happen. I don't know, dude. I'm being serious. I, can't, I think it is. Well, you know, Maybe I'm being crazy, but I don't see any way out of this one. It's tough, but I mean, even if you go to satellite, which is, it's got to be a last resort, and the whole FCC thing just kills me. You wonder, how can these people wield these power if they're not even elected? I and, know. And you know what the reason is? Is because the FCC was formed for granting licenses, deciding what frequencies you should broadcast on, making sure that if you're a 50,000-watt station, you're not putting out 100,000 watts. Yep. That's what their responsibilities are supposed to be. And now, they're, and now they're dealing with all these moral issues. And I think Gary said it best a couple of weeks ago, is they're trying to make us uh, conform to the community standards. But if a community votes, listens to you, and the ratings are that you're number one, the community has spoken at their standard is that they want to hear the show and the content that's on it. I gotta tell you, you're speaking like a man who uh, is gonna get a job that's non-existent in a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, I'm still gonna do my best for it. Good. I'd love you're to have it. You're making too much sense. Dan, the song Parody Man, he's one of the people who will be trying out for John's job. All and, this uh, week. I wish you luck, buddy. You're good. Thank you very All much. Alright, thanks, man. That's impressive. Very impressive. Everybody has their own talents. This guy Dan can knock out stuff one, two, three. He's got a good mind on us in his incredibly tattooed body. And he sounds very motivated. Yeah. Now, will that stop once he gets the job? Yes, it seems to happen to everyone here. <laughs> That's it. So, Howard, Howard said I got the job already, so uh, I'll start right now. So, you think you're impressed, though? Yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, I'm very impressed with what you guys do here, and I try to, you know, try to do work that's consistent with your standards. So if I don't think something's good enough, I'm not going to send it in. I'm just going to strive to make it better and better. All right, Dan. Good luck. We'll see you in two weeks when we get the job. Yeah, I look forward to working <laughs> with you all. The guy who applied for he wants John's job. He's here. His name's Dan the Song Parody Man. And he wrote his bit for today. Oh. That he's going to present. And actually, he wrote a bit for us to do. It is Sternak. Uh, so he's not doing the bit. We're doing the bit he wrote. I thought that was very inventive. Yes, it is. He wrote the whole bit. I haven't even seen it. You're just going to do the script. You're I'm going to do the go script. Off. Okay. All right. This is Sternak, where I'm the great visitor with great psychic powers. All right. And you we introduce. Get it. Yes. And now, from a dark, dank, Foul-smelling, quivery, sweat-soaked, lint-laden, stinky abyss, Star Jones Naval. Oh. It's Sternak. Uh -huh. The improbable. Bim Salabim. May you become so obese that you refer to Dominic Barbara as Mini-Me. <laughs> Yucca. I hold in my hand yes. ten envelopes containing questions, but... You will give us the answers before even reading the questions. May you have the betting prowess of Artie Lang. <laughs> <laughs> Internal affairs. Wait a minute. You're the great one. No. <laughs> Internal affairs. Internal affairs. Internal affairs. 
What thoughts caused Arnie Lang to go through three boxes of tissues last night? Oh! I don't get that. <laughs> Internal affairs. What, you know, I guess maybe I was having a certain type of sexual dream, maybe? Oh, all right. Yes. Mm, all right, let me... All right. I've got to explain every joke. Uh, jumbo shrimp. Jumbo shrimp. Jumbo shrimp. Describe Gary's teeth and something he likes to use them to chomp on. <laughs> Jumbo and shrimp. Okay. May your wife grow so fat that you refer to her belly button as the fourth input. <laughs> A mayoral candidate. A mayoral candidate. How might Michael Jackson describe a young boy in mid-spring? A May oral mm. candidate. Okay. Right. The song party was good. I don't know if that's making it on. <laughs> an epileptic, an epileptic pate chef's apron. Oh boy, an epileptic pate oh. chef's apron. I can't say that again. Name the only thing that has more liver spots than Joan Rivers' ass. <laughs> <laughs> what? An epileptic pate chef's apron. Okay. Let me get down to the last one here. Yes. And I have the in my hand the final envelope. Hey, Dan, what's your best joke in here? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> hey, Dan. It's May crazy. you look so much like the missing link that even Fafa Foey laughs at you. <laughs> what's your best joke, dude? Some of these are bombing. Really? I thought... I thought they were all pretty strong, but uh. Well, may Marco Battaglia may Marco Battaglia be your spotter at the gym? <laughs> I'd say uh, shoot right to ten if you can. All right, here we the go. Last one. Big finisher. In my hand, I hold the last envelope. May your list of babysitters include Paula Poundstone, Michael Jackson, and Woody Allen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There she is. May you make the mistake of falling asleep while Benji Bronk is giving you a Turkish massage. Ooh, oh, great one. <laughs> Baba Bui, Dominic Barbara, Tom Chiasano, Ralph Sorella, Casey Armstrong, Snoop Dogg, and Christopher Reeve. What, are you taking oh, attendance? <laughs> I can't read that. Name a chimp, a blimp, a skimp, a wimp, a simp, a pimp, and a gimp. <laughs> All right. All right. The rule of three should apply. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, Dan, the song parody, man. That's your... Uh, that was his bit. What do you do for a living? I forget. I'm actually working as a sound man on the weekends. I have nothing else going on during the week, which means... I'm available for the Stern Show. Super. Oh. All right. Dan, the song party man. Right in a bit. Very he can creative. keep his weekend job. Yes, you can keep your weekend job and work for us during the week. <laughs> See, I would love to dump right. my weekend job. What are you doing tomorrow for us? I'm probably going to be uh, either giving you an interesting story about one of the members of the staff here, or I'm going to uh -oh. surprise you with my celebrity interview. All right. Very okay. good. Okay. Well, that didn't go over so well. Come here, Dan. Come here. Sure. What happened with your Sternak bit? Well, I think it was a good bit. However, the one thing that was missing is when they used to do Sternak in the old days, Jackie would be there laughing hilariously at his own jokes. And he, part of the funny part of the bit was he would moan and groan and complain when they didn't get one of his jokes and try to explain it. And that kind of even, you know, spiced up the fact that they didn't like one of the jokes and it would just continue to keep the bit rolling along. But I think I had uh, ten really strong jokes in there and unfortunately we didn't get to all of them. How do you think you're doing so far overall? I think I'm doing pretty well. Um, I mean, maybe my friends are blowing smoke up me, but everybody says that I'm doing great. They're enjoying what's happening. There's been some good response on the internet, all the Stern fan sites. People are talking pretty well about it, so I'm pleased so far. Good luck, man. Thank you. We're looking for a replacement for John, Stuttering John. And the first guy we've been talking to is Dan, the song parody man. He's been doing a good job all week. His task today is to tell us some station gossip that he has learned while he's been here. And here he is in an effort to get John's job. This is the gossip? 
Dan the Song Parody Man. How's it going? How's it, how, let's see, this is day three. How's work? It's great. I love it here. You do? It's an easy job? Well, I wouldn't call it easy, but it's something that you enjoy doing. So A lot of pressure to come up with uh, funny material and things? Sure. Sure, right, a little bit. I can deal with it. You can handle it. Absolutely. Obviously, you can. You've been coming up with stuff. Now, one of your tasks is, while you're working here, to observe and uh, tell us something that you see going on back there that you think is humorous. Uh, do you have something to report? Well, everybody's been pretty tight-lipped. I've been trying to get some dirt, and right. I think the best dirt that I have is based on some prior experience with Artie. Oh, good. It's an arty thing. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, let's hear what it is. Uh -uh. Okay. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we were out in Albany. He was doing a comedy gig, and um, I have a rather large vehicle, so sometimes I drive the guys out there because most of them are pretty large guys. Right. That way, we don't have to take four or five cars out there. That makes sense. And um, this has happened before, but this was really a good one where after the gig, you know, throughout the course of the gig, Artie's, you know, being Artie and having lots of drinks and enjoying himself. Right. Yeah. And by, yeah. Th by 3 a.m., he's in classic rare form, but he's wise enough to realize that there's no way that he wants to wake up the next morning and drive back with us with a massive hangover. Right. So at 3 a.m. in Albany, he's able to find a taxi driver willing to take him all the way home. <laughs> To New to Jersey. New York, to, oh. <laughs> now, in classic Artie style, not only does he find a taxi driver at 3M, <laughs> he's able to find a taxi driver that can show up with a full Sicilian pizza for the drive back. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Wow, is that true? I I was it was last Friday. We were about to go on vacation. We did the gig. I got paid. I was drunk off my ass, and like Dan said, I didn't want to. I didn't want to wake up. I wanted to sleep in my own bed. That's a real arty story. So I got a cab driver. I said, "Find the pizzeria that's open." I got a whole Sicilian pie. I went in the cab. I threw the pie between me and the cab driver. <laughs> me and the cab driver woofed down the Sicilian <laughs> pizza before we got out of Albany. All right. <laughs> What uh, what does it cost you to go to Jersey okay. from Albany? Okay, charged me three hundred dollars. Okay, I gave him five hundred bucks when wow. I got back. So I because I, I was going to work all night anyway, so I wanted to tip him. <laughs> but the the kicker of the story is, after I finish my last slice, I fall asleep in Albany. Yeah, I wake up. We're on Route Seventeen in Jersey. I slept the whole ride. Which <laughs> oh, was, that's wow. beautiful, it perfect, like a baby, but uh, like a baby. But you slept in the front or in the back. I slept in the front with the guy. Wow. The pizza box was separating us, and the driver was a great guy. He looked like one of the Allman brothers. He was like, great. So I wake up, but when I wake up, I realize I have to throw up. Ah! Oh. There's nothing, like, I'm about to just go. So I say to the driver, I go, dude, pull over. I got to throw up. And he, like, <laughs> without missing a beat, just goes, all right, dude, fine, you know. Pulls over to a gas station. I open the door. I start violently throwing up outside the cab door at a gas station at, like, 5 a.m. A, a cop, a cop pulls over. <laughs> Did he make you clean it up? I'm surprised the cop didn't call in because he clearly recognized me. Hmm. A cop pulls over, shines a bright light on my face <laughs> while I'm throwing up. And then I just look up at him and the cop goes, ha, 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 and then he just drives away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So it was a big pile of vomit on the floor there? In the gas station. Yeah. Somewhere huh? on Route 17. Someone had to clean that up. I guess so. I vey. So then he drives me back. I go in. I get him 500 bucks. I give it to him. And he goes, big fan, tell Howard I support him. Nice. <laughs> And then I slept till 5 p.m. the next day. Beautiful. Wow. Uh, you know what kills me is that he always gives you the slip and does this and takes off. If I had known that, I would have driven him home for the 500 bucks and then went back to Albany that night to drive the rest of the guys home. Uh, Joe, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Howard, I don't know if you want this guy sitting so close to you. He sounds a little faggy. Who? Dan. Dan the song parody man? Yeah, he sounds... Yeah, he's, 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 Driving a bunch of guys, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't say that if you saw him. Nah, he, this guy's come down here and say I'm going to take your job, you faggot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you have to win over the audience. They're the ones who are going to vote. Hey, uh, bitch. I sent my tape in. Oh, that's why. Hey, I hope you're not calling me a bitch. No, no, Dan, Dan. Right? Oh, oh, you're fine. talking to He's me. Well, 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 tell me the name on the tape, and I'll go in the back room, and I'll make sure they pull it and listen oh, to it. Oh, you'll edit it up, make a real great song parody? No, we'll just give it its due <laughs> diligence. <laughs> Shut up, Dan. You're out. Whitey's in. You're out. You're the man. Uh, white rapper. That's oh, my that fans it. calling in. <laughs> mm -hmm. the, now he calls himself the white rapper. I've never heard a rap by this guy or really anything funny. All right, Dan. Good job. Can Did I? Sorry. Can I give you one more quick arty story, pretty quick, because I think you'll enjoy it. Is it really good? It's pretty damn good. Okay, if you remember when uh, he was in Vegas doing that gig Super Bowl weekend, yeah. and he had the big um, auditions and interviews going on in L.A. directly after that, right. and he did that call in after we were at the strip club early in the morning, said he hadn't even read the scripts yet, right. he was going to read them on the airplane to L.A., everything would be fine. 
So, of course, Artie leaves. I take over his suite because it's still booked through the weekend, and it's a much nicer room than I have. Right. And what do I find face down on the counter in the bathroom is the scripts. So he went to L.A., didn't even bring the scripts to read. Yeah, and he, by the way, he really impressed Mike Judge in that, uh, in that interview. Well, he was, he was well prepared. The funny thing is he changed his flight so he could party that night in Vegas and go to L.A. early in the morning. His agent doesn't know that, so the phone rings early in the morning. I'm sleeping in his room. I answer it's his agent looking for Artie. He says, <laughs> he called the hotel where Artie's supposed to be. They've never even seen or heard of him. Yeah, I know. It was they a fiasco. Don't know what's going on. Yeah, and you really blew the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, audition. I, I, I blew that one. No. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> the script was in the room. Yeah, you got to roll an elf. Hey, it was Super Bowl weekend in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, come on. I want money. Hey, can people we... just give Artie jobs and no auditions? That's right. Please? I mean, what are you yeah. talking about? You know, it's just too much. Sure. I read the script. I could have done the audition for <laughs> <laughs> You would have had a better shot. <laughs> you would have been better at it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you were prepared. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dan. Thanks, man. Good I luck did. back there. Got, Dan's a good guy. Dan's got two more, two more days here. All right. Thanks, and uh, sorry for spilling the beans on you, Artie. That's all right. Yo, Howard. Tomorrow, Dan is bringing his whack pack member in here. Nice. 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 <laughs> it's supposed to be good. How you doing? I'm Dan, the song parody man. I'm here to win John's job, of course. Went over to listeners. They have me doing a bunch of things, and one of them is to find a new whack packer. So I brought my buddy Andy because I think he can, he can be the king of the whack pack. And uh, <laughs> he's just an all around great guy. He's a funny guy. And, uh, I think he's going to come in, and I think Howard should like him. I think the fans will like him. He uh, hasn't had a girl in a while. He's a generally horny guy, and I was able to convince him to come on. I said, you want to come on the Howard Stern Show? He's like, yeah, they always got hot chicks on there. I'm coming, man. I'm there. Why is he so wacky? Um, he's just an all-around, he's just all-around wild guy. I mean, some guys, some guys are mellow. Some guys are, are wild. This guy's always the life of the party. Why are you wacky? Different. What? what? Why am I wacky? Yeah. I don't know why God made me this way, but I just... Um, it's a force of nature, I guess. Very good. I'm going to get to uh, Dan, the song parody man. He's here. He's got uh, one of his assignments is to find a new Whack Pack member. Find the next Beetlejuice. So that's one of his assignments. He'll mm -hmm. be handling that. He uh, He's a good dude. He's been good so far, don't yeah. you think? Yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah. Doing a good job. Somebody sent me an email and said, oh, he's another one of those Howard Stern Show insiders. He's Artie's driver. Somehow they interpreted that from that story you told the other night because no. he gave you a ride home from somewhere. But no, yeah. no, he's not. He's like a he's like a motorcycle repair guy or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That we know from. Uh, he calls in. He calls says in and says funny stuff. Now, your assignment this week, Dan, the song parody man, to get John's job and to win the money and all of that salary, I should say. Uh, was to find us a new member of the WAC Pack, somebody who is so interesting and so compelling, the audience will instantly fall in love with him. Now, who have you found for us, Dan? I see him sitting next yeah. to you. Who is this? Well, this is my friend Andy, and uh, wherever we go, he's the life of the party. We've hung out a few times, and prior to me meeting him, I just heard the legend of him. you got to come hang with this guy. you got to meet with this guy. He's just unbelievable, fun guy to hang out with. How you doing, Andy? Fun, fabulous. I mean, there's a great place. For... Where are the girls? <laughs> well, right now there are no girls. <laughs> now you're an unusual looking guy. I'd say you look like a. Um, uh, what does he look like? Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, Stone yeah, Cold like Steve Austin, type. like yeah. a wrestling type. Are you a wrestler? Uh, uh, no, I'm just Andy. But uh, like I, I would say more of a cross between Stone Cold Steve Austin and uh, Quasimodo. Yeah, and you got an interesting speech pattern. That's one of the things that people love about the Whack Pack people, like Beetlejuice or or Elliot Offen or someone like that. What do you have, some sort of weird speech thing going? Uh, yes, I do, sir. Um, about 14 years ago, I had a, it was in a car accident, I had a traumatic brain injury in which I died five times. And you died five times? Yes, it shocked me back to life three times and brought and did CPR the rest of the times because you can't shock somebody more than three times that I get more neurological damage to their heart muscles and stuff. Much like I did during my Stern Act bit the other day. <laughs> Brain damage is good. That uh, would almost put you right into the whack pack. And, right. and Yeah, I mean, that, that... I do see an unusual dent in his head. Yeah, there's a dent in your head, and the eye is a little bit yeah. shut, and the whole thing, right? Right. Yeah. Well, that's good. We like that. It's a strong visual, I must tell you. And when you... Uh, what kind of accidents was this? Car accident? Yes, sir. You went right through the windshield? Uh, no, I popped two holes in the windshield and busted the side one about bouncing back and forth. Always, wow. always, always, always wear your seatbelt. Always wear your seatbelt. Always. I you mean, didn't wear it? No, sir. 
I know lots of guys who still don't wear their seatbelt. I don't wear one all the time. I never wear it. 87% of all accidents which incur in injury or fatality happen within a two-mile radius of your house. And you had a great life going for you before this, right? I was, yeah, I was a welder at uh, B&G in Plumsteadville. Were you uh, getting laid a lot more when you uh, were uh, before the brain accident? Um, yeah, just a little bit. I haven't done so in 14 years. 14 years? You haven't gotten laid in 14 years because of the accident, right? Well, yeah. Boy, do you wish you wore your seatbelt. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, when you're not getting laid, that's a bad accident. So what happened when what, you? What? Why? I mean, I mean, the is it you can't get girls? Well, Look at the guy. He's, he's, I tell you, I tell you, what, take just you're talking, talking to, to that the mic. microphone. You see me, correct? Yes. Am I? Uh, you know, attractive? if you just stand uh, in the attractive? dark on the one side. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> what are you saying? He's like two faced. Yeah. One side of his face is attractive, yeah, and one. I've, had, I've right. had people, say, you know, talking to me and say, "Who are you looking at?" <laughs> so, what happened when you died? I mean, did you see anything? No, that's what I don't understand. Because they say, you know, I've heard stories of people seeing stuff when they die, and you know, talking to God and whatever. Hmm. But if you are dead, that means your brain is no longer sending enough. It's not no longer active enough to operate your body, to operate your heart and stuff. Then, how can you remember what is going on? Yeah, I don't know. Well, if that's a good question. I never died before, my friend. <laughs> you're the one who died five times. I still say, if someone says you died five times and you're still sitting here, you didn't die. You're alive. Right. Well, the flat flat line. I mean. Yeah. Why don't you go to the eye patch thing? Cover up that eye and yeah, that's cover a up look. the dent. What's head. going on with that eye? Is that just a? Uh, I have I have twenty forty vision in my r right eye. Mm -hmm. What's going on with that 20, other eye? Twenty twenty vision in my left eye. Oh, um, the problem is not the eye itself. It is the third nerve group, which is the nerve that goes between the eye and the brain. Can you read? Yeah, I have no problem. No with problem. Reading. No. I don't know, man. You're depressing me. I don't think I'm going to put you in the whack pack. You just seem like a nice guy. Look, why am I depressing you? I don't know. I feel sad. You had the accident. You're not yeah, getting laid. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. You're not, Do you're I not, look sad? Nah, you make me sad. I feel bad for you. Do I look like sad? Beetlejuice is a happy-go-lucky Who in the whack pack is getting laid? Nobody. Do I look sad? <laughs> Beetlejuice? <laughs> no, you don't look True. sad. Well, then, please. Does your penis still work? I don't know. No, you know if it works. Does it work? Yes. Then I'm sad for you. <laughs> because it's not like you couldn't get sick. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm not going around sleeping around like I used to when I was younger. And I'm not getting, I'll say. I'm not getting AIDS and dying. Well, that's true. There's something happy in that. <laughs> that's a positive. He's a man who looks at the bright side. Okay. Uh, you have to. <laughs> this isn't a guy I'm going to laugh at, though, Dan. I'd be I, miserable. You know what I mean? You know you really, it's its hard for it to come across from the get-go, but when you're in like a partying environment, like if I was able to bring him to Vegas or something like that. You see a I party going on he, here? He'd be the man. Well, <laughs> at times there is. What he, does he do at a party? <laughs> he, he's just he entertaining. Flat lines. <laughs> <laughs> when they flatline you, did you ever say, gee, I, I wish they hadn't revived me? No. You're glad you're here. Yes, sir. All right. Every breath I take. Ever, ever go to any whores for massages? No. Sir. No way. Why would I pay for venereal disease? Interesting. No, I would go to a whore. Well, I like you. I'll tell you that. Nice guy. Yeah. You're a nice guy. He's he's really You're a good guy to hang out with you. He wants to meet chicks. He was kind of disappointed that there wasn't going to be girls here when I said oh, no. Oh, what's I'm, Robin? Well, well I'm, he's kind of embarrassed to mention it, but, but he okay. told me that he kind of does have a liking for Robin. Uh -huh. oh. Well, who doesn't? He's got big cans. See, Robin's a classy chick. You want? She's out of. She's out of my league. You need a little whore. You do it. Way out of my league. There's no party going on there. Believe me, you want a whore. I mean, for all the times that Jeff the Drunk almost scored from being on the show, you'd think you'd think that he should be able to get girls on his own. Robin digs a guy who takes her to the opera. Right. Who doesn't know what bling bling is? Say the truth. You two actually make a nice couple. I think so. I know. I mean, you two. <laughs> oh, okay. Dan yeah. and uh, yeah, Dan. I like him. Uh, I don't like him that much. Right, we don't see I, eye to eye. All on right, everything. let me move on with the show. I'm jealous. I like meeting you. You're a nice guy. Thank you, sir. Dan, thank you, Dan. The song priority pleasure. man. Thanks okay. for having me. There he is. He's our he's our guy for the week. He's hit some and he's missed some, but that's like anybody. Everybody's gonna have that happen. I'm sure. That's right. All right. All right, guys. Thanks. Thank I, you. I get back to work. Okay, <laughs> I'm on it. 
There he goes, Dan the Song Party Man. I'd love to get drunk with Andy. I'd get drunk Does with Andy. Does Andy still Let's do drink? It. You better drink, my friend. There goes Andy. Thanks, Andy. Take care, brother. He's not a whack pack guy. No. It's Dan thinking. You got to get a dwarf in here. You got to get a stutterer in well, here. Well, he's not. Something. He's not crazy. No, that's what no. we need. You need a crackhead it's Bob. It's the whack pack. Man, we're talking about wacky. <laughs> you need an Elliot Offen. Yeah, you need something wacky. Something off the wall. This guy's not even a Captain Jenks. Something you can hardly get into this studio. Is <laughs> yeah, right. Somebody you have to wheel him. You need a guy who, when he craps his pants, claims it's a blister. Yeah. <laughs> no. This guy's a little too logical. Maybe yeah. he should have been drunk. Kikey Doodle Doo. Yeah, you need keep saying, well, when he's at a party. You need Kikey Doodle Doo. My Kikey thing. Doodle Doo. My these are killing me. Let's go, baby. You people. Nice. Yeah, Jeff is a fine. Yeah, that guy's hardly a train wreck. No. <laughs> we want a train wreck. Whoa! No, not at all. You know, she didn't... I don't think he got the full dose of you from the get-go, but... You know, when we go out and we hang out, we go to parties, when there's a lot of show-related events, you know, comedy shows. Once you're out, the, the public, but the public warms up to you right away. Right. And, and I mean, as far as somebody to evaluate, they do evaluations on the show all the time. I think you'd be a perfect candidate for evaluating women, especially because you're brutally honest. All right. You know, and... and um, Andy. Yes, sir. How do you think it went in there? I think it was quite terrible. I don't think Howard was impressed at all. Um, it just didn't didn't click the way that I would, you know, that I thought it would. I don't know why. I'm confident that uh, if I keep this guy around, I bring him around to some stuff. The public's going to warm up to him, and he'll be back by popular demand. The public. The public. The people will speak. They'll want Andy. We. Valiant effort. Valiant effort. All right, we're good. Just uh, do it yourself. What are you gonna do? It just didn't click. I don't know why. Hey, this is Dan, the song parody man, and today's my last day for my week-long tryout for Stuttering John's job. I think it went really well. I had a great time working here. Everybody's been really nice, made me feel right at home. There's been some ups and downs as far as the success of some of the work that I did here, but I'm proud of everything I did, and it's an honor to be here, to be selected, and it's a dream come true. I'll never forget it, and uh, hopefully the listeners will respond, and I'll get a bunch of votes, and maybe I'll be back for three months. What's the best thing you did here? The best thing I did here is just, just being here. Actually, I think the best thing I did was the Stern Act bit that flopped because we only got to three jokes. And I can tell you a little bit about that. It didn't go the way I wanted to. I wanted to be in the studio playing the Jackie role during the bit, which, was, which would have kept the flow going because that was part of what made it so funny is him laughing at his own bad jokes and trying to explain the jokes that people didn't get. And that's what kind of kept it rolling along. And it's unfortunate I didn't get to do that. You said that you had some lows. What were some lows? Well, I guess the lows was the flopping of the Stern Act bit and the fact that my whack packer didn't go over that well. And I still think that ultimately, when people see him on the E! show, they're going to warm up and they're going to think that he'd be good. You get one look at the guy, and, and I think he's instant gold. And uh, hopefully maybe he can get in here one way or another on his own and be an evaluator or something like that. Good luck, man. Thank you. We're all pulling for you. Thank you. Everyone's counting on you. Thank you. I'm counting on your vote. It could be the one that puts me over the edge. This is Dan the Song Party Man. Today's his last day. This is his week tryout. His week-long tryout. And he's got a story about a staff member. Okay. Hey, Dan. Pleasure having you here this week. It's your last day. I know you've been having a good time. The best. That's what I heard. I heard he's a workaholic. He's worked himself right in, uh, himself right into the whole mix here. I see him hanging with the guys. He fits right in. He was at our staff meeting yesterday. He, uh, he's been hanging out till like 4 in the afternoon. Yeah. Do, working harder than Actually, Howard, it's pretty funny. Amory called me at home uh, two nights ago. It was 6 o'clock, and she's like, I'm leaving. Can I leave him in the office? I'm like, no, you have to tell him he has to leave because we want to leave him here alone. But he stayed till 6. Wow. If you get hired, are you going to stop that, or are you going to? No, no. I, I, if, if I like what I'm doing, then I'm just going to do it constantly anyway. All right. I'm a bit of a workaholic if I'm inspired to do the work. Good answer. You know, yeah, I've been getting here consistently at 5.30 in the morning. Today I was a little late. I was here at about a quarter of. So I had a little... uh. 
incident yesterday during the show. Everybody's been great this week, and particularly Ronnie has been nothing but fantastic and supportive and friendly. And you know, we kind of joke around. Ronnie, the limo driver. Yeah, we joke joke around as if we're old pals, and he's always made me feel at home here, even the other times I've been here. However, yeah. When it was time to bring my wacko in yesterday, they were in the front green room right. by, by the lobby, and um, it was time to bring him in. So Casey was looking around, couldn't find Ronnie. So he was like, Dan, Dan, you got to find Ronnie right away and uh, have him bring your people up. So I went through the hallways. I found him. I was like, Ron, well, Casey needs you to bring my people up right away. And he took care of it. And afterwards, he pulls me aside. He's like, look, I'm not kidding around with you. Don't tell me how to do my job. I know what I got to do. You don't have to tell me what to do. Oh, I've been doing yeah, this for yeah, 19 right. years. And I said, look. I was just given a message to find you and pass this message along to you. That's the long and short of it. I love you. I respect you. You're a great guy. I know you know Ronnie's how to do your job. Ronnie's a weirdo, man. He's just carried away with that job, that stupid job of him sitting there bringing people upstairs. What did Dan do wrong? I was the messenger. I got shot. You, you, all you did was say, hey, get the guy up here? Exactly. I, I said, Casey said to, to bring them in right now. And then he started yelling at you? Well, he brought them in. He took care of that. And then afterwards, he pulled me aside and he... Uh, what John. he read? No, absolutely not. And and he read. He read so you got an act. attitude. Dude. I don't have an attitude. The guy, what, what are people supposed to do? Kiss your ass? That's your job. Go down and get the guy. <laughs> are you are you crazy or something? No. I, you you give. I I hear you. You sit and you razz everyone in the halls. I hear all about it. What are you talking about, man? You got to you just do about? your job. It's not a social. It's not. It's I'm not pick on people. We I'm not feel. picking on anybody. What are you talking Did he pick about? on you or not? What are you talking yes, about? actually, Dude. actually, to to make it um yeah, come on, John, to, put it on yeah. to make to make oh, it more uh, 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 to make it more clear. Yeah. he pulled me aside and said, you know, the razzing is fine. It's look, look, all kidding aside, I'm dead serious about this. He actually even took me like three feet away from his chair. He got out of his chair. I'll take care of it. I will take care of it. Okay, I know what to do. When I bring one guest out, I bring the next guest up. Okay, you don't have to. Follow me around and tell me what oh, to do. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Casey, all right. Let's get that straight right now. Absolutely fine. Okay, good. Now you can go do what you have to do. Casey specifically told me. I don't care what Casey told you, okay? I know what I'm doing. I know, but I don't. And you don't have to tell me what to do. I'm not telling you what to do. And what did he say to you? And he was dead saying, he said, look, I don't need you to tell me how to do my job. Exactly. I know what I'm doing. What did he do wrong? What did he I was going to get the guy. So he said to you, brought the hey, guy. AC told me for you to get the job. So what, 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 to get the guy, why, do you, why, do you, why, do you, why did you have to pull him aside and let him? If you walk out now, then I know you're lying. This ain't work, this ain't even worth talking about. You gotta take the why word did you, lunatic. Did you pull him back. aside? You know what, what's your problem? Did you pull him aside? Yeah, I did. Why? What did he do wrong? What did he do wrong? He asked you to do something? I had already done it. But he, he doesn't know. know so he why did you? Get, he saw me bringing the guy back. Did you know? No, actually, I, I why got. Why would he ask you to do uh, something? Actually, what happened is I got, I you got know him. What? He's been sticking all week. I haven't been sticking at all. I've been keeping it real, and maybe, it, and maybe it's to my disadvantage. Why as far are you as lecturing people? I'm not lecturing anybody. He what asked he you to do it? something. When he I. Ain't, Lonnie, when I caught you, you were on your way to get them. You okay, hadn't already Dan, done it. You it was what, right Dan, outside the other green Dan. room. You said, look, I just took care. I walked Chris Rock out of here, and then I'm thinking them and bringing them back. Exactly. I know how to do my job. I know job. what I have to do. But I know but you know, know what you, know you know have to do. Your do. Job. I was passing along a message, and what I'm thinking to myself is, you know, how am I supposed to know he's, which, he's, which request yeah. the people give me? I'm supposed Dan, to disregard. Yeah, time. I'm glad for you. Okay? It's, it's not right. a matter of time. You do this with everyone. Yeah, I do not do, do this not with everyone. Do not lecture but. people about how they came. He came over and what asked you. What do you mean you, I do it with everyone? Who do I do it with? I, I, I can jump in on that one. Go ahead. I, I, a couple of the guys out there are a little afraid to come in, but they said that if Ronnie perceives you as below him, this is how it was just described to you. If Ronnie perceives you as below yeah, him, okay. and you give him what he perceives as an order, mm -hmm. he'll pull you to the side in all seriousness, and he'll tell you, don't tell me what to do. Oh. And I didn't even attempt to give him an order. Uh, here oh, we go. Oh, yeah. as well. ah. oh, everyone's wrong but you. Yeah, okay. Everyone's wrong. Yeah. I've been uh, hearing this. Listen, yeah. It's, it's yeah, true okay. about you, Ronnie. Like, you freak out on people sometimes. Like, we're, we're buddies and stuff, but there's times when you just go nuts look on how, me look for how, no reason. Look how serious he's trying to like, be Like, what do you mean? Huh? But, well, he is being I'm, serious. You're not serious. listening. No, no I'm not listening because I know Will. Will. I swear to God. Look, we joke around about stuff. All morning long, we joke around. Yo, Art, I mean... Why are you joking around? You're the security guy. Why? Watch the door. I'm not. Why are you out there entertaining? I'm people? not enter entertaining people. <laughs> you are. I hear the Ronnie show. 
Sit right down and do show. the job. What are you talking You're about? pulling aside Dan the song parody man. He says, could you please get this guy yeah, from downstairs? Right. Yeah, okay, fine. It's it a wasn't polite from, guy. It wasn't from downstairs. Oh, the guy wherever. was in the front green room, okay? All right, so he asked you to take care I of it. I had already taken care but of it. But he didn't know. He doesn't know that, that, Ronnie. Do you think he has an attitude and he's now going to see you doing something oh, and yeah, say, okay. do yeah, it? Here comes the knife yeah. from her now. No, I'm just asking <laughs> yeah, okay. you. Is that Fuck what he's going to do? What yeah, did he do fine. wrong? Tell no, me what he did wrong. He didn't wrong. do anything wrong. I'm completely wrong, okay? Are you? Well, yeah, I'm wrong. Happened, okay, I'm then wrong, okay? What did I'm you do wrong. wrong? So I learned. I'm wrong. You know what? Don't talk to me anymore. Oh, outside, get out. Okay? Oh. See, why are you going to be like right. that, too? See, there you go. Nobody has now to you, talk to this me. Is no, I don't want talk anybody talking to you. I don't right. want anyone talking exactly. to you. Exactly. Do your job. I don't want nobody talking to you. What did Will say? Don't you talk to me either because well, you, you wait a stick up for these lunatics. Wait a minute. I want to <laughs> well, know from explain to me. I've got your damn back all Explain to me what you did wrong. And you're the guy. Who's always throwing me under the bus? You like, cannot I'm terrorize. Wrong, okay, you Ronnie, cannot terrorize this place. It, man. Get out! No, oh, come on! I want to hear what Dan did. Well, you know what that I'm thinking? That made him pull him aside. Let him have his side. The reason of the story. he the reason he's yelling and acting crazy because he has no side because he knows he did wrong. <laughs> yeah, and, and I hate to cause this kind of controversy. But oh you know no, what I'm it's thinking good. Is, I'm wondering no, if maybe is, when the, Gary yeah. Busey attacked Howard that somebody was afraid to tell Ronnie to come in and do his job and break <laughs> well, it up, give and me that's an why it went on for Ronnie so long. Does. It's the same nonsense, man. You go, hey, Ronnie, there's a guest in the front green room. Can you go grab for me? Oh, oh. I mean, he it's, it's every once in a while he just snaps because he, he likes to kid around with you, but every once in a while he'll just get real pissed at you and he just start yelling at you like, what, where did that come from, you weirdo? Right. He's a little bit of a freak. <laughs> His temperament's a little scary. But well, why would he be mad? That's his job. Exactly. I but would no, love he to sees, know what Dan did. He sees me as like underneath him. You know what I mean? So like when He's I'm telling, when you. I'm giving him an order, it's like, who are you, Joe Schmo? Like you know, get out of my face with that nonsense. <laughs> I think I know what happened and, and why Ronnie has a problem with me is that. I left my wallet out, and he saw that I have a driver's license, and then later on in the day, he saw me sitting in a chair, and now he feels threatened by my qualifications that I may be able to do his job. So, I mean, and, and I really, I'm not here for Ronnie's job. I'm, I'm right. here to you don't want fill to do the void that was left yeah. when John right. left. Right. Well, yes, Chauncey. Hey, Howard, you know, it's true about Ronnie. Let me tell you something. I'm not afraid to say this either. One time I mentioned Ronnie's name on the air. When I was in the studio, yeah. and when I left the studio, he pulled me over to the side. He put his finger in my face and said, don't you ever bring my name up on the air again. And I'm not kidding with you. Wow. Wow. Was, I, tell I, you, guess we need a so I guess we need a security guy f to secure us from Ronnie. Yeah, who's going to protect <laughs> us from Ronnie? And if he doesn't like you, you know what he does? If he doesn't like you, he'll, he'll take that, that uh, stick of his, and he'll, he'll play security guard in the hallway and go up and down your legs, through your crotch. He'll make you take things out of your pockets. And then somebody else will come on the show, and I'll just let them go right, right in. Hmm. It's unbelievable. You know the part that Dan left out of the story, too? What? After that whole thing went on, he turned around to Dan, and he said, uh, Jesus Christ, we got rid of one pain in the ass. Now i got to get another wise ass in here? I heard that. Wow. Yeah, actually, got, I heard he, that from the green room. He's got to stop doing that. Wow. Oh, you did a nice job this week. Thank you. It's been great. And you went first. That's tough. Going first. I, I always thought, you know, it was fantastic to be here. I would like to be the guy to go first in the gangbang, but I would prefer to be the guy to go last in this situation. But <laughs> right. it's been great, and hopefully, you know, all the bugs were worked out. You know, anything that I did that made people uncomfortable, they'll know to prep the other people coming in to tell them not to do it in advance. Right? Is there a trap door or something I can use to exit the studio See, through so I can? Part of the thing. He's still sitting here. You don't want to go out yeah. there. No, do what, you? what Dan has to master now is what John mastered of sucking up to the person you just threw under the bus to the right. point where they start to like you again. <laughs> right. You got to first start off by saying, I love you, man. You know I love you. Yeah, me. you got to go out and say, oh, yeah. Well, well, he, 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 he knows that already. Come on, Ronnie. You know I'm, you know I'm only... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John was brilliant at that. Yeah, Darren. <laughs> hey now. Hey now. Hey, uh, when's the contest start to replace Ronnie? <laughs> How do I answer? <laughs> uh, let, let's do this one and then we'll do that one. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right. You <laughs> know what you should do? Do what I do when I have a fight with Ronnie. Parachute out of the building. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to see anyone. Just take that window and parachute right out. <laughs> Sounded like, though, he was angry at you, too. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, he just feels abandoned. <laughs> he doesn't like the criticism. <laughs> You always throw him under the bus, according uh, to Under the bus. Right <laughs> under. I've been real bad to him. Really made his life a horror scene, let me tell you. Running around scores. Like he owns the place. I'm going to have to put a stop to that. I didn't, terrible. I didn't like what he said to me. I'm going to call Lonnie. Uh -oh. Cut Ronnie out oh, of scores. Oh, now you're hurting oh. him. You're cutting That's... him to the quick. I just didn't like the way he uh, talked back. 
Why don't you just stab him through the heart? That would be easier for him. And I'll be the one that's blamed for perpetuating the whole incident, you know, so... Yeah, you're, you're finished. I'm There's so much to talk about this morning. We have such a busy morning. Yeah. Eli Braden and Little Mikey, who do all the songs about you, uh -huh. they're stopping by. They're promoting a live show. They're going to sing a, a song or two for Is us. Is that right? We've never had Eli down here before. Little Mikey, of course, we have had yeah. down here. Hey, guys. Hey. Now, hold on. I got a... Boy, you never know what these guys are going to look like. <laughs> yeah, I do. I always know what these guys are going to look like. These are guys who sit at home and write songs about you all day, Robin. Robin, don't we look as good as uh, Adam Levine? Wouldn't it be great if uh, you guys were like really hot studs? And Robin goes, holy shit. Like, <laughs> like she'd have a whole different feeling about your songs, right? Wait, we're not? Uh, no. Well, right. Inside, inside. All right, thank well, you. Well, well, you're little Mikey, of course. Yes. And little Mikey, um, you're, you're grotesque. But oh, Eli, what, what, is there a word that's more than grotesque for Eli? <laughs> Eli, couldn't you have at least slimmed down? How much do you weigh, Eli? <laughs> I have no idea. It's way too much, though. No, oh. you have no idea what you weigh. I don't. When, you, when you're this heavy, do you get on a scale? You see, I would expect the guys who sing about Robin in this lewd fashion would look the way you guys do, and you don't disappoint. <laughs> Robin's sitting at home praying you guys are going to be super hot, and she's going to end up in a torrid love affair with you. So, uh, you've been showing up at Ronnie's block party. I did the last several block parties, yeah. Why hasn't little Mikey joined the block party? Yeah, I, why I, are you never there? I was there for the first three or four, and then... Oh, were you? And you realized how yeah. horrendous it was, and you decided not even to be a part of it. <laughs> that wasn't it. <laughs> oh, Ronnie's like little Hitler there, too. I'm going to I'm gonna act to actually Ooh. fight with him later, because... Really? I'm watching tape of the block party, and Ronnie, like Dan the Song Parody Man, who is like a, a friend of the show, one of the original guys, you know... Ronnie's got him back there. Ronnie is ripping into him. Nobody wants to see you up at the station. Get the fuck out of here. Really? The? And I'm like, Dan is a guy who works with me. You know, he's part of our family, or part of our show. He and he and, and and Ronnie's the security guy up here, and he's busy screaming and yelling at people. He doesn't want. I want him up here. Ronnie doesn't want him up here. Nobody <laughs> wants him. Up. It's crazy. What but he, Ronnie speaks for everyone. Nobody. Yeah, yeah. He's fighting with Dan the Song Parody, man. What is that? What are you up to in my name? I mean, what are you doing? You, you're, what do you you're, mean, what am I up to The Ronnie Block Party is a separate little thing I let you do. You're the security guy here. You're a representative of mine. You can't scare my people away from Hello. coming down uh, here. Uh, I'm not scaring anybody. You can't threaten somebody and say, you're not welcome down mm -hmm. here. No one wants to see you at the radio show. I like Dan. Okay, good. I'm, I'm sorry you I don't. I don't like Dan. Yeah, but I but nobody asked opinion. him. nobody asked him to come up to the green room and talk to me. Because after what happened with uh, him and Beecher... With that whole thing when I was in L.A. saying that I... Ronnie, you, you know, decided to go to Beecher's Madhouse. They didn't have, have accommodations for you or whatever. It wasn't... It had nothing to... You, you know, cannot Why is it fight? always me, dude? Because you, you know work what? for me. That's why. Yeah, but you I get that. I didn't fucking make a reservation under your name. Nobody did. You're out on the road like Eddie Van Halen yelling at my people. 
Well, he had no business coming up to my my private area and speaking to me. Listen, you okay? Nobody asked him to come up there. You're going out. I'm on the sorry, road. man, you but I'm not. I'm not people. dealing with that one. Why because, are you fighting with him? Because he comes up to me and he started a whole thing. Uh, thank you for inviting me to the block party show, which I didn't do. That's I didn't want nice him thing. there. I didn't want him he there. Said, thank, wait a second. He said to you, "I thank didn't you for invite him." Hold it. Let's get it hold that it, straight. Hold it. Who cares? I care. He is a guy who is a, the only reason Ronnie's block party or anything else exists in your world is because of me. I understand Dan that. Dan contributes to my show. Okay, that's fine. Why are you fi The guy came up to you and said, thank you for inviting me. Okay, you didn't invite no. him. Be gracious and, and I say, said, you're welcome. Goodbye. I said goodbye. Goodbye? I don't yeah, exactly. Why do you have to attack someone why who does he for me? Why did he have to attack me with his friend Beecher on the phone? Do you I didn't do this? anything. He said thank you for inviting oh, me, and uh, you, you know, and you yelled at him. That's right, why I did. Why can't you ever be the bigger that's right. man? <laughs> why are you? Why are you always the little man in stature and everything? Yeah, okay, every stature, single way. Yeah, okay, dude, don't give me this. Can't bullshit you be now. the bigger man? Don't give me this bullshit can't right you now. Be the with the little man, man bullcrap. Okay, can't I don't want to hear it. Be the bigger right? man. I don't want to hear it. D the guy walked up to Ronnie and said, "I don't give a shit you. if he walked up to me. I don't want to fucking talk you to him. I don't to like him. Shit he's a phony. People. He's a bullshit artist. Then don't bring him to your okay? show. Okay, I didn't bring him. Who let him in? Surely. Then you've got to be gracious. Surely is part of this uh, channel. You're part of this channel. You then don't for come me. to me. Don't come and talk to me. Hey, he knows I didn't want him. Then he, he knows walked, I don't like him. He walked up and said something nice to you. Well, I'm sorry. And you could have just I don't want him to say you something nice. You could have just said, hey, Dan. I didn't want him. He didn't belong in the green room. You could have said, Why he didn't belong walking in the green room. He had no business walking in there. He was invited by Shuley. Not into the green room. He, he was so invited to a show to sit in the seat in the audience. Not Why don't sit you understand what I'm saying? I don't understand, and I don't want to understand. Okay? <laughs> I want your IQ test. I don't give a shit. I'm not taking no fucking IQ test. You're getting, listen to me. You're getting carried away. With no, yourself. I'm not. Yeah. No, I'm not. You I don't do anything it. like that to anybody. I, I saw you. You're sitting there in your muscle shirt. Hey, Dan, fuck you. Yeah, right. Exactly. Wait, exactly. Eddie Van Halen? Stop I didn't it. want him there. I didn't want him there. I'm sorry. The it's whole thing is a goof. It's not a goof. Dan contributes to the show. Good. I'm glad he contributes to the show. You are not allowed to say to him he's not welcome at my show. I didn't say that. Yes, I you said, did. You said I nobody said, wants him down I said, there. Nobody. I said a lot of people don't like him. That's here. not your job. That's what I said. Let me worry about who. Likes well, him. no. He brought up all kinds of shit. He brought all kinds of shit up to me. No, he didn't. He yes, said he thank did. you for inviting oh, me. Yeah, okay. you could have said you're welcome and left him alone. Yeah, no, I don't want to leave no, him alone. You, he had no, because you're a big, big shot. No, you're I'm a not big a big shot. shot. No, I'm not a you're big shot. You're gonna teach him a lesson. No, I'm not teaching him a lesson. Stay away from me. He knows we don't get along. Stay the fuck away from no, me. No, no. He came. If you're gonna go out on the road and use my good auspices. Then you must be an ambassador. What? You must be an ambassador. <laughs> I'm being serious. You have. I'm to be being serious too. I'm not taking be... shit from anybody. Okay. You don't know. I'm what not I... taking shit from Dan the Song Parody Man. Well, he's you did, let's he get that straight. You. Okay? you started in with him. I don't come near me. He hey, knows I don't like. Don't him. do the block party if you can't handle the heat. Yeah. Okay. Fine. You hear me? Yeah. You're, you're a public out. Figure. Yeah, I heard you. You're done with it. Okay. Fine. It's enough with the block party. Okay. Then. Fine. You can't handle being in the public. You're like a zoo animal. I'm not a zoo <laughs> animal. I don't talk to you a little bit. And you no. start Act like a chimpanzee. Yeah. I got to sit there and take it. You take. You, you know, people take shit around here. Did da I don't have to take his did shit. Did Dan the song party man say something terrible by saying thank you for inviting me? Sounds pretty nice. Yeah. What do you think, Eli? Well, I just don't want you to pull the plug on the block party because uh, that's one of my few sources of income right now. Well, we have the beat and greet. Well, that's all right. Well, you could have the block party without me being there. Yeah. Believe me, the block party would be the same. Yeah, exactly. You got to calm the fuck down. No, I don't. I will not calm down against that Look shit. Look at how successful you're being. Why don't Roddy, you you are my gracious. security guy. What does that have to do I with that? It. I'll tell you exactly what happened. What does that have to I'll do with I'll that? I'll draw the connection since you can't see it. Yeah, I'm stupid. Dan comes down here. You're the security guy. He has to feel welcome in my halls. He has I to don't bother him when he's here, dude. I, I they do don't, not don't bother sit him. and fight with him. I at don't bother with party. anything Shuley, to do with to, him when he's here. You should have said to Shuley, Shuley, excuse me. I would prefer you don't invite Dan in the future. And then when Dan was down there, you could have just been quiet Shuley and pleasant. already said that. Shuley he said he had no business being up there. All right. And starting so, the whole shit like he did. 
But uh, you, what did he start? He How said, did he start thank by you saying for thank inviting you? me? Yeah, no, he didn't belong there. I'm no, sorry. Ronnie's a big shot. No, I'm not a big shot. Okay, big shot. let's get that straight. I'm nice to everybody. What's it? You were not brother? nice to. No, everybody. I wasn't nice to him. No, you just said you're he nice wasn't to everybody. fucking nice to me. All right. He said thank you for oh, inviting me. Please, he I don't said, give a shit. You, you've got to give a shit. You have a job here. I understand Which is that. More important. If you want to be fucked by Ronnie Block Party, then give up the job. I understand when he's when he's here. I open the door for him because he does his card key doesn't work here. I can't so I have, have to let him in. Feeling okay, uncomfortable. Uh, fine, fine with me. You're the I source of his discomfort. I am fine here. I am fine when he's here. I no, you're Ronnie, not. Ronnie, do you understand how well you're doing? Robin, I know exactly what's going on, and excuse I will not, me, I will not take shit from him. What she's saying. I'm sorry. Do you know and how if he well calls in you're on the phone, doing I am life. walking out of here. I will not talk to you this man. You could be gracious when I have to, to somebody. First of all, you can't call because I have no phones. Okay. Well, oh, that's, really? That's yeah, not, yeah, that's going to blame my, me, too, for phone? that? No, I don't blame you for that, but we, what I'm blaming you for, you really got to sit down and think about because you're not comprehending it. Oh, I am comprehending it. I saw. I don't take shit from people, okay? I'm sorry. Well, then don't work here. Then you need to go work in a, in a motorcycle gang. Okay. You don't take shit from people. You will take shit from people. No, I will not take shit from him. That's the last person I will take then shit from. Then don't from. go on the road or don't work here. Choose one or the other because you can't. You, you, you need to be locked in a cage. No, I don't. No, I'm I not. Really I'm fine on the believe. road. I'm fine. I don't bother anybody. I don't I'm nice. believe you could I'm be more than upset. nice to everybody. You're telling him he's okay? not welcome here. I'm I am more than nice to everybody. He is Eli? welcome. Yeah, Eli hasn't crossed you. No, in I'm, your, not, no, I'm not even talking about. Mind. I'm just talking about. He sees how I act towards people. I'm great to everybody on the Dan road. Dan walked up to you. Right or wrong, no, Eli? That's true. Dan walked up to you and said, I don't "Thank give you for inviting me." He didn't deserve the viciousness. I, didn't, you I threw wouldn't at him. care if Dan walked up and kissed me and said, "I love you." I would have still told him to get the fuck out. No, the things not if you get angry about, Ronnie, are so silly. So yeah, he yeah, said yeah, Robin, that okay. he gave us yeah, the story from Beechers. What's the big deal? You, you, you're you really upset call, about that? Yeah, I'm really upset about it because they used me to fucking get airtime here. Yeah, Ronnie was out okay. on the town, and he didn't get things his way. No, and was he's it? a very big star. Oh, yes. And Beach's Madhouse. I don't give a fuck. Sit in your room and wait till the next show. You got a big job with me. You got to rise to the occasion. You can't be a hot... You ever hear what happens yeah. to hot-headed cops? Hot-headed cops get I thrown not, off the force. I am not doing anything. You're a hothead. I, no, I'm not. Yep. No, I'm not. No, you I'm gotta not. You've got to keep You're it under control. Head. Nothing really happened. That was the first time that ev anything ever went down like that at a show. Ever. Well, don't let it happen again. If yeah, Dan walks in, Chris control Brown yourself. And Drake? Yeah, we, who are you? Did you, read about, did you read about Chris Brown and Drake? How stupid those two idiots are? That's how you're carrying on. Get out of here. It's ridiculous. Run. Oh, stop it. Talk Brady. to me first. Will thing. you please? I'm on your you side, You heard man. the whole fucking thing. Why do you have to interview me now? Well, because I feel there's a lot you, that wasn't said. Yeah, this, you know what? It's, it's always... I'm, everybody's always wrong. Nobody's ever right. Now, Dan's right. I'm wrong. Okay, well, fine. That's fine. What has he done in the past that has aggravated you? I don't, listen, I don't even want to... He's the best guy in the fucking world, okay? He, he never uses anybody here. He's always nice to everybody. He does everything for everybody here, okay? I'm the fucking scumbag. Why didn't you bring up the arty money issue and other things? Because I felt have? like it. No, I said, wh I said why, why didn't you go more at that? Because, uh, I, leave me alone. I'm just saying you, you had, I don't, I don't you had a nice be, case against it. I don't want to fucking it. be bothered with it. Go cover your fucking, uh, during a break, go cover it. Leave me alone with this shit. And by the way, you know, I know I'm tough on Ronnie the limo driver, but Robin... He, he's got to understand I'm running a business. Well, he should be diplomatic. He's doing well. Yes. People come to see him. You don't start screaming, and the, and the thing he's screaming over is so trivial. And then I see uh, Derek uh, Simon, who works for us. He used to be an intern. Now he works for Howard TV. Hey, listen to his tweet this morning. What the fuck are you looking at, motherfucker? Howard's limo driver uh, said this to him. When he walked in this morning at 5.48. Wow. Ronnie sees this guy, Derek, in the holes. What the fuck are you looking at, motherfucker? This is how he greets people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what is That's that? That's the new good morning. What is that personality? I've created a monster. A monster. I saw this video of him fighting with Dan the Song Party, and I go, what is he doing? He's got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. And how could he be angry? He's a superstar. He's throwing tantrums back. He's a limo driver who now has Ronnie's block party. Yeah. 
And he's forgetting he's a Ronnie, he's limo driver, Ronnie. He's thinking he's block party, Ronnie. <laughs> I mean, I, I have to always keep him in check. <laughs> Sean, you there? Howard, good morning. How are you? Good morning, pal. I wanted to comment on Ronnie Munn this morning that he, uh, I'm retired law enforcement, and maybe I could sit down and have a talk with him because he seems to be losing his cool lately. Yeah, would you do that? Because Ronnie wants to be like a cop and he wants to carry himself like a cop. But that means when you go out and do these shows and stuff, you can't start yelling at people backstage who work, you know, with me and are associated with Just my show. Just imagine Ronnie in a riot situation. Oh, uh, <laughs> they would arrest him. See, I, I'm not sure. Do you think it has something to do with his height? Because there used to be a height requirement for the NYPD That's back right. in the 60s. And Mel Gibson's a little bit of a short guy. And it seems a lot of anger with uh, little men. You know, Maybe. Eric Midget being, uh, you know. Sean, and all jokes aside, I've, t I've told... Cause Ronnie really kind of fancies himself a cop, like, you know, yeah. like he walks around in his suit and he tries to, you know, be all cop-like. And I say to him, though, but a cop's got to be calm in a situation, right, Sean? And, yes. And, yes. And you're going to sure. have to deal with a lot of crazy people. Ron, talk to this guy. He'll tell you he's a cop. Talk to I, him. He'll tell I you. I thought Ronnie was a retired what? cop, uh, Howard. I know he's a cop. How do I know? Yeah, because he L says so. He's a cop. Well, I don't know. All right. Hi, Joe. cop. How are you? Sean. How are you, Ron? You're a How cop. You doing this okay. Are you, ni are you nice and calm? This is not the block party. Yeah. I just want to uh, maybe right. just, just What this a gentleman is saying, judo, I, I, I tend to uh, believe him. How do you tend to believe uh, him? Whether he's a cop or not, he's saying the right thing. you got to have a certain way of handling yourself. I handle myself just fine. You did Ronnie, it. I'm you a saw cop. The tape. If you like to ask me you a saw, few you questions. Saw ask him a tape. I saw you the tape. You saw the tape. Okay, yeah. fine. I saw how you handled yourself. It wasn't. It wasn't good. And Dan, the song parody It wasn't man. good? What did I do? I told the man Watch to get out that I don't like. First of all, d the idea that he anyone... He didn't belong there to begin with. The idea that anyone shows up to the block party anybody is a miracle. Who, hello. Be anybody, happy. Anybody, you're out there. People showed up. Who was Dan was invited to be, by Shuley. Not and to Dan be in the back. Dan is a guy who not works... Not to be in the back. He was... Whatever. You don't have to sit there and You go yell to the show. Scream. You were invited to the show. Ronnie, you're yelling you go now. To the show. I'm not. Yelling? I'm explaining, sir. So could you no, calm you, down you for a second? You can't be. You're the guy. To, listen, Dan, this. Let me explain it one last time. And we don't listen, have to go into it. You know this. what, dude? You know what Dan I don't understand parody, about you? Man. You know what I don't go understand ahead. about you? Go ahead. The guy who's got your back all the time, you never have his back. That's right. That's what I don't get. I pay <laughs> you. Never. I pay you to have my back. Okay, great. And if you're going to be that guy. I got it. No, you didn't. Why don't no, you I listen? Got it now. Oh, no, I got my. It. Now he's getting clear. emotional with you. Dan, the song parody man. John, Ronnie, don't leave. This is an important point. I can't believe No, you need to know. I know where I stand now. That's right. When you, you listen to me. Very clear. That's right. I know where I stand. That's I have fine. done more for you than anyone on this planet. I didn't say you didn't. Okay, so now, when it comes to having uh, someone's back... I never said you back, didn't, ever. I changed your life. That's called having someone's back. Now, get over your fucking bullshit. Dan the Song Parody Man, yeah. listen to me. Yeah, a nobody. That's is, what you stand is a for. guy... Oh, okay. He's a nobody. <sighs> That's right. He is as far as I'm concerned. Okay, but this isn't about what concerns you. It's what well, concerns me. Then and don't you want to? If you want to, don't, don't try and be my friend. Have, okay, you, I'm not trying to be your friend. No, I'm him. being your boss. No, him. But Ryan listen to your boss. I'm not talking about listen you. To I'm your talking boss. about him. Listen I don't to, need him to be my friend. Listen to your boss for two seconds. Okay? I don't need him to be my friend. King, this is a guy who comes. I got a lot of common sense. I got him pretty far in life, right? Yeah. Okay. Trust me, I got your number. Do you think he walks into a room all the time and he loves everybody in the room? I don't. Ronnie, I've been in many situations where I'd like to raise my voice, but the louder that people get, you have to lower your voice. You have to. If you really want to be a security guy and you want to be the guy who has my back, you've got to conduct yourself, especially Dan is a guy who comes up here and works with us from time to time. I, you know, I have I to never do bother things. him when he's up here. I, but you're setting I an example do where you're sitting and carrying I open the door and, and I say goodbye. You sound That's like it. a lunatic. Okay. So... If I, something I goes like down, if something goes down, people are going to pull all these tapes of you being a lunatic and mm -hmm. say, "Look, this guy's a lunatic." Right. You've got to be better than that. I'm a lunatic. Breathe Raise. through your nose, Ronnie. Breathe through your nose. Candy has a giant mustache blocking. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Ronnie. All I'm saying is listen to this guy. Breathe through your nose is a good fucking example. Okay. You know when cops are in the middle of a riot and people are throwing shit at them? Right. They got to remain calm. They want to kill him. They want to kill these motherfuckers, but they can't. I was, in, I was involved in the Crown Heights riots, uh, Howard, and you had to stay calm and cool. You couldn't. Uh, right. People were throwing things off the off the roof. Sure. At you. Dan, the song party man can't get under your skin like that, and you can't behave like that. Bottom line. Bottom line. That's it. You, you want to be security? Trigger. You can't be both.
You can't be wild, man, Ronnie. Showbiz, Ronnie. I wasn't wild. Oh, I saw it. I wasn't wild. I the guy, the guy didn't say anything Ronnie. bad to you. He walked up and I didn't said, want thank him you there. for having me. You didn't want him there? You should have quietly gone over to the promoter and said, can you please ask Dan to leave? I don't want, I'm performing tonight. That's how a man No, no, I had, had no problem room. with him being at the show. He had no business being backstage So you afterwards. should have walked over to the okay. promoter or Shuley and said, I'm uncomfortable with Dan being here. Can you ask him to leave? You didn't have to carry on like a maniac. You, am I right or am I wrong? I, I, uh, Ronnie, I had things to get off my chest. I don't care. Do you can't do it. You can't do it. Then you chest. can't be in the riots. You can't be a cop. Okay, fine. I, I never said I was a cop. Well, How you're acting that's, like that's your opinion. opinion. Well, if you want to be the cop on this show, you've got to be one way. I'm not sure if he's tall enough, though. How yeah, do you okay. think this is a problem? Right. Is it a high problem? Are you? Are you? Do you have little man yeah, complex? Yeah, little man complex. Yes. All right. Well, that's Howard. I have to point that's, out one that's thing. It. Now you got it. Well, here's Dan. Dan wait, is wait on the your phone. Mm. Wait a minute. Hi. Ronnie missed yeah. a part of his mustache when he was dying. Do you see? <laughs> yeah, there's a portion of your mustache <laughs> you missed. <laughs> that's why. Sean, let me talk to Dan if you don't mind. Uh, no problem. All right, thank you, uh, Dan. Look, I don't know what happened there. I, from what I could tell, you didn't say anything mean to him. No, as a matter of fact, in the beginning of the in the beginning of the show, during the show, Ronnie walks up a center aisle and it was a linoleum floor. Right before he got to this point, somebody spilled a drink and he would have clearly wiped out. As he passed my seat, I'm like, Ron, well, watch out, there's a spill right there, just look out for it. I didn't want to see him fall down and break his hip or something like that. Well, I know and you I walked in and you said to him, uh, hey, thank you for allowing me backstage. He claims he didn't want you backstage. He could have easily gone over to somebody. It didn't need to turn into a yelling match. Did Dan start to no, 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 absolutely not. I yeah. basically extended my hand to shake his hand and say, it was a great show, thank you so much. And he's like, I didn't want you here. If it was up to me, you wouldn't fucking be here. Nobody fucking likes you at the show. Well, Nobody I see, he walks around the halls, he tells people, fuck you, hey, fuck off. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? He's got a personality. Yeah, well, he represents you really poorly out in public, right. and he's carrying, he's carrying his anger from that incident at Beecher's Madhouse, where uh, somebody called and said that you were coming, and then these girls showed up with him. And even in that incident, I clearly stated in the email that it was definitely unbeknownst to Ronnie that these girls dropped your name, and he can't make the distinction that I wasn't trying to throw him under the bus. Wow. On top of that, Howard... If you remember, I emailed you when you were out of town to say, hey, is this for real or not? Because I wanted to know, you know, if they could be prepared for you. And you said, no, it was definitely a hoax. Now, if I found out afterwards that it was... The All right, Dan, I'm not going to go into the fun. whole... I'm not going to go into the whole history. I don't know what happened there, but I've told Ronnie he's got to calm down. He's got, if, he does, if he has a problem with you, he could have gone over and asked uh, someone to say to, to, for you to leave. You didn't have to turn into a whole thing. But I don't even know why he has such a problem. It's a, uh, it's a silly yeah, incident. No. All right, Dan, thank yeah, you. I, mean, I, I, I really appreciate you going to the bathroom. Howard, well, what I'm saying that. is you are a guy who works up here, and, and, you, and you don't seem to bother me at all, and I don't know if, you, if you're bothering anyone else, but it, what I, from what I observed, it was crazy what was going on there. And uh, All right, Dan, thank you for calling him. Thank you so much. Just quite, you know, real quick, quite honestly, the amount of stuff that I've been doing for the show lately is not as much as it used to be because I really feel um, undermined by Ronnie, and I, I make every. Well, that's my problem. If, you, if that is really true, Dan, I swear, it, I swear it on my life. He makes me feel very uncomfortable there. I've even missed or been late for creative meetings because he set a rule that I have to sit out sit outside and wait for him to come out and get me, and he won't get me till after the meeting started. So then I end up missing. A part of the meeting or not even going in because I don't want to show up look like the asshole walking into the meeting late when I make an effort to be all there. Right, well, I, I'm, I got to get to the bottom of all this. There's wow. a lot of uh, nonsense going on. Not, I, mean, I got to find out what's going on. I know you got to go, but the fucking block party is awesome. I mean, uh, Ronnie is the weak link. Everything else about it is great. It's the ultimate fan experience. Dan does say, like, the Ronnie, Dan says the block party is awesome. Hmm. Howard, it's, it's like, it's like the, feel, the vibe I got was like when we used to go out to Vegas and you would do the live show there. Yes. Just the feeling it's of all lies, dude. Why is it lies? It's all lies, show. what he's saying. What is the lie? Just calmly tell me. Don't I'm get telling you, it's up. a lie. With the, with the stuff where he says, I have to let him in. No, he calls to the back. The, the receptionist calls to the back. Most of the time when he gets here for the meeting, see, he won't even fucking let me fucking talk. <laughs> I, I can't cool stand it, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> security person. That's the security guy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. I didn't say 
Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, you got my back. <laughs> no, maybe you should hire Dan as your guy, What man. is going on with you? You're having Nothing. a fucking breakdown. What <laughs> is that going on with me? Is this too much it's all, all He's these, lying through his teeth. Is all the success Everybody too much? knows how he's lying through his teeth here. Is the success he too much? He comes here, dude, and he got to see, He sits in the lobby until somebody... For, it, reception, so what? Reception, relax. But he's lying. Don't you understand? He's the biggest liar around here. <laughs> He is the biggest uh, I, liar there is. Uh, Ask Artie. He'll tell you what a liar he is. Well, I know Dan Artie and Artie. Artie knows what a fucking liar he is. I understand Dan has had a problem with Artie, and Artie's had a problem with Dan. But what does that got to do with you? Nothing. And he's lying Calm about down. this whole thing here. About how he co I make him uncomfortable. He says he's he, working less for us because yeah, of well, you. Yeah. Is he lying? Yeah, he's lying because he hasn't even been in New York. He's been in fucking California in Vegas with his fucking buddy. So you know what? He's a liar. I'm telling you, he's a big fucking liar. All right, all right. And he uses people. He uses their fucking well, apartments, their food, their money. But you're my security guy. You can't he's be involved in all this He's nonsense. a liar, though. This is for me Don't, to evaluate. He involved me in it when he came up to that fucking green room. You're a piece of shit and you're a user, dude. Yeah, but dude, Admit if it, you okay? have these feelings about people, these are people who work with me. Can you Understood. put your feelings aside and... And just be Dude, professional. when he come up here, I didn't say shit to him when he came up here. Yeah, but, but I see you're in the halls. Fuck you. One guy oh, we were joking around. What is that joking? What, we were fuck joking. You? You, see, you see a guy and you go, fuck you. We were leave joking, me Dude, we would jo we do it How all the time. How does anyone know when you're joking? He knows. Derek knows. We fuck around all the time like that. Why do you fuck well, around? Just be a normal guy. Just walk in like a, like a security guy. Be professional. Okay. Stop with all the fuck you and... Uh, Remember, you, you got into that fight at AGT? I was like, what, 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 why are you joking around so much about fighting and yelling? Just be, just be straight. Straight shooter. You know, Howard, the guy just exercises poor judgment. Yes, and that's right, Dan, and that's you're the <laughs> smartest guy around. You are so fucking smart, dude. You don't. Need, you are the. You know why you're so smart? Because you use everybody, and everybody sees through you, though. That's the problem. But why are you busy oh, seeing you? through him? We all see it. We all I, see I, it. I have here. a relationship with him where he well, writes good, song I, parodies. Dude, that's fine. You're, 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 you're creating a, an, an animosity and a no, hostile environment. No, I'm not. I stay away from him. I don't even fucking. And he stop came telling to, people, fuck you. Dude, he came to me. Nobody asked him to come to me the other night. He ha he came to the show. Something nice. Good night. Leave you, at the sure end of the show. You, you the leave. Water. You leave at the end of the show when you're done. Right or wrong when you get but invited. So what? He went back Who to hang out with Julie. Who we don't, no, so Julie didn't invite him back there. You're upset, Julie didn't want him back so there either. Go to somebody and say, bring Julie and he'll tell you he didn't want him back Ronnie, there. Ronnie, the way to handle that. You have some problem with Dan. You quietly go over to someone and say, "Excuse me, I'm not comfortable backstage with Dan here." Can you ask him to uh, finish up his business and leave? That's a, that's a, that's what a human being does. I'm not human then, I no, guess. No, you're sitting in a chair yeah. pontificating, yelling, yeah. screaming. Sitting, no, I was sitting there talking to people that I work with yeah. up there. So go over okay? and tell someone to have him removed. Stop it. Dan, yeah. are you going to the block party in Jamaica? Um, you gotta know, go. About it. You gotta go. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You gotta go. get on that boat. Yeah, he'll go. There's no boat. It's a plane. It's not a boat. Plane. You it's gotta get on the plane. Resort. Can you imagine that block party when Ronnie and Dan? Yeah, it'd be Jamaica? great. It'd be awesome. We could sit and tan together. <laughs> Look, I see you're on the outs with Scott the engineer. You're no, I'm not. Outs. That's what I heard. Yeah. Well. The problem is Ronnie just lacks any type of ability to logic or reason. Surely, what is yeah. all this? It was, it's a, it's much ado about nothing, yeah, surely, right? Surely, if you if you throw me under for your stupid comedy <laughs> show, let shit. Tell, surely, what, I, I what just is this? Walk, tell this the goddamn I mean. truth, okay? Surely, what <laughs> is? It? Why couldn't life. he just walk over to someone and, and instead of he was putting on a show for everyone backstage? No, so I wasn't putting on is. a show. No, I, I wasn't. Are. You said you no, were putting on. This is the new Ronnie. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. I didn't know this. These two were at this level. Right. And Dan called me up the day the show. He said, "Hey." I had a gig. It fell through. I'm gonna. I want to come down to the yeah, show. Yeah, I wonder why it fell through. So I said, uh, I said, okay, no problem. Put him on the list. He came into the show. I saw him pretty much the whole show downstairs in his seat, watching the show with everybody else. Right. And then after the show, and this was after the show, right, Ronnie? Yeah, it was. Yeah, so I was downstairs. Thank you. Please, Thank Julie. You. Julie, I, please make like you don't know what's going on.
No, Please. because I, Ronnie, I didn't. I wasn't there for the start of the fight. Ronnie, I was nobody downstairs. knows what you're doing here. Yeah. I was you're, downstairs. I, you're, 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 you're berserk. No, I'm not berserk. He people was there. Came he up to, was people came up to me and said, Ronnie and Dan are going at it. And that's when because I came Ronnie, upstairs. Because Ronnie, this is his personality. Right, this he's is my personality. Hey, fuck you. You're right. an asshole. I walk in and Dan's... Hey, lady, what are you wearing? You're with a guy with shorts. Hey, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. it's, he thinks he's making him famous. I walk in right. and Dan's throwing okay. money that's at Ronnie. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. If you're a security guy, you walk over calmly and say, Dan, the song party man, I'm not exactly comfortable with him tonight. Could you ask him to finish up his business and leave? That's a cool guy. That's the guy you in charge. Howard, my, my only business was, I was running late. I literally just wanted to walk in, say thank you, and go. And then I was verbally assaulted by this guy. I'm standing mm. there with my yeah, you were yeah. Run, you were running late. You'd stay 20 minutes before you came upstairs. All right. That's, how late, that's, how, late, that's how late you were running. Surely, what, do you have anything you think, to you add? You finally to this? figured your way to get upstairs. All right. I, 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 want, I want to I'm apologize. I'm trying to explain to Ronnie how to conduct himself. Yeah. I want to apologize. He hasn't heard a word you yeah. said. Nothing. He no, I heard have you. you learned anything from I what I said? You. you did. Okay. I, I, learned, I learned a lot today, believe me. Good. I, did you learn how to behave when you I you're, learned a lot. When you're at the I learned a lot. Then repeat to me what you learned. What did you learn? I'll tell you what he learned. Here's what I learned I took it from a limo driver and I gave you a good job I and a good say, living. Never said different. And here's what I learned. I never said different. Listen to me and you won't different. go wrong. You I listen to all these different. other schlubs who got your ear, you're going to fuck up. You're going to fuck up big time. Never said you're on the road to fucking up. Never said different. Now calm down and handle yourself like a gentleman. I'm calm. You got to be calm. You heard what that police officer said. Uh, you never, he's trying to teach you, but you, he's full of shit. I didn't Everyone's say he was full, full of shit. shit. Everyone's full of shit. I didn't say he was full of shit. Everybody's and stabbing you in the back. back. Right. Everyone's He's got everything Shuley, to you. You're you a victim. Whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe right. you'll learn something from Shuli. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll learn something. Everyone should be afraid <laughs> of you, to tell you the truth. Afraid. Yeah, I'm busy afraid. fighting with Dan yeah. and Song Parry. He's got nothing going on. you got exactly. something good going on. Yeah. Why don't you let the guy... Hey, be gracious. All right. Hey, ask the guy to leave. You don't have to yell and scream. You, 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 I said to him. I, I said to him. I, I really he works don't, on the show. I said to him, I really don't want you here. And that's when the whole thing no, started. No, you, you don't have to say that. You didn't have to say that. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You definitely presented yourself in a gentlemanly, professional right, manner. Right, right. No about it. I you're a big shot. Right. Big shot. So you, hey, I don't yeah. want you here. I don't want this one. Uh, okay. Yeah, you. Ronnie's block party. Right. Dan, let me make it up to you. Would you like to come to Jamaica with us? Yeah. In March? So you can be there with Ronnie? Absolutely. I would, I would love to come. I've been to Jamaica several times. Ronnie, what's Ronnie. the matter? Why are you walking out? Uh, <laughs> you don't want you. You don't want you to invite the Dan. Uh, He's on probation, by the way. I told him to agree. I go. You're on probation on right. the block party good. shows. Yeah. Oh Next step, I dock your pay. There you go. <laughs> He's gonna kill me. <laughs> Surely your fucking stand up rock. Um, all right, Dan. I gotta go, Dan. I've had enough. But this right, block right, party is more trouble. Yeah, you see, oh I didn't ask for any block party. I asked Ronnie <laughs> to do security and to be a driver. Right. This block party was his idea. Now I, it's my idea. He's never had an incident like this. This guy insults me by saying I don't have his back. Who in this planet has done anything for this guy but me? Who? Name him. I want to know. That person doesn't exist. Yeah. He drove John Gambling Jr. for years. You know what John Gambling Jr. did for him? He let him wait in the fucking car. <laughs> That's John Gambling Jr. Go back and work with him if you think he's got your back. My God. I will say for the record, Howard, he's never had an incident like this with anybody backstage. I see, I see. But, you know. but he's, 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 on a, he's on a star trip. I know what's going on. He's got to be humble. I mean, we have people there. You can just say, hey, do me a favor, get this guy out of here. Of course. You know. He was putting on a show for everyone back there. I know what's going on. It's the Ronnie persona. Yeah, I Ronnie's got crazy. a camera on him. He can't help himself. I don't want you here. You get out. You this, blah, 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 blah. Hey, you calm down. All right. You're not crazy about Dan. You say to yourself, Howard works with this guy. He does some song there parodies. There was no camera. What? There was no camera. Of course not. There was no so camera. So you're putting on a show for the dummies back no, there with you in the green room. No, I wasn't putting on any show, yeah. okay? I didn't say there was a camera. Well, who yeah, said, how did you see it or hear it? Well, somebody used to, someone put it on their phone. There were no cameras. IPhone. There was an iPhone. iPhone. Yeah, okay. well, That's the cameras how I weren't there. I wasn't I wasn't. No, but you're putting on a show. I wasn't putting on a show. The same way the kid in the hall, you're putting on a show. I wasn't. We were goofing. Do you understand what I mean by putting on a show? It doesn't mean if there's a camera. Sorry, we're not allowed to go for it. You could be with one person yeah, you're putting on. Is, is, you created this yeah, personality. Sure come up with all his baloney stories and comedy right now, <laughs> but that's okay. He's going to dock my story. pay. What did he do? <laughs> yeah, you dock everybody's pay. Yeah, you did that uh, to Scott, and that's why he's out uh, now. Uh, yeah. uh, here we go. Yeah. You know what's even worse? Friend. That you act like this and there's not a camera there. At least if there was a camera, I could understand it. Yeah, then right. I'd be proud of you. Yeah.
Listen. I'm going to chalk first, that one up to anger. I'm not going to Are you it. an entertainer first or a, a, a man who's... I work here. No, no, no. Are you an entertainer first or are you my security and limo driver? I'm security and limo driver here. Ah. That's a, uh -huh. no, but that's a whole it separate, ends at the that door. That was a whole separate thing. It, but when you see people who work with me, it doesn't end at the door. Dude. You're the security guy. It. That's what you I don't gotta get. have your that's persona. What I, that's what I don't get. With You're the only one who doesn't get it. There isn't a person no, who doesn't get it. it. You're the only one who doesn't get it. No, I don't get it with the, with this whole thing with him. That's listen, what I don't get. I, I'm going to explain it to you again if you don't get it. I'll uh, explain I, it to him blue in the face. Hey. Jeez. I don't have time for you to get through his... You can't. Where are you going? You're not going you anywhere. I have it. things you to had, do. No, you're not you going anywhere. You have other ways of doing it. You have nowhere to go. You, <laughs> had, you, uh, you have an opportunity to walk over to someone. Surely said there's plenty of people backstage you could have said, I'm not comfortable with Dan. Uh, would you ask him, please, to finish up his Vic business? Vic asked him to leave, and he didn't leave. He well, kept on going. And you should have left. He kept on you going. You don't need to be there. Why do you have to mix it up? Yeah. Vic Gee, stop Vic taking on the world, Ronnie. I'm not taking on you the world. You got a good situation I'm, with me. I understand that, yeah, and I've yeah. never said different. And say thank you, and then be done with it. Thank I you. always say thank you. That's it. That's right. Right. Now, I always nah, thank that's you. That's the way to connect. Yeah, I always say Look. thank you, but it's, it's like even right. if I'm wrong or right, it doesn't matter. No, I'm you're always, wrong. I'm always no, wrong. Right. Always now wrong. you got it. Always wrong. wrong. You're wrong. Repeat with after all me. The sweet. Ronnie is always wrong. <laughs> I know that. I know that. Go now. You know now. I know that here. I know I'm always wrong. And surely, please. Surely, you're a lot of help too. Please make things better by inviting Dan to the Jamaica trip. Yeah, I'm going to make a thank shirt you. that says, "Even when I'm wrong, I'm wrong." <laughs> <laughs> so it's a show for Ronnie. Yeah. yeah, you do that. All right, Ronnie. Congratulations on another bungled uh, situation. Yeah, bungled. Okay. <laughs> Behave. And stop with the uh, young bungled. guys walking around. Hey, fuck you, this one. Yeah, well, I guess you stop can't joke kidding. around with the Don't. guys in In Demand. Don't I guess joke not. around with You're the right. guys from In Demand. Right. Don't. You're right. Look at how it I've always I've told hits you. you in the face, Ryan. You're, yeah, you well, joke yeah, around, obviously. You joke around backstage at AGT, it backfires. You joke around here, it backfires. Yeah, you joke obviously. around at the uh, block party, it backfires. What Stop are you joking. To see? I, ne I never realized the guys in In Demand are so sensitive. They are. <laughs> so. Do they have to put it out on I Twitter? I got a business to run. I understood. Okay. It ain't the Ronnie block party. I know. It's the There's Howard no block Stern party show. Here. There's no block party here. Ah. Now you've said something. Write it down and repeat it to yourself a hundred times a day. Surely, thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Thank well, you. Howard. Good luck. I hope you all learned something. He didn't learn. I learned a lot. <laughs> I did. Yeah, good. I learned a lot. Well, all right. That's what I want to hear. Two you weeks learned from a now, lot. we'll be having the same discussion. Okay. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Robin. Dude, oh. this is what I deal with all day. Yesterday, I was trying to yell at people. Dude. I couldn't get them on the phone. <laughs> Dude. Uh oh, Ronnie's back. What Whatever, is dude. Ronnie, bring me my lunch. <laughs> that, thank you. That you do like a gentleman. God bless. And figure out ways to get me to Newark and back faster. Dude. Hey, how come uh, it took you an hour to get me there? Terry got me back in a half hour. Uh-oh. How come Terry got me home in a half hour? What? It took us Ter 45 minutes to get there. Yeah, in a half hour. It took hour. us 15 minutes to get out of the city. All right. Okay. Just worry about that. Finding new and faster routes to Newark. <laughs> Unfortunately. Buy me a jetpack. Mm. Yep. Unfortunately, there's only one or two ways to go. You still got to go to that same road. You either go through the Midtown, uh, the Lincoln Tunnel, or the George Washington Bridge. It's the uh -huh. only way to go. Well, I'm more concerned with getting back, actually. Now calm down and go think about it. Think about everything. Think about a quick route. <laughs> find a new route to Jersey. Like, be Columbus. Didn't he find a new route to the new world? He right. found the... He was trying to find a new route to the East Indies, and he found <laughs> the West Indies. Study Ellen and Dan, don't dig a new tunnel to Jersey. I think he's mistaken, too, because you definitely don't want to do George Washington. It's either the Lincoln or the Holland. You don't want to do the George... The George Washington Bridge is miles out of the way. So he doesn't know what he's doing? Even with the driving? <laughs> I think he's... I think he got very confused right now. You could take the Tappan Z. <laughs> He's so busy yelling at people. What are you saying, Gary? Tell him what I'm supposed to do. You would, it would either be the Lincoln or the Holland Tunnel to get to North, not the George Washington Bridge. Did he just say the George Washington Bridge? Yes, he did. He the said, the fuck is going Lincoln on here? George no wonder it took me an hour to get there. I was stuck on the GWB. <laughs> would you guys tell him how to go to Jersey? I thought he knew. Uh, Where is he? I'm on the GWB. <laughs> ready to jump off. For goodness sake, Robin. I mean, what is this? It's crazy in here. 
crazy. I'm telling you. Oh, Not yeah. the GWB. What about it? Don't take the GWB. I did. I took the Lincoln Tunnel yesterday. No, Gary said you said GWB. I said if you can go either way. He said but no. It's not the Gary, GWB. If the, if the Lincoln Tunnel is totally screwed, you can take the GWB. But, yeah, you, but, but, but you said take the Holland. Tunnel, or Holland Tunnel, right, Ronnie? Not the GWB is way out of the way, isn't it? Not really, because when you go over the bridge, you get on the turnpike at exit 16, and we're Gary, going to 15W. Does he, does he know what he's talking about? I've always trusted Ronnie with this. I mean, Howard, you can take the GWB. I believe it's pretty far out of the way, because what you're doing... Is yeah, but Gary, if you take the Holland Tunnel, you're past where you have to go. You but you're at 14 instead of 15. Oh. Yeah, but then you Ronnie, have to, co you have don't to come tell back. Me you don't know how to get places. Oh, That's please. the one thing I love about you. I know how to get where I'm going. You stop. <laughs> he says the G. Will you, in Will an says emergency, GW you can take the GWB. But they're saying take the Holland instead. If you take the GWB, you're going eight miles north to go over the bridge to come eight miles down before you're where you started. And the Holland? The GWB. Yeah, and the Holland. And the Holland. You're going, it's not that far out of the way, it's not as far away. Well, what is the right way to go? Teach Ronnie. No, I live right out there, so you take, if you take the Holland Tunnel, it's 78, and that goes right to 21. No wonder I'm sitting in traffic. No, but you're coming from 21 the opposite way. Well, that if you take 280, but it's it's kind of in the middle. 21 runs I between can't believe you don't 280 and 78. I I know the GWB it. is at least forty minutes out of the way. No, it's not. No 40 wonder I'm sitting in traffic. Right? Right? It absolutely is. With no traffic, I, I, it's not forty minutes out of the way. Well, it's if you go to the Lincoln no Tunnel, traffic. if you go to the Lincoln Tunnel, it's drive right past, there. Drive past the Lincoln Tunnel to the George Washington one, Wait day, a minute. and then trying to get to Midtown Manhattan, you got to go all the way up and then back down. Drive the, uh, past the Lincoln Tunnel to go down to the Holland Tunnel and see how long it takes you to get down to the Holland Tunnel. It's definitely Holland at the, Tunnel at the or end Lincoln of, Tunnel. As the end of, at the end of you're the city. You're telling me he's saying GWB and you're telling me it's Holland yeah, and Lincoln? He's completely wrong. He's completely wrong. No, no. I live out there. If you, if you want a ride, I don't mind giving you a ride out. Can but, you get me there, Where are you fan? going? Where are you going, Ron? <laughs> or you could, walking out. Or you could take out. the FDR to the Tribro to the Cross Bronx. <laughs> Ronnie is... That's only 80 miles out of the way. You know, I'm just trying to get there. Will's lived in Jersey for, for, for less than a year, and he already knows more about being a driver. <laughs> but you know how you're uh, talking to Ronnie, and Ronnie just keeps walking out? He really can't control himself. No, he's like the Hulk. Walks out, I think he turns into a giant green man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, All right, settle this, because please teach him. I, this is upsetting. What, what am I looking at, a map? You see the dot in New York? Yes. That's your apartment. Right. Okay. You see those two little lines below that? Yeah. One's a Lincoln Tunnel, one's a Holland Tunnel. See that line above it? Yeah. That's the George Washington Bridge. What is he, fucking crazy? <laughs> this is right? the, you, you agree, Yes. Right? I always thought he knew the best ways. I you mean, know, there's a lot of times I sit in the car and people... There's a guy, Doug, who, uh, you know, my photography teacher, he says to me, how long does it take you to get back from somewhere? I, I go, I don't know, an hour and a half. He goes, I want to hear because I do it in 20 minutes. Oh, no. I always thought Ronnie knew. I mean, I think he usually knows, but in this case, really, the GW Bridge is so imagine really out of the me, way. Imagine he's taking me to the GW Bridge. Oh, he didn't do that. No, but I'm saying, imagine if he does. I but that would be his alternate route. Imagine if you do. you got to learn this stuff. Are you kidding me? You're the guy supposed to know. Look at the map. <laughs> Here, here's the Holland, and here's the... Look at the GW. Understood. It's very... I understand if exactly If you understand that, then why would we take that? In, in the case of bad traffic... No, take the Holland in case of bad traffic. No, you got to work your way all the way downtown from the Upper West Side. Yeah. You think how, how long you think that's going to take? Yeah, rip it up. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm at your mercy. You're not at my mercy. <laughs> I, guess you, I guess you I know guess a better, I'm driving. You know a better way. No, I don't. I hired you to know a better way. Go out there and figure out what's going on. I know what's going on. Why don't we go through Connecticut to get to Jersey? Okay. Maybe we should drive we all the way that. through Connecticut. Oh, I've go. got a route that goes I, through I, New Hampshire. I can do that. I can go through to Connecticut and I'll still get Nashua. there. Nashua! We'll turn left we'll and Vermont. We'll go to Connecticut and get there. Don't worry. If we take the London Bridge to Newark, how long will that take? Uh, First, we got to get no to idea. Arizona. No all right, idea. listen. It, we're way out of time. I, okay. I have to I deal know, with your problem. I don't problem. even have you time to do the news. Do you have to leave or something? What? Do you have somewhere to go? I do. Oh, you do. Where are you going? <laughs> she has business. Where is she going? Okay, come on. Take the going GWB. Anywhere. Wherever you're going, take the GWB. <laughs> 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 Howard Stern.
concerned. Howard Stern Show. Hey, Dan. How's it going? Dan, the song parody man, everyone. Yeah, I heard uh, I heard just a uh, mention on the Bob Levy thing that he's completely angry, and I didn't hear much of it to my face. I thought he was in a bad mood, but I'm hearing from all different people that I guess he's getting on the phone and calling and, and venting about what a horrible person I was to him. And I think it was just because he was a little angry about the Eagles doing so poorly in the Super Bowl. Is that what that's about? Yeah. Well, basically, huh. we, we went to a part. You know, we had a party at the at the Hard Rock in one of their banquet halls. Big Super Bowl party, big screens. Now, this was drink. after I left, right there. Yes. Yeah. This was the party. Yeah. It all broke loose after you left. And See what I mean? Like all these guys. Yeah, and they can stay. Artie has to leave. <laughs> it came so far out of left field for me because I mean we're literally sitting around the game. There wasn't even a score in the game, and you know we're we're chucking stuff at each other, just having a good time. I took a little cocktail napkin and rolled it up, and I threw it at him, and it bounced off his head. So and then it ricocheted off his head, and it hit his girlfriend. Hey Bob. Hey. Uh, I can't believe Dan thinks I'm mad at him because Philly lost. I mean this was going on way before the game started. He's just throwing papers. He's trying to tip my girlfriend's chair over the plane because that's funny to him. You know, if it's not making a quack quack sound, that's his funniness. All right? And then when I tell him something, I told him I was going to break his legs right there. Okay, the only reason he didn't get his leg slapped because we were at the hard rock. How come it's so hard to hear him? What, know, what but... kind of phone are you on, dude? I'm on I'm, I'm, I'm a regular phone. Portable? Yes. Yeah, the portable phone, I, just as a professional, portable phones don't work. Yeah. You sound like muffled, and it's hard to know what you're talking about. It's like, it's like, it's like this. <laughs> and then he does something and I tell him I'm going to break his legs. <laughs> it's just like the worst quality phone. I mean, it's like people with these portable I, phones. Your, I can barely hear you, so it might be your phone. Well, maybe. But I'm telling no, but I mean, you. He's throwing stuff the whole beginning of the game. The, the Eagles weren't even losing at this point. And then he told her, F you. He told her, I just found this out yesterday. Can you get on a regular phone? Ah. Uh. This is the only one I have right now. You don't I have do a hardwire phone? No, this is the only one I got. Okay. Is it, is it a cell phone? No, it's a regular phone. It just goes on the wall. Oh, That's it. It has no wire. It's a cheap cordless. cheap cordless. It is a cheap cordless. There's like a high frequency squeal every time he speaks, and it stops when he stops speaking. Right. <laughs> but uh, now, I missed a little bit of it because I was walking down the hallway, Bob, but what, what was it that I did? You tell me uh, you weren't showing stuff the whole time, I told you. Like three times, I said, stop. And the last time I said, I'm going to come over there and, and cripple you. No, and no, you, don't, no, that, and no, you have no idea I said that. No, that's what you're telling people that you said to me. You no, that's what I said. But you can ask Paul was sitting right there. Anybody that was right there. He's such a phony bastard. What is this? Dad. You were throwing something. stuff at him? You're a phony I took, bastard. I took a cocktail. Okay, and there's no and reason to even be down there besides have your head up Artie's ass. And all right? I threw it in his head. Bob, no, dude, dude, you told my girlfriend to shut the F up. No, I didn't. All right? You, you're telling me Paul D'Angelo lied to my face, then. No, okay? well, I, t you, why don't, right? why I will you cripple you, you son of a bitch, you said, okay? She said, don't you throw watch. she said, don't throw anything at Bob, because I'm the one that has to sit home on the plane with him today, and I don't want him being any grumpier than he is. And I said, don't worry about that it. That is such a liar. I said, you are, Dan, I said you I'll take such responsibility such for it, you and if he's so really that much on the way, I'd be more than happy to give you my seat. I'll sit next to him. All right? Now, you're also, you're you're also just telling people... You're the biggest phony i ever seen in my goddamn life. What, what really? is you, ever, you know what I mean? All you do is drop names all goddamn week. They're still sweeping up Howard's and Artie's name from all weekend. See, all right? You're pathetic. All right? Bob. I don't care what kind of phone I am. You suck and you're a piece of crap. Okay. All right? Sister. And you, you think you're a tough guy? You think you're a tough guy? Well, if somewhere I was a tough guy, I guess that I told rock, people that I said I was going to punch somebody out. Somewhere I'm not at the hard rock. Or the airport, come to my face. I will cripple you. Bob, I came to you. son of a bitch of a human being. Listen, you know, it's it's good shtick, and I'm glad that you got it's, on it's the air, Bob. Sick, you know, Dan, you have a pussy. Why don't you do And there's roast? no reason for you to be there. Oh, I can't even talk. I can't even do this. It's absolutely right. You can't. Oh. There's no doubt about it. Right. Bob, just relax. Gonna cook you know, you're a pussy. I'll step back, and I'll allow you to say what you have to say, but then I'd like to try and get a sentence in edgewise. And I, oh, excuse me for talking you're, while you're, you're busy just, interrupting, you're, but, you know, That's all you do is you're such a conniving bastard. Well, let Dan say okay. his piece. All right, Bob. Dad. I came up to you in the airport after hearing how you were going to kick my ass, and I woke you up, and I kissed you on the cheek, and I said, no hard feelings, I love you, Bobby, and you gave me a big smile. No. I give you, because at the airport, that's a smile of death, okay? You don't know anything. Really? Now, you, I, I what am I going to do? Kick your ass to the airport and go to jail? You were going to kick my you're ass a, at the airport. You're a coward, Dan. You, you know what I mean? Bob. Didn't you I, are how a many times have bastard. I heard you that you were going to beat the crap out of people because they did you wrong, and then you're kissing and hugging and making up the next time? I was the, you were such a liar. Didn't, weren't I you going to beat the living crap you out are of you? Artie, you are such a phony and a liar. Artie, do you know what's going on? 
This all happened after I left, Howard. No, I don't know. This is in, where was this? In, this in, was at the party at the Super Bowl. Yeah, I had to leave oh. 7 a.m. Super Bowl morning. This was in Vegas? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry that I threw a cocktail napkin at your head. It I did mean, it four times. You tried to tip her chair over twice. I never okay, tried to I tip her chair over. Stop twice. She was leaning it back, and I stop. grabbed the back okay. of the chair and studded it. I would never try to tip over her chair. Nor the would the I go Super around Bowl. and tell people that I was going to kick some of these girls. All right, let us enjoy the game, you bitch. I was watching the game and I was having a good time. You're the biggest ballbuster on the planet now. All of a sudden, you got to bite up your ass and you're on the rags and nobody can when do we're it. Doing stuff. You can dish it out, but you can't take it in. I mean, how's that dish out by like throwing it, putting mustard on Paul's chair? That's that's ball busting, Dan. Actually, I didn't put mustard you're on his chair. You're lucky he didn't snap your neck. All right, he was going to snap your neck too. Yeah, everybody's going to kick my ass when they're not around me, right? Dan, I'll meet you anywhere today. I guarantee you don't make it to work tomorrow because you are nothing but a... Dad, you want to talk crap now? Let's meet and see if you make it to work, you goddamn pussy. Bob, you You're a told goddamn me you pussy. My ass and I came right up to you and you didn't have a bad thing to say to me. Weren't you going to beat the crap out of Yucko at one time and then you guys were kissing to make up because he had the nerve to do a roast and you're the guy that does roasts? Hey, Dan. How many Dan. times have you told me that somebody was over, it's finished, it's done? Why don't you just answer me this? When have I ever not come through when you've needed me to do something for you? When have I not got somebody else to take my daughter to her dance recital so that I could do a ro record one of your roasts for you and then edit it down from 10 minutes to one minute? And Tell when me, all of a sudden do you start deciding that, you know what that, I mean, that, that Bob, Bob Levy is a force to be reckoned with and I can't get around with him? People's days. Well, who the hell are you to be there to do that? Okay? You weren't on so the show. Is, uh, so what is Bob saying you did? You threw a napkin at I, his head? No, so about that, okay, four of them, whatever, him, I, throwing stuff. I asked them to stop four times. All right, and then he, his, your, he, your he, girlfriend he took her chair back, back, and you caught her chair, I guess? Like, yeah, like, I grabbed like, it. Yeah, she was leaning back, and I grabbed the back of her chair. You know, you, you make right. somebody think they're going to fall, but of course I wouldn't do that. I mean, I might do that to anybody else, but, you, but I wouldn't do that to the great said, Bob Levy's You said to I, I mean, he went through the up. trouble of bringing his girl, you know, to Vegas the Super Bowl week, and I wasn't going to do anything to All cast right. a dark well, cloud over it. I think sounds like there's a big war going on. I think I can add something. To this. <laughs> yeah. I think I sort of know what's going on. You know, they were all in the Get John's Job contest together. Right. Oh, please. That's Dan's not the here, Get John's Job. And Bob's not. And I think Dan made a comment to Bob. Words to the effect of, you're just sour because you don't get enough airtime. No, no, no. That's actually what Bob was telling people. Yeah, he said. told what me, I he said goes, was, just, I he can't goes, you're just believe... mad at me because you, you're so desperate for airtime. No, I'm absolutely desperate not. for airtime. Well, 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 now, well, 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 now that we've had your genius man. paraphrasing of what I said, why don't I just tell you what the words were that came out of my mouth? Okay, the how about are, this? I, I, got it on, I think I got it on my cell phone. Like how about I give it to are somebody really and they play it tomorrow? It? Sure, yeah bring, yeah, bring in the message. I said, I can't believe that you're reacting like this. I can't believe that it's for real. Is this some kind of shtick so that you want me to talk about Dan, it? Dan, I don't do stick, okay? I know, I don't do stick. I know, I've seen your act. I know you don't do stick. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Look. See the hack. Okay. Go put your head back up Artie's ass. All right, Dan. So, uh, Bob, do you want to apologize to Dan now? <laughs> hey, what do you mind? <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm Bob. I know you're a big tough guy, and everybody should be scared of you. No, Dan, because you're, you're, you're telling you're, everybody you're that you're going to kick my ass. Hey, Dan, you're a troublemaker. You know what I mean? Name that's dropper. Exact, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. You're, one, oh, that, I'm hey, a you're, just, you're hey, just a pussy. Hey, that's what you are. I had broads hanging on me. For three hours before somebody even whispered in their ear, that's Dan's song party. I don't want to say because I'm embarrassed to say who I am, quite honestly. You know, I mean, not that I'm embarrassed, but it, it, to me, it's it's not going to score me any points. You know? uh, Dan, Dan, so, so, I mean, don't tell what me are you I was doing there names. besides? You're telling people that you saw me calling, making reservations, and dropping names. I ate one meal the whole time that I was there. It was room service, and I wasn't dropping any names. Okay, if I if I dropped any names, I, I I'd probably just be telling people I'm dropping. Uh, you gotta get I'm dropping the name. Let's pull the call 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 in. From because this is hilarious. He's very scary. He's tough. And now we're going to get the damn song 30 minutes popping. Oh, that is it. Howard Stern. Howard Stern. Howard Stern. Go get one, Dan. Wait, wait. I'm running out of time. So. You Dan, that's not the case. do you think he you could... He disrespects people that I'm with, and that's not right. Do you think you could kick Bob Levy's ass? Well, I mean, I'd have no problem. Uh, I, I wouldn't back down from him. There's no, there's no doubt about no, it. No, but you would lay down. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know that Bob can really beat the crap out of people, because I've heard him tell me that many times. <laughs> right. So, so, uh, yeah. so, I mean, I guess he was prepping me for the one day where we might have a confrontation so that I should run and hide. But you're a pretty tough guy. I mean, you got the tattoos and the bike and the whole thing. And the gravity yeah. knife. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, that really doesn't have a bearing on it, but uh, you know, to me, I'm not going to back down. You can handle sure. yourself, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I'd step up, I'd step up before I'd run away. You know, even if I thought there's a chance I'd get an ass kicking. But... You would lay down before you can run away. Well, 
Dan, Dan, you're just you're just a phony man, and and you're, you're, you're I'm absolutely. glad I've seen it this weekend. You're, you're absolutely right. What for the last five years I've done anything that you've asked me to. I've tried to help you. You've helped. You're disrespectful. Me. You think somebody thing. was you? You brought a girl with no teeth to Long Island. I was nice to her. Please, <laughs> I give me a break, Dan. Give me a break. You, only, you have respect the only for people I know that you're with, all right? Woman with no you have respect you, for them. You pop those phony teeth out the front. You're the one who was acting like the woman all weekend. I mean, I expected to go out. Audie, I was, I was, you can ask Audie. I was having a great time. You come there, take it. Oh, we're going to get Audie at the airport. Audie knows how to get back from the airport. All right. Okay. Audie's a big boy, okay? You know, we were, they were saying in the office, office Howard. Yeah. Like, for Artie, you know, Artie's talking about people in the green room before the show. Like, this is the exact crap that Artie doesn't want to deal with when he goes to Vegas. Right. Luckily, exactly. he missed it. He missed it, but, but sometimes... It could have been right in the middle of it. Sometimes yeah. on this a goes on in the dressing room. This goes on, right. But, but all these guys are friends. Like, Dan has been with me on a lot of gigs. He helps sure. me out uh, really a lot. Levy's like, Levy's like a better comedian than I am. I just happen to be on this show, so he has to open for me. Right, but Artie doesn't... Like, it's great that he's on the show. Like, Bob's a good guy. They're, we're all friends, and when I left and heard all about this, I'm like, what are you guys? What happened out there? You I guys was, are ready to kill each other. And I was yeah, really just shocked so because, because I didn't with. get any That's of this. Both. I just thought Bob was in a grumpy mood, but then he was. I'm not. I'm not in a grumpy people. mood. You're, tell, I, you're telling everybody else your version Dan, of what happened. I told you five times. It's not everyone else. Okay. Everybody was around seeing okay. me okay. threatened to kill you right now, there. In this conversation right? alone, so it started with three times. Oh, this is what really happened. And now it's five times. All right, your head up. Dad. Why don't who we you wait take until tomorrow so it'll be six or seven? Who are you taking in the fight? Me. Who am I taking <laughs> yeah, in the fight? Who, who would you say would win? I don't know. Who would win? I don't know. Dan, Dan's like a motorcycle guy with tattoos. But, and, but and I'll knock the tattoos off him. No, no, Bob, no Bob's Bob, a tough guy because when, when Yucko did a roast of him and Bob was ready to kill him for that, he said, you shouldn't mess with me because you don't know him. My, my ex-wife's uh, brother is a big guy out down south and he'll go down there and beat the crap out of Yucko for me. So, oh, so I'm just going to try and I'm going to stay on this side of the Mason-Dixon line and, and hopefully everything will be okay. Dan, you, you know, should keep and, your and breath Bob, on that side of the Mason-Dixon line, Bob, please. I, I've never done a anything but talk great about you, okay? And I try to promote you as best as I can. I try you to help you as much as I can. Somebody I hard, is it hard you to promote, Bob? You said to go after no, yourself. It's not, it's Mind not your not own business. Go after yourself. Who are you? It's only hard for people who you? don't know his act. I mean, who? some people might not like his roast, so they don't want to go stand up. And I say, you can't assess the guy stand up unless you see him, because he truly kills. He's truly right. great. And he's also always got out of his way to help everybody. There's thousands of people out there. So no kidding, Dan, and that's why you don't him. disrespect and, me like and that. And it's always been mutual. And I didn't know that throwing a napkin at you... Look what goes on. No, you said... You both sound like a couple of girls. What uh, the heck uh, are you talking about? It was the Super Bowl, Robin. It's not... You guys watch the Gilmore Girls. What do you know about sports? <laughs> All right? Listen to me. That's it's right. the Super Bowl. Yeah, I want to enjoy tell, the tell, game. It's, it's the Super Bowl. It shouldn't be a bunch of guys hanging around, goofing on each other, and having a good time. It should be something. No, that right. day, okay? You I'm watch fine. the game, goofing on each other. Let's tickle each other during halftime, Dan, all right? Well, I mean, if that's what <laughs> you want to do, you know, on yourself, you can do all right? And, and just for the record, <laughs> when you're telling everybody that you said you were going to, you know, you know, you told me to stop and you beat the crap out of me. I told like you, you four was, times and everybody was said, there. Cut the crap, or I'm gonna knock your friggin' table over. And then I think there was one more incident, incidence of crap, but you didn't knock the table yeah, but over. Guys, You're still a man of your word. There's a bigger issue here because because Dan helps me out so much on gigs that I actually pay him. Like uh -huh. he helps me, and and uh -huh. Levy is a good comic, so I like having him on shows. He makes the show better. So what are we gonna do now? Is this gonna happen every Wait, gig? You know my head's happening. gonna explode if, <laughs> if this happens every gig. Well, well, well let Dan make the lineup from, from now on, Artie. Okay, it's fine with me. What? Let 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 Dan make the lineup since I. Uh, Oh, he's the itinerary God. man, okay? <laughs> I'd see you a guys, goddamn break. You guys can't be fighting. This is going to be. You like... know why this happened? Hey, Bob. Because Bob has a new girlfriend. Yep. <laughs> so it's, it's, if it's, it was Bob's wife, he wouldn't have cared if you took the chair. Howard, how would you like it if somebody's doing that to Beth? D do what? Tw Pushing the chair back and forth. I, I would kill him. <laughs> exactly. All right, and tell us, shut the ass off and stop being a pussy. you have relationship with Dan that, right? that Reverend Bob has had over the weeks, and now all of a sudden a girl yeah. is in, and he wants to change the relationship. Dan's hurt. No, he's not he's he's disrespectful. You know, maybe he got himself hard. a girlfriend, yeah. it's going to lead to trouble. That's right. That's all that's going <laughs> when on Levy, here. When Levy had the wife, nobody cared about tipping over his And chair. you know what the best part is? The best part is, <laughs> in a month, when Levy's girlfriend's gone, he'll still hate Dan. Right. <laughs> but then I'll bang you, Gary. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but, but you're right. Six months ago, I could have thrown his wife down the stairs. He would have bought me a beer. <laughs> yeah, you should apologize because that's both. Okay, that's all right. Both. I'll tell you what, Bob. I apologize for anything I did that upset you, okay? I apologize that 
Why are you apologizing? Su- okay, I apologize that I acted in such a manner that caused you to run to other people and embellish on the story. I, and it, say, I embellish and say that you had threats okay. to my face. All right, you, you guys worked this yeah, out. Yeah, it's all and, and, and again, Okay, that's if, what if it you is. Think, if, you th- if it will give you satisfaction you not say, to meet me someplace. Stop being a pussy. All right, I got to go, guys. I'll meet you wherever you want, and, and uh, I'll let you try whatever you want to try. As long as the agreement is, we put it behind us as soon as it's done there. Or you can sneak up from behind me. You can try whatever you want. I'm, and I'm I, don't, I, can, I can come in front of you with a bullhorn telling you I'm coming. You're still going down, bitch, all right? So, so don't even talk about it. Boy, I didn't right. know Levy was such a good He's fighter. A yeah, I know. Yeah. Actually, I've seen Levy at a gig get into a fight in Boca Raton. Oh, he beat the crap out of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> That's Howard, gig. Howard, Jay, I can't wait to go to those gigs. <laughs> Howard, you gotta come. To one I tell you, I, I I went to see Eddie Murphy. He stood on stage, he made people yeah, laugh, and then he went that? home. Yeah, Howard, ask Dan if he can put you on the show. Maybe you can come with us. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, oh, that's good. Uh, all right, all right, you Bob. That I hope you guys work it out. The Reverend Bob Levy. What a good troop this has been. Don't yeah. break up. Well, you don't want to break up this successful yeah, well, trio. We're, we're like the second city of retards. You know, now, uh, you know, D- uh, Bob is introducing a Yoko into the thing. <laughs> no, it's far from that. But right now, High Pitch Eric is laughing at us. Yeah. Kim, Kim's a great girl. Bob, I love you. Any way you want to settle this, I got no problem with it. If it's going to give you satisfaction. You'll satis- fight him? Yeah, if, if it's going to give you satisfaction to throw down, hey, I'd you be more than happy to do that. Saying that. that is a mean, if I said that to anyone that anybody was with, that is so disrespectful. Actually, Levy's girlfriend is the biggest sweetheart on the planet. Yeah. Oh, she's she really, great. I love she her. She keeps him alive. <laughs> so don't I don't be believe, rude to her. I, uh, what does the girlfriend say when he's doing that thing where he eats food out of Jeez. a girl? He stopped doing he that. Says, go daddy. daddy. You don't do that I, anymore? No, I mean, it's an act. Now, leave. You stop doing it. It's an that. act. I'm going to stop doing it. I, 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 it can't be hygienic. Just chicks. It's a great closer, though. Really? The crowd goes nuts. Yeah, it's easy following that, too. It's like following a rape. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the audience just flips in it the whole time. You've just seen sexual assault with blue cheese dressing. You know who originally did the blue cheese thing? George Burns started his career. <laughs> <about. laughs> yeah. With Gracie? <laughs> yeah, with Gracie. That's how he met her. A lot of people didn't know that. Howard, yeah. listen to me. Yeah, Bob this... stole that from George Burns. <laughs> Howard, this really happened to me at a club in outside of Chicago called Zanies in Illinois, right? Yeah. Yucko and Levy are opening for me. Yucko goes on stage with black strap-ons and like that are okay. <laughs> Leaves him on stage. Levy goes up, does the the ass thing, right? With blue cheese dressing. I go on stage. I'm three seconds into my act. I I trip over a black strap-on, <laughs> get my footing, and slip on blue cheese dressing for Levy's act. <laughs> and you're going to kill you. Right, it was like following some weird sex video. <laughs> like a like prop uh, comedy. Exactly, oh and I goodness. almost snapped the kneecap. And they never had us back. All right, Dan, 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 Bob, I hope you guys work everything out. Me too. too. Yeah, guys, come on. Don't do this in Philadelphia. Like, you know, I I feel like this is the part in Jaws where Dreyfus and Robert Shaw are arguing. And Chief Brody goes, you're not going to do this on the boat, are you guys? (laughs) (laughs) I got to go. I'm not even sure what we're finding about, but thank you, Bob. Any chance we can carpool to Philly, Bob? I'm going to get a better phone. All right. Yeah, please do. All right, Bob Levy and Dan the Song Parody Man. We got to go. We got to take a break. We'll come back. We got a lot going on. Three door, three doors down. Sylvester Stallone. Fifty billion things you got to do, and there's a million people on the phones. But first, this. I'm all for it. I'm so alive for the very first time. Do they ever get to the lyric? Or is it just on a loop? A loop, all right. Why should we just play the song? I'd love to hear some songs once in a while. I don't know where we can work that out. Guess not. I've been asking for that for years. Bob Levy's here. He's a comedian. We love Bob. Funny guy. Always have him in. And uh, he wants to sit in on the news. Who am I to stop him? Guy works a lot of comedy clubs. He works hard. So happy to be here. I don't, funny. I don't want to say Bob drinks a lot, but when we work together on the road, I drive. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that means you really do drink. He drinks more than you, huh? 
Bob is my favorite guy to work with on the road by far because we are comparable drinkers. And we'll drink like all Saturday afternoon. I had to go <laughs> before a show. Yeah, but I don't lay on the floor before the show like he did. And he did that once in uh, South Jersey. He's laying on the floor going, I'm not going up. And I'm like, Artie, you got to go. He goes, you go back. I said, there's going to be a riot if I go back. Right. <laughs> I mean, he's got to he's got to be professional, right? right. But he, we do the job. We do a great you get job. It done. You get it done. It's after and before just. <laughs> Yeah. Who were you at war with again? I forget. With Dan, we oh, we, Dan we, that, we got that straightened out. Oh but, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. funny when you guys were arguing. I don't even remember what were you guys fighting about. I forget. Oh, the Super Bowl. He, he was, talked. He said something wrong to your girlfriend, right? Yeah, he was throwing stuff at me during the game, and that's upsetting. So you guys are back to being friends? Yes, we made out. We made out. <laughs> Robin, this is great for you. Two models in one day. You happy? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> you are a handsome guy. I am pretty for a man, truthfully. <laughs> Feeling better now that you're dating? I hear you have a girlfriend. Yeah, I'm divorced now, too. Oh, you are? But yeah. you still live in your house. I live in the basement. I moved downstairs. Is that true? Yeah. Is your girlfriend allowed over now? No. So how do you no. see her? I see her when I get out of the basement. That's it. I mean, you I go, go to her house and sleep at night? No, I'm, I'm home most of the time. I got a kid, so I want to be with him. And your wife doesn't mind you living in the house? Well, of course she does. Now, is your wife dating up above your head there? No, that would be weird. <laughs> I'd be like, keep down the noise. You know, it's it's bad. But, so you're you know. officially divorced. Yes. You've split your assets, which I know are considerable. Yes. yes. That, yes. that took a while. Right. She, she got the grill. <laughs> yeah. You look happy. I am. I, I'm really happy. I mean, it's great just working in that. I haven't met the girlfriend. Is she good to you? Yeah, she's good. Yeah. You know. Is I'm, this believe... the same girl from the Super Bowl party? Yeah, yeah. You met her when uh, she yeah. came up here one day. Is she I mean, good looking? Yeah. She's oh, good. yeah, Howard. She's really cute and really nice. She's like a sweetheart. Is she a stripper? No. no not yet. I'm working on it. <laughs> right. I'm going to make some more money. Yeah. You want her to be a stripper. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to move out of your house at all? Are you just going to stay there? No, I'm going to move. I, I'm supposed to stay. I'm allowed to stay for two years, but right. I don't think I can make two years. I think she'll kill me before then. Right. Do you it's have your own much. separate entrance? No. Oh, so geez. I come into the house. Oh, my God. This is crazy. It's you unbelievable. Kidding me. It's a sitcom, and I'm going to write it. I've never heard of something like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, that's the deal that it's my a, great lawyer a, got. It's a reality show. <laughs> it is. It is great, but what are you going to do? And that's why I do comedy a lot. I'm always on the road and now working, so that's always good. I read in the regs that Britney Spears is getting a reality show, but they say already her marriage is so bad that they don't even like live together, or they have fights all the time. Or... Yeah, and but that's to make it good. Around. That'll, That'll make, make it great. A good show, right? Yeah, I'd watch that. She had to get married. She's gonna get fat anyway. You can see it. She's starting to already. Gonna, yeah. See Bob Levy this Saturday at the Webster Theater in Hartford, Connecticut. Are you in on that, Artie? Uh, no, but no. I've played the Webster with Bob before. It's a great place. See Bob April 29th and 30th at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And for more information, go to RevBobLevy.com. You ever get so drunk you forget you're divorced and <laughs> no. upstairs to the bed? That would be funny. You've never been that drunk. No. I mean, she would kill me. I mean, we, we just don't get along. She's actually What a good do you think person. the impact is on the kids with you living downstairs and her living upstairs? I don't think he doesn't know any different, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, I'm in the house, so he doesn't know any different. Right. I mean, you've told him, though, that you're divorced. Not yet. I'm going to wait till he's 18. <laughs> How old is that kid? Uh, six. Six. He knows you're divorced, though, right? No. He really doesn't? No. He thinks you guys are still married? Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. Why would you do that? Well, what am I going to do? I don't know. I mean, tell, like, tell him the me, truth. Yeah, tell him you're divorced. Yeah, I mean, he just thinks married people, like, hate each other and avoid each other. That's he's, what he's going to think. The kid Whoa. thinks we're still married and that I'm the head of IBM. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, that's... What, what does he think? You just really like the basement? Yeah. Because you I, ever say well, to your dad, why don't you ever come out of the basement and come upstairs with me and mom? Yeah, I just tell him, please don't touch that sock when he's down there. <laughs> but seriously, what do you, how do you explain to your six-year-old son that you live down in the basement? Well, I'm doing work. I'm basically writing all the time. So that's Wait, basically do you go up for dinner and... Sometimes. Really? Is that true? Yeah. And you and your wife pretend you're married. Yeah, we no, we just sit there and eat, and then we get into a fight, and I go back downstairs. Oh, so <laughs> they look crazy. married. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's like any other couple. And doesn't the kid say, "Well, how come you don't sleep in the same room as mommy?" Or no, no questions. Nope. But you think the kids? I, I mean, I'm sure the kid's very bright. But yeah. But you think the kid would get a little suspicious? Yeah, I just don't think he wants to talk about. He you know what I mean? It, yeah. he, I mean, so it he, sounds like a regular sort of Jersey marriage. You no, in, it doesn't. You no. live in the basement. You have a girlfriend. Yeah. You're always arguing. Has the kid met your girlfriend? No. No, 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 not yet. No, I don't know. You know that'll you know, be the hardest thing. thing for me was telling the kids, and especially my six-year-old. Like she took it real hard, but yeah. But I mean, they do need to know the truth. I know. Well, I'm just. Uh, it'll take me a few more months probably to come up with yeah, it. You yeah. know, but it's it's tough. You know. 
Are you afraid some of the kids at school might blur, blur, blurt out the news? No. They don't know. Well, no. here's the real. No. Bob's kid is 22. No. Yeah. <laughs> Bob's kid is six. <laughs> now, you got it. You know what, Bob? I didn't even know that. You should really let him in on it. And the girlfriend, I mean, she must be a little, uh, well, you know, she's very understanding. Well, that's what it is. I mean, I have to have somebody understanding because I've been through two marriages. So I'm, you know, it's going to be about me now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. I mean, no more. You know, if you don't like it, you know, everybody can leave. I don't care. Right. You're bitter. It's all, no, I'm not bitter. It's all mm -hmm. about my kid right now. Right. So, right. and uh, people are going to have to deal with it. Are you a good dad or? I'm a great dad. Yeah. You know, it's hard to play ball at this age with him, but. <laughs> Why don't you just sit the kid down and be honest and say, Mommy got fat, and I, I don't... <laughs> you're, you're, you're I mean, evil. actually, I don't even know if your wife got fat. I'm just making a joke. No, nah, it just didn't work right. out, and what are you going to do? you got to move on, so now... So now you feel better about your wife? Like, are you happy for her? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, this, hopefully, you know, everybody's happy. I want everyone to be happy. Someone told me your wife even still cuts your hair. Yeah. With a scissor. Yes. Yeah. But there's something wrong with me. Who dyes the hair? Oh, keep out of it, Artie. <laughs> <laughs> that I do myself. That's why it looks like this. But the whole thing is, like, she was cutting my hair one time. You dye your hair? A little bit. Because it's gray. Well, yeah, it comes back in pretty quick. You got to uh, see right after he does it, man. He looks, uh, he looks his face looks 80 and his hair looks like he's six. <laughs> oh, Artie, at least I have hair. Look at that. I do. I'm not going to. Yeah, come on. I'm my not gonna God, do you're losing hair like a cancer patient. <laughs> Please. Well, maybe I have cancer. Did you ever think of that, Bob? Come on, Don't make fun. So you, <laughs> you're losing hair like a cancer <laughs> You bastard. <laughs> you, uh, so... She cuts the hair, mm -hmm. and she's still willing to take care of you. She must love you on some level. Well, I and guess everybody everybody gets along, you know what I mean? You try uh -huh. to get along. But we did have a fight when she was cutting my hair, and I said, that's it. Uh, you're done. And I run out of the chair. She goes, I only cut one side. I had to come back then because yeah. I thought she was cutting a little <laughs> off each side. Levy, Levy has the face of an old Elvis and the hair of a young one. <laughs> <laughs> And you so have you, the body of both. Do you find, like they say, a lot of divorced couples honestly sometimes have sexual feelings toward one another. Even no. if the, you don't have that. You no, guys, it's over. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like you just want to be you. friends. You know. Well, I wish her happiness. I know it can't be easy being married to you. I'm sure she's thinking she f me every night when she got the settlement. So yeah. ah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, she's like living like Rockefeller now. <laughs> yeah, she got the house. I got nothing. I signed over the house. I did good. You know what I mean? I did the right thing. Do you have to give her future earnings too. Uh, not really. Well, there you are know? none. <laughs> They're on. I figured me and Audie will be dead in two years anyway. So, yeah. someone tells me you get so drunk on stage you mix up your girlfriend stories with your marriage stories. Yeah, I do. Is I, that right? Because you know what I mean. You, it's like you don't want to change the whole act because something right, happened right, in your right, life. You right. know. So sometimes <laughs> you Levy, just keep going. Wait, let me tell you. Yeah, why write a new joke? Here's, yeah. Here's Levy's. Here's what Levy worries about on the road. Okay. Yeah. He does this great joke. His mother-in-law, right, mm -hmm. was living with him, and he hated her, and she was starting to lose her marbles a little bit. And he, he, says, he says, what I do now is I punch her in the face and tell her she fell. <laughs> So what? He, he, she she was starting to go like crazy. Uh -huh. yeah, she would say like, "I want to die, I want to die," and then I say, yeah. you know, and then she calls the cops and I put a pillow over her face, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, then I say, now I just punch her until she fell because she don't know. Right. But but she she did actually die. Yeah. Oh. So he didn't know whether or not to keep doing that joke. Yeah, I was like, should I take that out? And he's like, they they kill. Why would you take it out? Yeah, I mean, leave it. Leave so you still do mother-in-law jokes, but she's been dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Or Eddie Dangerfield would do that. Like, sure. Stuff about his wife, even after he was divorced. Yeah. It's a generic one. Now it's great. Now, now Richard Christie's doing comedy. Have you seen this no. train wreck? No, is it horrible? Oh my God, his act can stop a rape. Really? I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> you see the way he looks? I mean, oh, well, he's a beginner. I know, but you see him on stage, just like face and that. He looks like a burnt cheese doodle doing his act. I mean, he looks what like is a, his act. Uh, it's it's basically him having sex with himself. Well, let me, let, hey, hey, Richard, come on in and do some of your act, dude. Don't you want to see this? I'm dying to see. He has an act. Ah, uh, sort of. A lot of people. He has material? He sounds like Dr. Phil drunk on stage. That's Hi, it. everybody. I'd like to just tell you that I'm here to do some jokes for you. Yesterday it was so cold. How cold was it? I pleasured myself. <laughs> What, let me. What do you? Hey, I don't. At least I don't have to eat cheese out of somebody's bad place to to make people laugh. Well, when you have talent, you will one day. <laughs> what are you doing? Your how long is your act? It's. Uh, I got about twelve minutes now. Actually, it's been going pretty good. I, I'll say this weekend was a little tough. It was a couple tough crowds, but right. it's been going pretty good. I. What about the 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 joke where I play Russian roulette with my private parts? 
You gotta admit that's well, pretty that's good. Well, that's gay. That's gay. <laughs> that's what that is. Wait, I mean, when you, you when you point your thing at your face while you were doing it. Well, I have, say I spice, spice it up a little bit, and I, I play games when I'm with myself, and I do Russian roulette with myself. Do you have oh. any clean material that you can do? <laughs> um, let me try and think. I, I do a bit, actually, I do a bit about my dad getting bit by the possum. Uh -huh. I say, you know, I've lived in... Everyone can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Possum are all over New well, York Well, I kind of make fun of myself being from Kansas, and I say, even though New York's known for crime, it's still a little bit safer than Kansas, because my dad got bit by a possum the other day. So it's nice to live in New York and not have to worry about getting bit by a possum. Now, I might get raped by a crackhead transvestite in an alley, but at least they don't usually have rabies. To book Richard Christie, call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do I book you? <laughs> you got a New York up your act. The problem is, yeah, it would go good in Kansas. Well, I, I Get start Eric out. the uh, actor on the phone. See if Richard Yeah, can he would have laugh. laughed at that. I think it'd be funny if you had makeup on like Sal has when he's on stage. <laughs> no, I start out. I start out with the thing saying, "Oh, I guess you people kind of notice that I have a little bit of an accent," mm -hmm. and then I say, "Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn," and then I say, "They they kind of <laughs> laugh at that." And then I say, uh, wow. That's how you open? <laughs> and then I'll usually say... That's also how he closes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll say, uh, yeah, I, I actually have fond memories of... Like if I'm in Long Island or something, I'll say I, f I have fond memories of growing up in Brooklyn and hanging out on Long Island. I actually lost my virginity here in this club in the bathroom. Jim the maintenance man, he was, he was hung like a horse. Hey, can you do the um, can you do the possum joke again? Yeah. <laughs> no, all right. All right. Well, are you beginning? You're getting your ass. Yeah, I've only been doing it for a couple months. So here's, a good, uh, here's a good opening line in New York City. Does anyone else have a tractor? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do a bit about me making love to goats and stuff. They seem no, to laugh at I like that. the way he calls it a bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any jokes where you unplug the microphone? <laughs> <laughs> I should try that. All right. Good luck to you, Richard. Okay, Chris. thanks. All right. All right. An upcoming uh, committee. <laughs> one, time, one time I was really drunk on the road, and Levy told me that uh, if I needed it at the time, I could have his liver. And I, I said, this "There's a, a tough one." This was a, few, this was a few years ago, and I said, that, "That's like Christopher Reeve saying, y if you need it, you could have my spine." Well, you know, Levy, he he just anyone he sees at the station, he tries to book him for uh, to do. No, comedy. that's not true. That's that's everybody calls telling. me. Everybody calls me. I'm waiting for the Will and Jason tour. <laughs> that can't be too far behind. Yeah, absolutely not. All right, listen, let's do some news. Bob Levy this Saturday at the Webster Theater in Hartford, Connecticut. Go see a real funny guy. And Bob, April 29th and 30th at the Stress Factory in Brunswick, New Jersey. Uh, RevBobLevy.com. Uh, Rob, what's in the news? <laughs> By both of them, Yucko, where does the anger for Dan the Song Parody Man come from? <laughs> it, it really, I was just fucking around, really, about him, you know, putting ashtrays and towels, and it fucking snowballed and did a fucking avalanche on Dan, you know, about... Well, was it just you? I know, that's what I'm saying. Everyone walked in. Well, Rich, I was, I was Rich, in your office, I brought up the story about the gift bags, and you go, go in there. So I went in there, and I told the story, and, and he turned it around... As to it, the thing that pissed me off the most is that he says your lack of material. Like, like for him to say that to me, that was a kick in the balls. Like, yeah, you got pretty angry. I, that pissed me off because you know what? He there's a lot of guys out there that could say that to me and they could get away with it, but he's not one of them, without a doubt. He got pissed off at Richard too. He was pissed off at it. Yeah, and I didn't even get to tell my story, so he could be pissed off at me. What's well, your story? Well, again, I don't have a story per se, but everybody comes to me and tells me their story. So the story that I went in with and I didn't have time for. Was I guess Tim was having a lunch uh, downstairs at Del Frisco's, which is an expensive restaurant, and <laughs> I, I think that they went out of their way not to not invite Dan, but I guess Dan if Dan gets wind of a free meal, he latches on. So I guess they went out of their way to make sure Dan didn't know about it, and then Dan just showed up uninvited, sat down and ate, and pretended like he was part of the mix. Yeah, I mean that's a funny thing that Dan has. He's not like um. He lacks the gene that makes you ashamed. Yeah. 
Yeah, that 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 filter that you take a step back and you go, maybe I shouldn't be doing. And I know I can already hear the phone dialing, and Dad's going to be up on the phone any second, and he's going to say it's absolutely wrong. You've got it wrong, and fuck you. But that's what I heard. I I don't know it's true. That's the way I heard it. But would it be so bad for the guy just every now and then? Like he has a story, a, a, an excuse, an explanation for everything that's brought up that that random people bring up on the show at random times. Is there any point of him, any part of him that will stop and say, you know what? Maybe I was out of line there. Dan, does Gary have it wrong? Of course he has it wrong. It's Gary. What are you fucking kidding me? Okay. First of all, surely you've tried to crow that, crowbar that story in twice, okay? And again, I didn't, I, I'm sorry if I misquoted my, misstated myself by saying lack of material. You obviously had a slow news day because you guys apologized to me afterwards. How, so about, I, the fact, that a, how about my lack of material that you beg me? You beg me for the CDs of every interview I do so you could put together your copy and paste songs with the audio that I have of the whack. If I have such lack of material, why are you begging me for it? It's not lack of material. I've never fucking begged you for everything. I asked you for something as a friend the same way as you have, and I'm sorry if you have a bug up your fucking ass now, but that was a totally bullshit news story. The fucking guy gave me a gift bag. You did a fuck. The guy, the host of the show handed me a gift bag. So Dan, the Dan, host, Dan, the host of the show was the one who told me you took the fucking gift bag. Yeah, Dan, I, mean, I gotta, Dan, I gotta tell you, that's, again, don't be too mad at me because I'm only repeating the story to her, but that's a story that six different people came to me with. Right, because because Phil thought it would be funny. He came up and apologized, apologized to me afterwards. And I can get Phil Iazetta on the phone. You want him on fucking tomorrow, I'll get him on tomorrow. I and they'll tell you that he fucking sandbagged me. He fucking set me up. He handed me the bag. And then when he realized, when I was already gone, and he was short with gift bags for his listeners, he goes, oh, Dan took it, so I didn't have it. So that he didn't look like he was unprepared because he fucking gave me a gift bag. All right, Dan, what's, so, the, story, what's the story on the lunch story that I told? Give me the truth on that one. Which story? The, sorry, the lunch story I just told about Tim. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. The one, about, the one that you said I had it wrong, the one that would uh, lunch at Del Frisco's and you showed up? Yeah, what story did you call in to refute? What Shuli was saying or what Gary well, said? Well, the whole thing, and Shuli was talking shit about me. First of all, I've never gone to a lunch that I wasn't invited to. If I went, I went to lunch with the, uh, at Del Frisco's with the gang and Tim, Tim walked up to me and said, hey, we're going to Del Frisco's, come along. So, I mean... Uh, you know that the whole fucking motif of the show is to throw people under the bus. Well, all right, well, hold on, okay, man. We're going to stop you right now because Jared's here, who's Tim's they assistant. Have a little rat and I'd like to talk to you. Jared, is Dan <laughs> being up, Dan? truthful? You're, you're not really being truthful because Tim invited just the guys on the show that day. You were there, I think, either because of a creative meeting or uh, whatever reason it was. I mean, it was a while ago, so I don't remember it specifically, but I remember if that you, you remember weren't invited and I spoke. If you don't remember it specifically, then you obviously don't remember the specifics. And I understand that you're Tim's assistant, but also, can you admit as Tim's assistant, even though you're the guy that reads his emails, okay, that Tim may have said to me, hey, Dan, we're going to lunch, come along, because that's exactly what happened. I recall that when I, would I, asked, never, I recall listen, when listen, I, I would asked never, Tim, you, you recall if Tim what? Dan was invited, he said, no, invite the guys from the show. So I remember okay. going to Richard and Sal and specifically saying to Richard and Sal, and I do remember this, that you guys are invited, but Dan is not. He's not taking everyone out because Tim's paying out of pocket for this. So okay. you showed up anyhow at Del Frisco's. I remember turning to a couple of the guys at the table and said, are you kidding me? Dan wasn't invited. And you sat down. Well, that wasn't the case. I was fucking set up, okay? Because I saw... I gotta tell you, Dan, like, Dan, I gotta tell you, before you go further, you get set up a lot, brother. Listen to me. Knowing what type of throw people under the bus, fucking pussy scumbags you are, do you think I would ever fucking do anything to give you something to talk about? You manufacture shit to talk about when you have nothing to fucking talk about. Right. And again, Jared, I know that you're fucking Tim's boy, but Tim fucking asked me to go, okay? Tim has also made other assurances to me, which never fucking came through, but I don't make the fucking issue of it, okay? Well, like I've also what? Like fucking what? gone to bat for Tim to do things. I'm not, I'm not going to bring him up because it was personal shit between me and him, and I'm not going to fucking throw him out on the air because I'm not a fucking pussy rat. Well, Tim, you should come down and and just you can clear this up very quickly it was dan invited to this lunch you know what and if i misheard tim if i am not fucking stupid that hey come to lunch with us doesn't mean hey come to lunch with us have him pull a fucking receipt out if he paid for it out of his fucking pocket okay and i'll gladly reimburse him for his fucking can i ask you a question does if you pay tim for the dinner does that come out of what Artie's supposed to be getting <laughs> no it doesn't it doesn't Dad. uh fucking, you know? jason but, I mean, well, hold on dan jason are you here to defend dan uh, no, actually, I was here to defend Gary's story since I was the one that told him that. I, uh, you know, there were two lunches, so I don't know if Dan's mix, mixing up the first one, but the second lunch, I remembered it was like a concerted effort. I won't say <laughs> who, who works for Tim invited me to the lunch, but the message that went along with that said, you know, Dan's up here and we're trying to keep this from Dan because he'll show up. And so, you know, when he showed up at the lunch, everyone was just shocked. Like, how did he end up here? Like, everybody was trying to make sure. 
supposedly let me, that let me, he did find out about it. Let me tell you something. I've been to Del Fristos a few times for lunches. I've never gone fucking not invited. Obviously, no. Maybe you didn't know. Still, Obviously, knowing the fucking scumbags over there, um, perhaps, you know, the, the words around it, you don't fucking want me there for whatever fucking reason. So somebody no, that wasn't Tim, it. Tim invited you there because I would never show up uninvited. Um, and every time I go, if somebody else was treating, I'm very respectful. I always order the cheapest thing on the fucking menu. I ordered a hamburger. But, Dan, for, okay, forget about right or wrong because there's definitely a, dis- a discrepancy here. Are you surprised that this is your reputation here? No, I'm not, because you guys constantly try to fucking prank me, try, constantly try to throw shit on me, and you have nothing. You have fucking nothing, so you have to make shit up. Surely fucking, surely talk shit about me, to, talking about my fucking appearance, when the guy looks like a cross between a Holocaust survivor and a fucking cancer patient. But what does that do, but what does that do when I get laughs and you get nothing on and, stage? And he's criticizing, I've, I've never seen that happen where you got laughs and I got nothing. Again, Please, I was, let me tell you, let me remind you of a story. To, let me remind you something in Florida, you're on stage dying, eating the biggest shit sandwich I've ever ever seen a comic eat on stage for 10 minutes when a guy looks at me who's standing in the back room looks at me points to you and goes who wrote this shit for him and i and i told him you wrote this shit for you. That's that's the shit you present on stage. I, I would happened. doubt that there's a fucking writer out there that would be proud to say, I gave Dan that surely, material. Surely, I understand that you're a comic and you've been doing it for over ten years, and I know that I've seen you do the exact same set for those entire ten years without changing it up, except for maybe adding like an Elliot Austin impersonation and shit like that. And I'm sorry that you said, I didn't mean Dan, to say that Dan, you're a bad comedian when I said lack of material. I meant that you had a slow news day, so you ran a bullshit news story on me. And if you're offended about that, then fuck you, man. I thought we were friends. <laughs> when you fucking first came to New York with no money in your pocket, and J Rock didn't fucking reserve the hotel for you, I fucking bought your fucking hotel room for you. Until I got you got my place. career started, and I thank you for that, Dan. No, no, no. I really I, do. No, no, no. You didn't get my. I didn't take I didn't put, well, I then what the fuck are you taking going. credit for? What do you take credit for? I came out here because I was booked on the Stern show, not to fucking room with you in an apartment that you're not even paying for. <laughs> no shit. I bought you. You sit here hotel. like you're fucking handing out people gold. You, you're fucking. You're. You're uh, uh, you're squatting twisting, in some guy's fucking apartment with hair fucking, all over the fucking place. You're twisting the fucking story. It wasn't my apartment. I fucking put my credit card down for you to have a room at the Park Central on 7th Avenue. And I appreciate that. Listen, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. You attacked me first. You attacked me first. Chris, and I fucking picked you up at the fucking airport. So don't give me the So what did I... And what have I done for you in Vegas, cocksucker? What did I do for you in Vegas? Who got you to go up on stages that you fucking can never set foot back on again because you suck so fucking bad who you helped you in vegas with all the fucking no connections i had in vegas you lying fucking pieces fuck shit. off you're a fucking fuck, scumbag you're a phony you're a phony scumbag that you used to fucking do fuck that off fucking fuck off you had nowhere to go you're banned from the hard rock where else are you gonna go Say this to my fucking face when it's not getting up on fucking. Oh, you gonna bring one of your shit. knives, Boy Scout? I don't need any fucking knives. <laughs> Give me a fucking, fucking break. All fucking you do, all you do, all you do, all you do is get outed on doing? the air and then threaten people with physical fucking confrontation. That's all. That's your only fallback, no, dude. No, I'm telling you, be a fucking man and see if you can look me in the eye. I don't need to I'm look you I'm in the eye. The same fucking lies in person that you're trying to fucking get out. That's fine. I'll tell you. I'll tell you face to face when you come up here for your one day of work a week. This is all I can say. I hope your child, when it's born, looks just like you. Hey, that's mean. What? I said I hope his child looks like a father. That's mean. I know, is that mean? That's I, don't know, I, I don't know that you, is, is that, is that to, well, Dan, 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 is that to apply that surely, Dan, stop talking for a second. Day one, and I've even fucking sat around and allowed you to wow. fucking run bullshit on me when you have a fucking slow news day. And then you Again with this slow fucking, fucking news day. The, the host yeah. of the show, and numerous people told me, not only did you take one gift bag, asshole, you took more than one. And I didn't even mention that on the air today. No, you talk, well, you're totally full of shit, and you're fucking... Everybody's full of shit but you. Everybody's full of shit but you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. You have you you're never wrong. You can never take a step back and say, you know what? Maybe I was out of line there, right? We're all the no, fucking scumbag line. lion rat assholes, right? Somebody handed me something, okay? You guys are constantly trying to fucking set me up for shit. But when I fucking see you, you won't look me in the eye and tell the same fucking lies because you can fucking do it over the airways, but you can't do it. To and what are you gonna face. do? What are you gonna do when you see me? You threatening me? You're no, gonna I'm come and punch you. me? You're gonna come and fight me? No, I wanna see if you're capable of fucking telling the same 
eyes while looking me in the face and showing the same anger and animosity towards me while looking me in the face. Because it's easier to lie to somebody or lie about somebody when you're not looking them in the eye. But Dan, here's a newsflash for you. I'm not lying about what I'm saying. I'm just telling you what the fuck went down, what I was a witness to, and what numerous people oh, were a witness to. Witness to it, and then, even, and I was in the room. fucking studio, jerk off. I was there. I saw the bags lined up against the fucking wall, and I watched you fucking walk off with one. No, you watched. You, you weren't there when the host Crystal handed it to me. You watched me leave. With Who was it? Crystal Gale with her fucking long hair that I missed up for you? Get the fuck out of here. Listen to me, Shuli. You're a fucking piece of shit. You're showing your fucking true colors. <laughs> I am. I am. I don't bring a second suitcase when I go to fucking help a friend so I can clean out their fucking room. I, that's a scumbag. That's a Never fucking scumbag. Never did that. Of Never course that. not. And again, you fucking Sal keeps trying to crow by that fucking story in that fucking Levy's old driver fucking said. Yeah, and now all of a sudden Yucca was witness to it. The last time it was somebody else. How many people fucking flew home with me, okay? Yeah. I got the fucking ashtrays right here that were from the, from the fucking Beecher show. They weren't from the hotel. I fucking prevented other people from taking shit from Artie's room. Some people that used to work for Dan, 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 hold on a second. Can I, do you think that there's a concerted effort by everyone on the show against you? Or do you think that it's just, you know, you're just another guy, it's part and parcel to be part of the show, that everybody throws everybody under the bus? Everybody throws everybody on the bus. But you, so you don't, you, wait, anything, you, Dan, Dan, and if they Dan. If they don't have anything fucking truthful to throw them under the bus with, they will conjure shit up. But you don't think you're getting it any worse? about the fucking ass race came from Sal and he wasn't even there. Dan, you don't think you're getting it any worse than anybody? What? No, no, I think everybody gets it. But you know what? I'm not a fucking pussy. I'll stand up for myself. Hey, hey Dan, you, I know you said everyone's... Let me, you, let me tell you some good words to live by. Don't ever start shit with anybody, but don't ever take shit from anybody. I don't start shit with anybody. What fortune cookie did you read that in? <laughs> fucking game on. Then it's game fucking on. Hey, Dan, I was just wondering, because you said everyone's making up this shit. So, like, when the news wanted to do a story on you, like, Owen already $15,000, and you didn't want that story to run, and you got all angry, is that made up? And or you that threatened just, Langford. Yeah, you threatened Langford, and... No, I didn't know. I didn't threaten Langford. I yes, you it did. It's very detrimental for him to run the fucking story. Hey, and he chose to do it anyway. Listen, Jason, you're the fucking bitch boy of the office. You're yeah, a little I know, fucking, man. You're a little fucking man cunt pussy. Even mm -hmm. back at fucking K Rock, you were always the gossip girl that would fucking IM people in the other fucking mm -hmm. offices about what's weird. I have a job here, Dan. Fucking rat on people. <laughs> what's that? I have a job here. I'm here, you know, five days a week. So yeah, I can't no, be that it, much it, of a bitch. It, it, it gives you more time. You tried out for a job here and couldn't beat Yucko the Clown. Yeah. Jesus. He's Double in the room. room. Oh, All Jesus. Right. <laughs> All right, slow down, everybody. Dan, take it. Dan, 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 hold on. Take a deep breath. I have a, I have a, no, no, no. I have a question for you. If anybody wants to talk shit about me, is welcome to say it to my face and just see if they're able to look me in the eye. What, the the wait, 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 guys, again, Dan? guys, stop. Let me ask Dan a question because I think he feels like he's being ganged up on. Dan, were you and Shuli buddies? I thought so. I thought so. I'm fucking. I, as unsuccessful as I may be, I've always tried my hardest to help my friends to be as successful as they could possibly be. Okay, I helped them out in his get John's job fucking thing. I fucking paid for his fucking hotel room when he had no place to fucking stay. I took him out to a nice dinner with Chris. I picked him up at the fucking airport. I've never done wrong by the guy. If he's ever needed anything from me, I'm more than happy to give it to him. He flew off the handle and got fucking upset because I said lack of material, which is an insult to his comic ability, which I believe. His comic ability is very strong. He's been doing it for 10 years. I meant the lack of a news story because he wouldn't have run that bullshit story if he had something better and truthful to fucking report on. And again, I won't fault him 100% because if he was told that by Phil, because Phil thought it would be funny to fucking say that, okay, then it was unbeknownst to him that I didn't take the fucking bag. Uh, all right. Again, all right. I misjudged him for that. For that, I apologize. For the other shit that he's spewing and anything I've said back to him over and above that, I have nothing to apologize for. Dan, hold on. Hold on. You also made it. Hold on, Dan. Dan, you got let, you gotta let other people talk. Hold you on, also Dan. made a comment before that Sal's trying to like a crowbar in a story or make you story look bad. The ashtrays and the fucking cowl. Yeah, that's right. Sal had three <laughs> people try to crowbar that fucking story in. Well, he fucking had a, I'm not. He had a, Okay. Again, I'm not crowbarring a story in. Story in. I'm telling the story. I mean, when your name comes, when you're, wait, but hold on, Dan. I'm, I have nothing against you, but when your shenanigans come up, the first thing that comes to mind is what you pulled off in that room in Vegas, told by it's Levy's driver. And I always not. said who it came from. It came from Levy's driver. You were not there. And, uh, yeah, and he doesn't lie. Today. Paul doesn't lie. And uh, hopefully, today Paul, if you're out there, you can call in. Story. Today you wanted to make a yucker. Now, all of a sudden, yucker. I work for the you... show. I'm going to incorporate things that are relative to the conversation, Dan. Okay, so basically the conversation, um, yucker. Dan, sudden... I heard, I never even said this, but I heard, for, according to Paul, that <laughs> when you got to the airport, 
that suitcase was so heavy. It was <laughs> when you dropped it on the airport scale, it was so heavy you had to pay a fifty dollar charge because it was over. And Paul said you opened it up right there and you took pillows and bathrobes out. <laughs> the heaviest well, stuff in the suitcase. First of all, okay, you took the, now, now you want the truth? The bag was six pounds overweight. I took out fucking seven fucking ashtrays that I bought, and I can bring. All right, wait. So wait, wait. So Paul, wait. So Paul, now, so you're admitting to this that Paul did witness this. Paul was Paul was there, and I took the fucking ashtrays out. And they weren't stolen from the airport. Yeah. They How many fucking, fucking ashtrays account? can you steal to make up six pounds? What you what, what did you rob an ashtray factory? Are you kidding me? He said there were pillows. There were pillows tucked in there. You you literally mashed pillows down with bathrobes and toothpaste and those shitty razors that fall apart after one shave. And they, they said these there, there was little pieces of there was little pieces of hold up there were little pieces of soap sticking out uh, out of the zipper. I mean, hold on. Let's Dan tell his side. Hold on. Jesus a couple Christ. shower caps fell out. I, I heard there was a busboy in there from the restaurant. Guys, downstairs. guys, guys. Let the, right, that's Dan. That's fucking truthful as the rest of the story. Was, but nobody's telling the truth, the Dan. How can that be? How can that be? Stop. Shut the fuck up, because I'll smack your fucking dick out. See what? See, see, see what, again with the physical nobody, threat. See, you no, got to get physical. Oh, hey, guys, no one's physical. smacking anybody. Dan, right? Dan, I'm going to let you talk. It's Gary. I'm going to let you talk in a second. But I do understand that there's a lot of people, all different people with stories, and if you're a listener and you don't know Dan and you don't know everybody here and you're just listening to everything that's going on, it does sound like everybody's wrong but you. Yeah. To, to an outsider, exactly. it would sound like everybody's... Everybody's trying to find something to make me look like an asshole, and it just ain't fucking true. I took a fucking bunch of ashtrays from the Beecher Show, which were promotional giveaways, which, because I'm a motorcycle guy, they had motorcycle chain lick around them. I had them wrapped in my bathrobe, which I fucking take with me when I travel, because that's what I wear when I get out of the shower. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not in, like, the room that they book where they give you a bathrobe, so there would be no bathrobe for me to fucking take. Okay? And that's the long and short of it. The kid that told Sal was story it was somebody who's been trying to get on he's a nice guy i know has been trying his hardest to get on the air and get on the show in one way shape or form for at least 10 years the closest he's ever come is when he got his nephew to be one of the kids that came up during sal's get john's job week to play pin the toothbrush on the buoy and that's his closest connection to the show so of course he's going to do anything he can to try and have something he was already his opening show. act Wait, hold, on, hold on a second sal richard you have a story too well, the one that uh, we were talking about today where he wanted to back his van up to get all the E-junk. Exactly. Sal, Sal was right there, too. And Sal, and Sal you, I can exactly. back up Richard 100%. And you can ask Doug Goodstein, and you can ask Richie Wilson. Well, they had no place to warehouse the stuff they wanted to keep, and I volunteered for them to use my warehouse because I thought it would be good for the show and that you might need to use the stuff again. At the time, I had a 6,000-square-foot warehouse in Fairlow, New Jersey. It was located on Banta Place, and all that was really left in there was my motorcycles, my tools, a few racks of equipment, and at least 3,000 square feet was open but doug and, again, and doug asked me and sal if we wanted any of this stuff they were going to get rid of it and we were like no and you were there with us because we were getting ready to go to lunch and you said well i'll back my van up and take this it wasn't stuff they were going to keep <laughs> they had a whole warehouse full of stuff that they had no that, that they didn't know what they were going to do with and that's how it was brought to my attention you should have just brought up two or three suitcases Dan, and filled them up. <laughs> jason you have confirmation on a story yeah. actually jared was going to tell us but he had to go first of all dan the last couple times i argued with you on the air you threatened to punch me when next time you saw me so i never no, i never i never threatened to fucking punch you i don't yeah all right, i'll pull the girl. tape on that one yeah. but a, a, anyway i mean you already threatened three other people to punch them today but anyway real quick so going back to the lunch that you weren't invited to so the, so the story is is that tim told jared that he wanted to take out the guys here who work for him directly which meant no dan but dan you were up there today that day so jared went around and he like told like sound richard like listen try and make sure dan doesn't find out about this lunch he just wants to take the guys then jared no no i can say more it's it's cool dan let him finish and then you will absolutely be able to respond go ahead jason jared told me at some point he felt you must have gotten a whiff of the lunch because you started following him around like crazy to the point where like you know you would have followed him directly downstairs to del frisco so finally tim said gave the okay to have you come down with us only because you wouldn't leave him alone? So, That's so according to Jim. Okay, I knew nothing about it beforehand. I didn't know there was a cop. You know what? Invite me to a lunch now when you can fucking eat my shit. I'm not going to go to the fucking lunch. Fuck you people. You know You're going to pass up a free lunch? You scumbag. Is that why your breath smells so bad? You've been eating a lot of shit. No, it's the smell of your fucking lunch. <laughs> <life. laughs> <I'm like, laughs> <"Shut your laughs> I character. finally figured out why his breath smells so bad. He's not invited to parties and eat shit. Gary, when did Dan become like Scott Salem? Everybody's kicking the guy when he's down. I, you know, listen, I've what heard, I've heard these do. stories from people. That's what we people do. That's what people with nothing better to do do. That's what people with lowest self, self-esteem do, because they want to feel better about themselves. 
That's why you don't see me ever jump out and fucking dog pile on people and shit on people. Because I got fucking no problem with it. I got no problem with it. You guys are a bunch of fucking pussies. Anybody that's trying to talk shit and fucking gang up on somebody, the gang mentality is for fucking weaklings. But Dan, but Dan, 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 you could make the never fucking Dan, hold on, I'm talking. You could make the argument that in your own way, you gang up on uh, people because, it's, it, it, you know, if this wasn't about you, you'd have a song parody ready about it for tomorrow morning. And I know while that's your job, that's also your way of ganging up. That's not ganging up. That's not ganging up individually. It's a, it's a group of people attacking. And I have no problem. I can defend myself in a group of people attacking, okay? Whether it's fucking physical or verbal. I don't give a fuck. Wait, wait, Dan, Dan, wait, Dan, I got an issue with that. So you're saying making a song parody about, let's say, you know, Gary's teeth or, or Sal's wife's emotional friend or whatever. You don't think that's part of jumping in because it's an individual effort? No, Gary's teeth is a fixture on the fucking show, okay? Okay, so that's not, it's something that he's accepted. I didn't make a single song about Sal's wife because I was respectful about that. The same way I didn't make any fucking songs about Artie being on drugs, because I'm respectful of certain things. When something is an established fucking topic on the show, then I'll make it a song. But I'm never going to fucking drive a nail on somebody if I think it's going to hurt. Are you going to make a song about the hotel thing, thing, man? Well, What's that? that? You can make a song about this hotel thing? What hotel thing? Your hotel thing. Welcome to the hotel where I fill my suitcase. <laughs> hotel of seven and and It's trains. an empty place. <laughs> Actually, it's an empty place. <laughs> There's not a trace of pillows or ashtrays. I took everything from that hotel in my suitcase. <laughs> Even bathrobes, too. <laughs> I'm a greedy Jew. <laughs> Tully in New York City, you're on the wrap-up show. Yeah, I went to the ho I went to the airport. I put my suitcase down. <laughs> the lady looked at me and said, "It's one hundred fucking pounds." <laughs> Tully, go ahead. Where's that? Where's that fucking clown? Um, no, I was just trying to think how many people have been at a Shuli show and said to the guy next to him, "Hey, who wrote this shit?" <laughs> Well, it wasn't my show, but Dan was on the show. It was a show that Levy and I were doing, and Dan was up there sucking the life out of the room, and the guy yeah. asked, who wrote his yeah. material? And sure, let's just go to a club together in New York City any fucking night. We'll any day of the week. Is this gonna, any hold on. day is this of the week. Like, hold on, guys, 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 guys. Is this going to be that's like that's 8 that's Mile that's for comedy? Yeah. yeah. Comedy yeah. showdown. Right? Let's, let's do it. The same fucking 20 minutes let's go to the showtime at the Apollo. I'll do a well set there. Yo, Gary, that's... Hold on, Dan. That's a fair challenge. Let them go ahead. Anytime. Let's get an audience and see how they react. I have to tell you, I've never seen your comedy, and I'm not giving you any shit. The only thing is I know that you don't have as much experience as Shuli... Exactly. So I would think it would be di more difficult for you, but I I've never seen you. No problem. We, go, we just go to a random comedy room, not packed with stern fans, not packed with anything. Can I tell you something? The not last time I stern. saw Dan, the last time I saw Dan uh, perform, uh, I even complimented him on a bit that he did that I actually thought was really funny, and I told him about it, the, the one about your dad that you did, about your Jewish father, and I even right. complimented him about that. But, of course, you know, it was to my face, Julie. You're not looking me in the face right now. I just complimented well, you, you know. now on it, douchebag. Open your fuck, move the hair out of your fucking ears and listen to what I'm saying. I just complimented you on it on the air, like I did to your face. And if you were standing in the studio right now, I'd tell you that you're an unfunny scumbag to your face today, like I did on the air. Hey, can we do I'll the, can we do well, the I'll challenge, I'll, I'll Dan, give Dan? You opportunity to do that in person any fucking time. Can we do the challenge tonight, Dan? Um, tonight I'm busy, I'm sorry, unless you want to do it after 10 o'clock. Oh, well, will. that's usually when people go to a comedy club. <laughs> Surely, could you do the challenge tonight I'll if we call found the Carolines? I'll say. Well, don't say. Let's not say. Let's find oh, another right. place. Okay. But uh, again, surely the way to do it is unadvertised, without stacking room with people, non stern fan, regular crowd. How many well, minutes? Dan, how, how, many, how, how many minutes each? Are, how is he stack? How would he be stacking the room with people? You're on the show. Shuli's on the show. I mean, is, do you think Shuli gets an advantage Gary, there? I say ten minutes each because ten minutes you could pack in your best stuff. Right. Ten minutes each. Ten minutes no, and no stern stuff at all. Just no audience up. at all. Yeah. Just I mean, why would, stand up. why would it do advertiser comedy? That's every show, show Benji. Yeah. Well, what kind of logic is that? No, no. He's saying he's saying he wants he wants a fair audience. He wants to take the trial to another city no he's got a point he does have a point about that yeah i know I, i'm in so they're going to walk up and they're going to people who have no predisposition to the show you don't have right. to announce it you just walk up sure, to a I club and I let's see what happens 20, i could laugh for 20 minutes straight at your fucking elliot often impression i could laugh for fucking 10 minutes straight at your bobcat goldsweight impression because i'm old enough to fucking remember who he is but if we just go into a regular fucking room okay where people aren't going to fucking know elliot they're not going to the other stuff and you just do your regular material the stuff that i love the that's fine dan whatever you say just just 
make what a you say. Just, just make Dan. Hold on, Dan. Dan, Dan, Dan. Stop talking. Jesus. Just make a no Stern Show references. That's fine. I'm fine with that. I did stand up long before I started working here, and I got, I got. Unlike you know, and Dan has a lot of material that has nothing to do with the show as well. So I'm more than happy. All right, I'm more than happy to do that. Ten minutes. No Stern Show references at a site you guys agree on. This Jason, is Jason, like 3 o'clock. We high. don't know if it'll be tonight, but, but whenever we do it, make sure TV knows about it, because I want it taped and I want audio yep, no for problem. the show. And if Dan loses, he cuts his ponytail off. How's that? Yeah, so, so what does Shuli have to offer? He's going to grow hair if he fucking <laughs> I'll, loses? I'll shave my ass hair. No, Dan, if you lose, you fess up that everything you said, every dispute you've had with all these so-called lies is truthful. You admit no, none of them are truthful, so I'm not going to fucking lie, and I'm not going to fucking lie under any circumstances. And I wouldn't want him to do that. If he... Let me tell you something. If I defend, if I take my best ten minutes, <laughs> and even if it kills, if you put it on TV, my whoever loses, and good minutes I have. Whoever loses, However, whoever loses, whoever loses has to kiss, kiss the head of my cock. Actually, oh, boy, uh, that's really gay. Yeah, yeah, no, for you. The, the, the sow's a winner no matter no, what. With the foreskin over it. You have to kiss my foreskin. Oh, oh okay. All right. Oh, 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 whoever loses has to kiss my foreskin. Boy, Sal, 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 some guys Sal, 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 I, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care that it's Dan or Shirley. Why would you want a guy to kiss <laughs> yeah, your penis? Because it's disgusting, and I won't bathe for two days, oh, and it'll, oh, it'll smell like, yeah, like a twat rash. Hey, Dan. Dan. Dan, what determines... How are you going to have determine the winner? Audience, um, we have the audience. Decide. Well, wait, wait, wait. How, but I would say, I would say the best way to do it is you do it, you bring back the audio, you play it, and us in the studio can decide not who was funnier, but we would decide who which uh, who the audience liked more. Just to keep it even more fair, can we like kind of do like a uh, like that TV show with the comics? Like maybe we'll get a comic, couple comic judges to come yeah, in. Maybe and we'll get do that. Scores. Ralph Sorella, whose side are you on? Hey now. Hey now. Hey. I got to defend Dan uh, about a couple of things. Okay. First of all, there was something I called him about. I mean, it must probably like a year or so ago, where uh, I had an idea. But something was going on in the show, and I wanted to. I just had was pitching him an idea to write a song parody about something, and he thought it was really funny. But he said, "You know, I can't do that because there was some situation where he just thought it was too much piling on." So I think he really he's being honest that he does have scruples with that, and I also think that. For some reason, people don't like Dan. He's dismissed, and and I think people want to think the worst of him. So when he opens his suitcase, and he has, it sounds reasonable that he travels with a robe, and, you know, there's ashtrays in there, but quickly they jump. Come on, he, he stole, Wait, 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 wait. Were let, there any poker chips in there, Ralph? Let Ralph, wait, wait, let, let, let Ralph make let his case. Finish. I've been talking for a while and, and, and knocking on this guy, but... You know, maybe he does travel with a robe. Maybe it's reasonable. Maybe there's ten things that could go either way that are reasonable, and it just goes the other way. Maybe I just understand him because it's birds of a feather. <laughs> but, 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 Ralph, Ralph, that's Ralph, more like it. Answer, go back to what you originally said. Why do you think that people? Because what you're saying at the core of this is people don't like Dan, so they want to think the worst of him. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I, I, I think he rubs people the wrong way. I think he has an appearance that like may turn people off, and they just kind of goof on him. I mean, people. People goof on Dan. Just I see it in the office when I'm around there, and I can see he's he's like a butt of jokes. And and uh, but, but I can tell you the reason why he's the butt of jokes because I hear it too from time to time is because of these stories. So which came first? I think I think uh, from the way I remember it, I think he became the butt of the jokes because these stories kept growing. But You're we, saying it's the other but, way around. But I think it's like Lisa, Lisa G. You guys, a lot of guys in the office just don't like her, and I don't understand why. Uh, and and like Dan, I think, is a stand-up guy. I think he, 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 you know, he puts himself out for people. I, you know, you paint him to be like an asshole, and I don't think he is. But Ralph, there's a difference between not liking someone and breaking somebody's balls. You could still like the guy and come up with stories. And, yeah, but, and this, make... but, you, but this is not breaking his balls. This is making him look like a real piece of shit. I mean, but somebody, we, somebody but tunes are, in. But somebody right. tunes in and listens to this, and he's, you know, you know, it sounds reasonable that Dan's like, "Hey, I'm going to do you guys a favor, and I'm going to throw all this stuff in my van and put it in stores for you because I know that Doug had nowhere to put that shit. There was a real problem going on. They didn't have to where, where to put props and stuff. And Doug's like, "I just want to get rid of it. I know they were still looking for some of that stuff after the fact. So Dan's trying to do a favor, and then all of a sudden he's an asshole pack rat just trying to throw shit in his van. So. You know what? It's kind of fucked. No, you know what, Ralph? You make a fair point. And Dan, Ralph's got your back there. 
Yeah, thanks, Ralph. I appreciate it. You know what the thing is? Again, I don't have the appearance that the other guys fucking have there. I fucking look the way I look. I am the way I am. And people might make an immediate assumption on what type of person I am based on the way I look. They have they have no idea. With the exception of probably Artie and Howard, I probably bought more meals for people than anybody else in that fucking room. I've lent more money to people than anybody in that fucking room, okay? And... And I'm, I'm a very fucking giving person. And like I said, I don't fucking start shit with anybody. But I don't take shit from anybody either, okay? And this picture's been painted of me, which couldn't possibly be more fucking far from the truth as far as the type of person that I am, okay? Anybody needs anything from me. I fucking drop what I'm doing. I'm never too busy to fucking help anybody out, no matter how busy I am. If I got my daughter with me, I'll drag her along. Hey, hey Dan, I just threw one story in defense. He did save that intern that time. What do you mean? <laughs> I saved it from being raped by changing my mind, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Dan, we, That's right. Dan, wow. we got to take a break. I'm glad you called in and defended yourself. If you felt like you needed defending, yucko, man, generating a bunch of controversy around here. Everybody's going to take a deep breath. Teddy, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll get yucko.